justified our sin And we're gonna take you on a ride Till we find answers within Location, not here In shadows, we all disappear Hold on, switch gears We're gone as fast as we appear
History, strategy, and mystery. Across the ages, wars have been won and lost on a knife's edge. Yet these three themes have remained true. From the battle cries of ancient barbarian hordes to the crack of gunpowder sparking. Age of Empires is all around us. A truly global game with a community that spans the length of the world. And many on this planet have played since they could barely walk. With players sliding up to a computer hearing the soft whir of the fans as it turns on. Eyes gleaming at the prospect of controlling your empire's destiny. In this realm, you cease to be yourself and become a hero of an age-long past. But these heroes are not gone. They are undying. They live on through our actions and deeds. So when these heroes all meet on the field of battle, something unique is created. Stories are made that transcend time itself. And these stories, well, they become something new. They become legend. All right, ladies and gents, welcome back to Hidden Cup 5. Have a look at the trophy room, people. Have a look at this majestic, wonderful trophy that one of these 16 heroes, which we'll watch over the next seven days, will eventually win. Oof, it's, it's fancy stuff right there. This is high-level production quality. At least we're trying our best. I feel like I'm bringing it down half the time. But just wanted to remind you guys that that is out there. And it is looking incredible. Speaking of looking incredible, you are looking incredible, chat. Welcome in, everybody, to the show on day two. And most of you here, I, well, I mean, let's be honest, I can't recognize all your names, but I'm recognizing names that were here for day one. Thank you for the role that you played in the start to Hidden Cup. Um, it, it was amazing yesterday. We ironed out some kinks, uh, and I've got some, I mean, every day is just stacked to be more and more entertaining and more and more fun. So uh, welcome, everybody. I want to say thank you. To those of you that have subscribed already, whether it's a resub or a new sub, welcome. Uh, whether you have a sub or not, you are able to salute as an FYI and reminder for everybody. We have the T90 salute on follower emote now. So uh, it's cool to see, to see so many people say hello and salute to start off the stream. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, community man. Um, so I don't know how deep dive you guys went on the games yesterday. But I, I, I just couldn't help myself. So we ended the stream. I did a rerun, but then I was like watching the rerun. And then I was like, why I was skipping through areas of my VOD and trying to look through things. And the problem is, guys, I've realized if you think about it too much, you just confuse yourself. <laughs> and so I'm not sure if I'm closer to knowing who these people are or if I am further from it. Um, we're going to have to see, I suppose. But I do have some really strong theories and some fun things I'm going to bring to you uh, here in just a bit. Uh, but before we you know, get the day started in full, I do want to say thank you to our sponsors. Uh, we've got Microsoft, of course, who, of course, is developing the game. And, and the reason, the big reason the game came back uh, with the Definitive Edition and whatnot. Thank you, Microsoft. Thank you to Surfshark, who you guys will hear more about. We've also got a panel below the stream. They've been amazing. And then also Red Bull. Who's sitting back here behind me and uh, you you know what that's about so uh, thank you to red bull for for jumping in to support hidden cup five as well um i'll be honest we had a complete run of show and i'm just it's completely left my mind and oh yes of course as i expected as i knew yes because i i totally prepared uh we're gonna do a quick little rerun not a rerun sorry a little overview of what happened on day one for those that weren't here to to also help those of you that were here as it's been, what, a full 24 hours. So we're going to start it off here, just go through the first day. What happened on the first day? Who did we see on the first day? And heroes, anyways, were Vasco da Gama against Patchy Cutie. Now, Vasco da Gama was incredibly aggressive. Uh, you know, first game picking Ethiopians, going for turning into this crazy siege push. We didn't see anything like that in the qualifiers. So has a lot of people thinking that this player here is one of the, 
potential top four players in the world. Now, can't wait to talk to my co-caster Memb about this. Memb had some thinking, and he's like, I'm not so sure. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But that was at least game number one. Th this is so exciting to me, guys. We saw a pro player bring in a boar with a scout. That's right. This is the new map evacuation. This is the first time we'd ever seen it. And we had the boar being brought in with the scout. And then, you know, from there, it was just like Vasco. Honestly, Patrick Cutie had some really interesting strategies. I don't think we should forget about that. Patrick Cutie went Sicilians here, tried to go for the dungeon play uh, and the sergeants, you pudding style, which might lead to, you know, heavy speculating on who would try that in our pro scene. But anyways, I mean, and then Vasco just kept stepping it up, dude. Like fast imp Turks. I said this yesterday in the cast, guys. This is just not something that happens in pro-level Age of Empires. It has not been happening at all. And this strategy was absolutely unreal. One TC fast imp. It was a 20-minute Imperial Age. And it was just full gunpowder from there. The Bombard Cannons were killing Monk after Monk after Monk. And the Hand Cannons kind of took care of everything else. And we did have Patsy Cutie showing a little bit more skill uh, and able to find a little bit more freedom here on Hidden Forts. Again, this was the new map. Uh, well, sorry, one of two new maps that got brought in. And then eventually it moved on to Cup, where Vasco da Gama played his Koreans, which I found was fascinating. Did a good job with Korean Knights, considering Korean Knights are pretty garbage. And eventually just, just had a whole boom going here. You were seeing the monks die, but basically the economy the whole way through was so good. And then when this forward castle came down for Patsy Cutie, in our first series of Hidden Cup 5, I very, very quickly got trebbed down. And so we then moved into the second series. Now, how many people loved this second series? This series was insane to me. I do not fully understand how Sumanguru survived this push. I mean, there's, there's Conquistadors, there's Manganels, and like 50 villagers. I'm not, I don't even think I'm exaggerating. 50 villagers got pulled to that castle and eventually completed. Then it eventually got taken out. And then, like, all of a sudden, you fast forward and suddenly there's, like, 50 paladins? Like, what in the world? Like, Sumangaru's ability to boom and, and stay alive in games is, is just ridiculous. I think Jean Bureau, after the first game, was probably like, yeah, I don't fully understand how he didn't win this one. And then this game was even better. Like, I, I, I don't want to exaggerate too early here. But who, who are we kidding? I'm absolutely going to do that. I think this might be one of the best sets of the round of 16 in terms of some of the games we saw. Obviously, uh, you know, it didn't go to seven games, which is what everyone wants. But, like, we they both siege pushed each other. It turned into Jean Bureau dropping a castle on Smanguru's face. But wait, for those that didn't see it, there's more castles. You, you, there's going to be more castle drops happening. I mean, again, Smanguru losing monks, losing crossbows, big push constantly. And this player refused to quit. Look at this battle. Look at that battle. We never see that. Eight Trebs, Manganai and Hussars, elite Genoese crossbow, but just crazy technologies, man. And uh, eventually, Smanguru wins that game despite you know losing all those Trebs. Then it was like, okay, Jean Biro had done so much. This Smanguru player meant serious business, and uh, he meant serious business, that's for sure. Game three, up 2-0. Really took advantage of some of the outer areas of high tides down towards the south. And look at that unit control. I, I want to point out dodging the tower fire, but not like leaving the tower's range, right? It, it's kind of hard to pick up on unless we slow it down. But yeah, then at this point, it's like, well, okay, going to be a pretty quick series. Jean Bureau with the fast, with the classic make it to Castle Age and call GG, as I know all you guys are very familiar with. And okay, this game here, this game is, I think, the game from this series that influenced people's guesses the most. I can only remember one player in the qualifier that made it to the main event doing this very strategy. The Palisades on the shoreline. That has a lot of people thinking that Jean Bureau is Mihai. And I have more to say about that particular strategy. Mihai did do that in the qualifier. But I don't worry, I, I got something to say about that. I did tweet it last night that I think we might actually see that strategy another time. This is ultimately the big fight. That elephant, if you, if you were there, you remember the elephant. The elephant that never died. The elephant just, well, he never died because the GG was called soon after and Samanguru lost the game. And then Day9 and I chatted a lot about Gold Rush and Game Theory in this one. And it was a great time. Jean Bureau 
Didn't go for a castle, instead went for the TC and got the quick walls down. But that castle right there from Smanguru pretty much just took care of that TC. And we, we saw, okay, guys, how many pro players have you seen go for elite battle elephants with the Bengalis? So many pros do not do that here. And Sumanguru, to win the series, did a couple things. He went for full stone wall. So full stone wall at home. Even upgraded a fortified wall, if I recall. And then went elite battle elephants. A lot of pros are like, no, it's too expensive. I'll just trade with trash and some monks and some siege. And elite battle elephant was the play. It's just stronger than paladin. Like, we thought paladin was going to win it. Nope. Not going to win it at all. Elite battle elephant won. Simon grew that series. So, I see some people say in the snake. I remember Viper going elite war elephants in Hidden Cup 3 on Arabia. Viper certainly has a history with elephants, but I don't know, man. It's, it's going to be really interesting to see how things play out here as the days progress, because then we can use process of elimination, at least, to figure out who we think is who. But I thought that was an incredible way to start the day. And I expect the games and the sets only to get closer. Now, every series in this tournament is all based on heroes. We're going to show the bracket now and show exactly what that means for anyone who's new and doesn't understand. So this is the lineup. We, we obviously have yesterday's results up there. Spoilers, as we just did in the roundup. Uh, but moving on from that, we've got two sets today, which are the next two sets below it. We've got Yadwiga against Otto the Great. A massive one in terms of player favorites. We've got a lot of Yadviga fans out there. We've got a lot of Otto the Great fans out there. I'm even seeing like Twitch names named after these, these individuals. And then we're going to end the day with Gregory the Seventh against Gajimata. Okay. Now, um, the rest of the sets below that are the sets that we are going to have then on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then the round of 16, of course, is complete. If you are scheduling, right? If you are looking for more reasons to not do the work that you are already delaying anyways just go back to that look at the schedule keep in mind the tournament ends on march 3rd we will have every single day filled with hidden cup leading up towards that uh this upcoming weekend is going to end up being the semis and then the final uh and of course the big reveal and everything too all right so yeah it just just look at the dates i don't know if you guys are calendar people are you a calendar type of crew? I, I have no clue, but uh, I'm going to assume that one person out there uses a calendar, at least like a calendar on their phone. And uh, you could just look at those dates and have an idea basically every single day. Okay, cool. Heck yeah, calendars. Cool. I'm, I'm, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right. So I already introduced you the first series then, right? But the thing is, I appreciate history, but I can't remember any of it. My brain only has so much space. And it is overflowing with Age of Empires information, which is amazing when I'm casting Age of Empires and when I'm putting on a show. It is absolutely horrible if I want to do anything else with my life, right? So fortunately for us, you guys, you're, you're kind of cool with that deal, right? Because with Age of Empires too, you know, I'm here to be able to do my job. But when it comes to history, we have someone who's prepped for that to introduce our heroes because they actually existed, at least 15 out of the 16 of them, because one is an alpaca. Anyways, to introduce the next series, to introduce the heroes, we have my good friend Riley. Use the Riley emote in the chat if you have it as we dive in to Yadwiga. What's going on, mate? This is Riley Knight from the podcast half Assed History here to have a bit of a chat with you about the heroes featured in Hidden Cup 5. All the heroes the players are using to hide their true identities are real-life people from history featured as units in various Age of Empires campaigns. And while T90 is an avid history lover, his knowledge and memory of history would uh, pretty firmly make him a historical low elo legend, I think it's fair to say. So he invited me along to tell you a thing or two about these heroes we're watching square off against one another. Let's get to know one of them a little bit better. Jadwiga is remembered as the first woman to become the Queen of Poland, or technically speaking, the King, as that's what she was crowned as in 1384. That's the title she was given a couple of years after the death of her father, Louis the Great. The turbulent medieval politics of Eastern Europe around this period meant that Jadwiga's accession to power was not an easy or a simple thing. King Louis hadn't had any sons, but was still determined that one of his daughters would inherit Poland. Of course, given the way that women were regarded in those times, plenty of people didn't like this. And so when Louis died and Jadwiga stepped up to claim the throne, 
This caused a lot of issues, and it wasn't just because she was a woman, or really, actually just a girl, she was only 10 or so when she was crowned, but also because of the matter of who would reign alongside her as her husband. A lot of the Polish nobles didn't like the bloke that Jadwiga was betrothed to, a bloke named William, uh, the Duke of Austria, but nor did they like the other fella who was trying to muscle in on the Polish crown, Sigismund. Um, and on top of that, uh, a lot of them didn't like another potential king, Simovit IV, the Duke of Masovia. Honestly, the Polish nobility, the, the Schlachter, they didn't seem to like anyone much. I guess that's what happens when you give the Schlachter too many privileges. But there was one guy that they liked, a Lithuanian bloke by the name of Jogaila. Uh, despite him being a pagan, the Polish nobles were actually quite happy for Jadwiga and Jogaila to get married as it would bring about a few different things for Poland. Firstly, it would unify Poland with Lithuania, making both realms a lot stronger than they would be separately, so obviously not a bad outcome there. Secondly, as part of the marriage agreement known as the Union of Krevel, Jogaila agreed to convert to Christianity and spread it throughout his realm, which was another thing the Polish were very happy about. And thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, the Poles would of course get that 20% faster monastery team bonus BB power out those monks, especially with, you know, extra Polish gold generation. How's that for synergy? Anyway, Jadwiga and Jogaila, they were married in 1386. She was 12 and he was uh, <clears throat> 35. Yep. Uh, but uh, there is still a fair bit of debate as to how much power she actually held as, uh, as queen, or sorry, as, uh, as king rather. She seemed to be reasonably popular and well-liked, but these blasted schlachter and their privileges, they honestly may have been the ones actually running the kingdom with her as just a figurehead. But while she was at the helm, Poland did pretty well for itself. Uh, for instance, Jadwiga oversaw an invasion of Hungary, nicking land off of its king Sigismund, who by now was also her brother-in-law. Instead of marrying her, he married her sister Mary. But for the most part, Jadwiga's reign was peaceful and focused on diplomacy and negotiation. She was famed as a diplomat, in fact. She negotiated tense peace agreements with her husband's ambitious cousin Vitautas. She did everything she could to keep the peace between her realm and the ever-aggressive but obviously extremely slow Teutonic Knights. And despite having a very strong claim to the Kingdom of Hungary uh, after her sister Mary died, Jadwiga decided that discretion was the better part of valour and so didn't seek to press her claim. A wise and a sensible and a peaceful monarch, one who focused on building hospitals and schools and also presumably beautifully neat farms around her fallbooks, Jadwiga's reign tragically came to an end far earlier than it should have. In 1399 she became pregnant and after giving birth, neither mother nor child survived. Jogana continued to rule Poland, defending it in her name, uh, and from their marriage and from the Union of Krewu, the joint rulership of Poland and Lithuania was established and would continue for four centuries. Today, Jadwiga is remembered as one of the greatest Polish rulers in history, someone who governed fairly and peacefully and left the country a lot better than she found it. Her reign and her life were both short, tragically so, but even in the short time Jadwiga was on this planet, she made her mark on history and she is rightfully remembered for being a very worthy monarch. But what will her mark be on the history of Hidden Cup 5? Will Jadwiga prevail against the enemies that seek to bring ruin unto her? Keep watching Hidden Cup 5 to find out. Well, thanks again to Riley for that information. That is so funny, man, how we could pack so much history tied into Age of Empires here. And again, I think that's something that you forget about a little bit. Also, I hope you forget about the fact he, yet again, called me a low evil legend. I did ask for that to be removed. But, uh, my editors hold too much power. Anyways, we've got Jadwiga against Otto the Great coming up next. So we're going to move in and introduce good old Otto. Depending on whom you ask, Otto the Great is often credited with the establishment of the Holy Roman Empire itself. Others say it was established by Charlemagne in the year 800 when he was crowned as, as an emperor by the Pope. But all the Otto stands out there will insist that it was their boy who founded the HRE in 962 after consolidating power throughout East Francia, Saxony and other neighbouring regions. After inheriting his dad's titles, uh, King of East Francia and, uh, and Duke of Saxony in 936, Otto continued his old man's efforts to unify and consolidate the surrounding duchies in what is today Germany and he did a pretty good job too. Slowly but steadily, just like a Teutonic Knight, he brought more and more territory under his control through a combination of politics, diplomacy, marriage, and of course, sharp implements. Some of the Dukes he attempted to subjugate didn't love this. They attempted to rise in rebellion, presumably 
Otto just holed up in his castles and blasted the rebels to bits with, uh, with murder holes and extra arrows, but he was able to gather a lot of power for himself personally and ruled his expanding kingdom with a degree of authoritarianism that the realm really wasn't used to. But it worked. By the end of the 940s, he was largely uncontested as King of the Germans. He did have to deal with some uh, external threats though. He fought the French and the Burgundians too. So a uh, good thing that Teutons have such good monks and, and fully upgraded halbs to deal with all those knights. And look, maybe even if the knights dealt with the halbs, they certainly aren't dealing with those juicy ironclad siege onages. But most notably, in the 950s, Otto had to go up against the Magyars, who were raiding further and further west. Now, obviously, Otto must have had good macro because he absolutely wiped the floor with the Magyars. Best way to beat them through eco, cheap tune and farms, mate. Although, I don't think the decisive Battle of Lechfeld was decided by how many farms both sides had, to be honest. But whatever the case, it did result in the annihilation of the Magyar forces in 955, and it stopped the Magyars in their tracks, preventing their continued westward expansion, and this made Otto a hero to Christendom. Not only did he save his own kingdom from the Magyars, he was perceived as more broadly having stopped a pagan invasion from the east, and his momentum continued. He conquered the Kingdom of Italy in 961. Even with the Italian tech tree, there's not really much you can do against Crenellation's castles. And the next year, Otto was recognised and crowned as the Holy Roman Emperor in 962 by Pope John XII, just as Charlemagne had been back in 800. Well, okay, not obvi obviously not just as he'd been. It's 162 years later, mate, come on. It wasn't Pope John XII back then, it was Pope Leo III, but you understand what I mean. Otto spent the rest of his career as Holy Roman Emperor and spent a lot of his time mainly navigating disagreements with Constantinople. The Byzantines really didn't like him being proclaimed Emperor. But eventually, after having consolidated an enormous empire, one that would help to define the medieval history of Europe, Otto died in 973. And he remains one of the most important figures of the Middle Ages. Whether you credit him or Charlemagne with the foundation of the Holy Roman Empire, there is no denying his colossal impact on European history. But far more importantly, what will be his impact on Hidden Cup 5? Will Otto once again rise to greatness as he battles it out with his latest round of formidable foes? Or will he crumble, having peaked over a thousand years ago? Stay tuned to find out as Hidden Cup 5 continues. So, we have our heroes, and now we have our co-caster. Mem, happy to welcome you to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing really great. Excited, really excited. Thank you for having me. Been checking the, the historical videos. I know probably as much as you from the historical, so it's very good <laughs> that you bring Riley here, you know. But you have, you have seen that when you get the production, you, you cannot let them to, to call you low, hello, legend. What, what is this, Tristan? What I this? listen, I had for I had very clear instructions, and then the you know, they clearly didn't follow those instructions, so it is what it is. I'm sure you will make a few <laughs> farm jokes throughout the cast today. So, <laughs> no, 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 in the first game, no. Okay, second, first game. Okay, I'm I'm okay with that. Bro. I'm okay with that. I'm giving you one game, okay? I'm giving you one game. I'm really okay. excited. Well, I'm that works. Really, really, really to talk about many of the guests of the heroes. We were talking, we have to say, we, we are cheating a little bit. We were talking also from yesterday before joining. And we have some more data here, Tristan. Yeah, we have lots of things to talk about. Oh uh, this is the time span. We, this is also covered in some ways, but this is the, this is the matchup that we're going to cover here, ma'am. Yet Viga against Otto the Great. It should be fantastic. But, uh, you know, to bring it back to us, we're going to take a couple minutes to speculate. What do you think about the first day? We had a lot of people guessing on players. What are your thoughts after seeing four players yesterday? Did we see someone in the top four, Mem? If I say that I don't agree with your viewers, you're going to bring me more? <laughs> <laughs> to the channel. No, I, because listen, I mean, I was, you know, tell me, tell me. I give you permission. You don't have to agree with them. I think they're okay with that. They want honesty. Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't think that ever one of the players is going to be Jordan, one of the winner. You know, I really believe that Jordan, I don't know how prepared he has been, but okay. yep. how Suman Guru, for example, play in the second series, I, 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 it has to be something, someone big. I have to be someone, someone really, really strong, in my opinion. I don't know what you think about it. It was such a close series. Like the, the fight, yeah. the, the push from John Biro was so strong and so consistent. The games were crazy. And Sumangaru 
it, it did. I agree with you. It, it could have been a really top talent against another big talent. It could have been like whoever you view or consider to be top three against someone who's maybe around number seven or number eight, because with random seeding, it could easily happen. Yeah. It, yeah. it was crazy. I mean, I, I was thinking that it could be Hera, Vasco de Gama. But yeah. there's some yeah. point that I think was missing, you know? Uh, I didn't see too many quick walls, you know, that Hera, Viper, you know, they're doing that the most. And, and I don't know. I, I, I have the feeling that in the first two games, is Hera this kind of super aggressive player like he was Vasco de Gama yesterday? And also, is that greedy in the game that he lost? Because if I'm not mistaken, he lost in a, in a greedy way. Well, I don't know. Mm. I'm really not sure about that, you know? And then, yeah. I don't know what you think about that. I, I, I have a, yeah, a, I mean, a name there that I didn't mention and not many people mentioned. And it's Leary. I could see, I, I could see Vasco de Gama being Leary or Hart. Yes, I think Leary and Hart have similar tendencies to Hera. And when I think of Hera, I would always see him putting up a bit of a better fight on Hidden Forts, which is the more closed map. I think Hera's got better closed map tendencies when compared to Hart or Leary. So I, I agree. I mean, people voted Hera for Vasco. I think I understand why they voted Hera for Vasco. However, after today, I'm very curious to see what people think because as we see more games, suddenly people yeah. are like, ooh, wait, why all did changed. I say that about this person? It all changes, yeah. yeah. Um, and, change. you know, final point, man, I just got a take. I got a hot, spicy take. I hope people appreciate it, okay? So... Yesterday, we were speculating on who Jean Bureau was. And Jean Bureau built Palisades on the shoreline on cross, okay? The only player to have done that who was in the main event, was in, thus did it in the qualifiers, was Mihai, okay? So that made everyone say Mihai. Mihai just is a qualifier. He's the youngest player. It makes sense. Maybe he's losing in the first round. But Mihai is teamed with Dark, who also did in the qualifier. Now, Dark's not in the main event. Dark is close with Vinchester. So you have Vinchester as a possibility. You also have Mihai teamed with Sebastian, who's also in the main event. So you have that possibility. And then um, it was broadcasted live, man. Like everybody saw Mihai build the Palisades. I think it's a good strategy. I think that if you, I think more players will do it in the round of 16. I think we're going to see one more player build palisades on the shoreline and i think everyone's going to be like what like holy like it can't we don't necessarily know who it is now i think it's smart and to the and to details that i mentioned you and i'm going to mention now to all your viewers there was a pause during that series that the guy said sorry drop 14. there's only yep. one player that exactly said that because he's now not in his country he's far away having problems and he's winchester there's only also Winchester did do that player. in the qualifier. There were three instances where he said, yes. sorry, drop 14. Yep. Sorry, drop 14. You know, and there's only one player older than me high that used the hands. Winchester as Winchester. well. Yes. Okay. Yes, you're, you're right. Yeah. You're I it. think Winchester could have been. And then if we think Suman Guru is someone like Viper, suddenly you think like Viper winning 4-1 over Winchester isn't that crazy a thought, right? Or like, if you think Suman Guru is like uh, Hera or Leary or, or, you know, Tato, it's like, okay, that would make sense that they could beat someone like Vinchester 4-1. So I think... With, with crazy games. I with think crazy games. it's good theories. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Viper? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Suman Guru. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm spoiling you know? it here. Suman Guru, you know, it was very greedy in the, in the game he lost, you know? Like, never make yeah. a spear. It was open, you know? And tell me how many players you were mentioning also is doing elite battle elephants. Not With many, dude. Not, Not many. many. Yeah. yeah. Not many. I, Not I think many. I think it was smart. I think it's a smart thing that on Gold Rush, when you have all the gold, you should probably do. But most players are not doing it. They're going for elephant archers or they're going for like Ratha with monks or something. Uh, wait, wait, uh, Tristan. How many players pick Dravidians in, in cross? Uh, that's, that's a good point too. We didn't talk about Dravidians too much. Dravidians from Sumanguru, Dravidians, maybe like a Tato, a Viper, a Doubt. Yeah. A GL thing, you know? Yep. But now GL uh, is also with Hera, I don't, so. We'll find out, we'll find out if Hera <laughs> still agrees with that. Yeah. Um, okay. 
So yeah, it's t it's tricky because Dravidians are kind of a normal pick too. But anyways, we speculated, people. I hope you enjoyed the speculation. We are now going to speculate on our first series. We're going to have the maps and the draft come up on screen right now. Mem and I would not shown this ahead of time. Uh, it's going to be our first look, and oh my god, I'm excited mm -hmm. because we have evacuation as the first home map pick for Yadviga, and then we have hidden forts. As game number one, man, but we are going to have both the brand new maps integrated into the first series. This should be sick. I like, did you pay the players to, to ban islands all the time? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't do that. I mean, their decision. Uh, no, no. Well, I did that, Tristan. Sorry, you know. <laughs> I went behind your back, you know. Sorry, man. I gave some bonus, you know. If you ban islands, $200 per player, you know. <laughs> it's, it's working for now. It's working for now. No, I'm joking, you know. Um, I like a lot the maps. Bade yesterday bring, in my opinion, the, the, the best game so far. Obviously, we have only one day, but the, the, the Bay game yep. yesterday was, was insane. So looking forward again, evacuation seems to be a very really nice map because, well, you have to move to the other part, you know, instead of the main land that you start, you need to really migrate there. Uh, honestly, Tristan, uh, checking these maps, the six maps, Hidden Fort, it's mm, depend on how the players play, but the others, probably my favorite maps in the in the map pool. So we're gonna I have agree. some good luck probably with this series. I like a lot these now, maps. Now in this in this tournament, we have seven people that were invite only for main event. We had nine people who qualified, and there were seven maps that were played in the qualifier. People, if you look at Auto the Great side, it is Arabia slopes and mud flow, and he also banned out cross and islands which i'm thinking maybe he experienced in the qualifier and wasn't good on so if i had a prediction right off the bat i would say out of the great is a player who came through the qualifier is comfortable on arabia slopes and mud flow so we're thinking like arabia style maps whereas the other player is a player who's maybe played hidden cups before and is comfortable with being more creative right it's just things you got to think about yeah, I, I like that way. Then in this equation, we could remove, for example, Tatot. Why? Because I like that the point that the evacuation by Cub might be very nice here, but Tatot was in the qualifiers, right? But he will never ban islands. He will pick it, for example, stuff like this. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think that Jadwiwa is going to be probably an invited player and not to the great one from the qualifier? Is your guess I think right I now. think I could I could see Tato's kind of the exception from the qualifier. I could see Tato being Yadviga yeah. in terms of the picks. Either, but honestly, yeah. I think like I think like Yadviga could be someone like uh, someone like Doubt would be great for this draft, right? Evacuation is new. Hidden Forts is closed and it's new. Bay and Cup is is a bit older. I hate to lean more into like in the past. Doubt got Princess Yodit, and we have one queen here. So I, I hate to lean into that this is going to be another one of those situations for doubt. But yeah, and then like maybe Auto the Great, again, just based on the draft, we're speculating heavily. Maybe like a Sebastian, someone who's just like super good on like open maps, a player, maybe like Ganji, who goes for like more so, um, he's not more of an archer player, he's more of a scout player. I don't know, man. It's, it's so yeah. fun to think well, about though. And I'm really excited. Here... I was just checking the civilizations, and with the civilizations, I could tell you, for example, that also I don't see doubt being here. Let's take a, a fast look. Aztec yep. is banned. Then Mayas and Incas are available. Maybe there's too much in the screen, but I don't see them pick at all, any of them. Yep, that's true. Doubt would you lean know? towards Mezzo. Maybe someone like Yo would lean a little bit more towards Mezzo as well. Um, you yeah, do so see we, Saracens yeah. in there. Saracens I, is, is kind of a Tato-esque pick sometimes. So yeah. certainly things to think with, about. With Bengalis, Bengalis, I, I think also they pick a lot, uh, the GL players. But but yeah. the, honestly, it, it's kind of hard because you look at the civilizations that they have banned. Aztecs, Mongols, Armenians, Malay, Cumans, Bohemians, so Khmer, good. Vikings, Portuguese, yeah. and Britons. So strong civilizations as well. I think the, the gameplay is going to give a lot of a lot of information as well. Really, really. I agree. Now, I'm looking forward. I'm going to I'm going to clarify one thing for people who have the question. Now, we didn't see it on day one. But because of this preparation aspect, because we want players to be able to, to have at least one map that they practice and pick, there's, there's pick on maps before the ban. So Evacuation and Arabia were both early picks before anything was banned out. So that was a strong choice from both of them. And then when it comes to civs, 
after the round of bans, they both get what's called a hidden sib pick. And they can technically, if they have the same decision, pick the same civilization for game number one. And that is what, or, or sorry, not for game one, but for Civ one. Uh, and they both picked Chinese. My guess right now is that Chinese is probably going to be on mud flow. If we get to mud flow, then we saw that a lot in the qualifier. But that's not a bug. That is a possibility. And uh, man, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to hop into game number one here. I mean, if, if we can, call Mapu, Mapu, let's go and go for the, for let's, the game let's one four, for sure. Let's 14, yeah. yeah. Well, let's go. Watch, watch, watch okay. Jadvika be red. Oh my God, Jadvika, Tato confirmed already here in the third series. We looked at the draft <laughs> and we were thinking that based on the draft, maybe it's Tato, but that's just us getting too excited. And uh, in, the, in the blue, sorry, we have Otto the Great playing as the Teutons, which is interesting because we just watched the, hit, the video on Otto the Great. Tootin's pick here on Hidden Forts, and then up against Out of the Great is Yadviga. It's Tootin's Hindustanis. This is a new map where you could chop through to the middle to take advantage of additional resources. And uh, with me is Mem. And Mem, I could not be more excited for this. The Civ matchup and the map is just so perfect to start off the series. Yeah, and honestly, this is kind of, I don't know if you can see that this map, thank you for having me, by the way, and uh, Teutons Hindustanis, is this for you consider a, a, a clown map? Like, you can, we can see a lot of monks, a lot of aggression in castles. In feudal, looks more unlikely, because if it's the case, isn't Teutons a, a civilization that can shine a lot in this map? Um, I, I think, I think that it can be. You know, the, the, the whole vision over the map, what I wanted with the map, was to have the option to be clowny and aggressive or uh, the alternative, which is like be more the boom and expansive map. So to answer your question, I think it can be. So I could see Tutans being strong, but Hindustanis could also be really strong if they want to boom. Yeah, but that should be more for the later game. I see that Tutans can be very dangerous if they go for very aggressive gameplay in Castle Age. I don't know what you think. Um, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I think like, Tutans, what they might want to do here because they're a bit slower is to work their way through the middle more um and you're gonna we'll see how they choose to chop now two very distinct differences here we have yadviga chopping on the two tiles of trees and there out of the great is just placed the lumber camp and he is not worried about chopping through from what i can see because he'd be placing a different lumber camp and he would be micring a bit differently so i'm thinking out of the great will be in no rush to come to the middle here and yet Viga may be rushing to the middle to try and get the extra rhinos. Okay, well, I, what I like in this map that did remind me, I don't know if you remember the Grand Barra for in Battle of Africa, is I like these rogues that are there because it makes that you cannot really block him from going outside. You know, is if that wasn't there, it can be very snowball-y, as, as Mapu pointed out there. So it's nice. But it still, it makes that you can also ward yourself, but your opponent cannot block you out. So it's open more possibilities, yes. not recent. Yeah, yeah. So, Mem, in order to get to this point, uh, we had players who lost in the qualifier and myself play dozens of games. And we had a bunch of different versions. And basically, what I fe my feeling on it, after watching all those games, of course, testing it, tweaking it, is that the middle is not always necessary. And I think that you could see, like, so, so imagine in theory, someone takes the middle and someone wants to pressure with the middle and they want to go kill their opponent. If the other person doesn't chop through at all, where are they going to go? It's over. They're, yeah, it's they're over. stuck in the middle. They're stuck in the middle. Yeah, they, yeah. they can't go anywhere. So, like, in theory, yeah. with all the hunt and the berries on the outside, you could I could see sips like Poles being insane here. Someone like Mr. Yo might pick Poles, just farm on the outside, back away, and then raid on the side. So I'm, I'm like, real excited. It's still super early, but I would expect that this is going to lead to some really fun strategies. Well, Red, uh, it looks like it's going to go up with 18 population, which is what it's doing yeah. right now, very yeah. fast. Would you expect that with Hindustanis because they have cheaper village, so it's, it's kind of normal to see this. But Tutos yeah. also could be quick if uh, uh, it's going to be a little bit slower. Like two population in a map like this can be quite a lot, uh, Tristan. Well, think about what he's doing here. He's walling, Otto the Great is walling the outside. And he also didn't place the lumber camp where he would chop immediately through. So this to me... Feels like Otto is not in a rush to go to the middle here. And he's he's just placed the lumber camp, which is more efficient for his wood. So he may be seeding farms. I could easily see this being just a fast castle from Otto the Great. Okay. 
For now, we see how he's going outside. Jadwiga with the belly is going to take that Rhino. He's taking the Rhino. He's not finding yet his opponent. And, well, that's 400 foot more. Uh-oh. He's blocking himself. Yep. Has to be careful. There we go. And not bad. He's going to be there with the, with the foot. Uh, we have seen also some very quick up time. And depending on what the opponent is doing, well, you don't do a lot of army. Go for economy. And I still try to transition for, for Catholics as soon as possible. But for now, we see yep. that Jadwiga is doing already the barrack. So might go for some scouts. Yeah, interesting. Out of the Great is going up. Out of the Great is definitely not fast casting with this. It might be more of a farm play. Now, look at the scout now from Yadviga. Let's see if Yadviga is going to try anything here. So, you cannot wall behind the opponent's wood line because of the rock terrain. But what you can do is you can use your scout and you can use your villager. Oh my god, Yadviga is going to go for... Yadviga is going to try and get two of them here. Both. This is... This is kind of tricky. You have to run back towards the rhino. <laughs> yeah, and this is this is done a lot for players that play a lot. Black Forest, Ganji, Barl. I mean, it can be done for anyone, but they are used to do it all the time, you know. But those yeah, rhinos yeah. animation attack is faster. You have to be careful here because you might lose it. He's gonna save it in the last second, but be careful there. Oh man, it has yeah, to go foot. It... Weakening the boar, Rhinos with the TC, good timing, well, good execution. That's really nice stuff from Yadviga there. Okay. He take a lot of food, Estra, as you can see there. Is he doing the stable? I think he is. And what is Blue doing? He's doing... Just the... scouting the outside. Just scouting the outside. No rush to go to the middle. I mean, we're seeing scouts oh from Yadviga. You got to be really careful. If you're auto, if you cut through to the middle here, can we see his lumber camp? I actually think he might be intentionally delaying cutting the one tree so he yeah. doesn't yeah yeah he's not intentionally chopping through this is all thought out mem he if he wanted to be cutting through he would be doing so but he's not going to do so right now yeah but red is coming with the ability forward i wonder if he's gonna make a tower there to be annoying no no he's taking another rhino and red has seen that he's not even close to kut so he's not really worried about that he did the stable he's yeah. doing the market and Jadwiga is not even doing a single unit, as we were pointed out. He's just going to yeah. go directly to Castellage. <laughs> so it's crazy. Just passing. Just passing. Okay. Out of the great walks through to the middle and sees that the Rhinos are being brought in. Uh, by the way, Teutons have only won one game. Uh, this is would be on the qualifiers, of course, which was on Corey. They have not done that well. But yeah, of course, in the main event, we have more bands now. So and it's it's the big boys that. now. <laughs> but the, tell the pollution, they have to tell us who, who won that win. <laughs> we need to know who <laughs> was that guy. <laughs> you know, we need to guess properly. More information. Tell tell to me, Freezy. Man, this is, no, tell this is interesting. Like, yeah. if you look at resources collected right now, the player who has not gone for the middle and who has not gone for these rhinos is actually ahead. Now, yeah. that doesn't mean that's going to stay that way, but it, it's it's so wild to see a completely different thought process from both of them. We don't see that, right? What tends to happen is there's a meta, and everyone says, okay, this is the best way to play the game, and uh, everyone just does the same thing. But because there was no public games on this, because it's this new, we're seeing two completely different approaches. Yeah, well, I mean, might we also think about this, like... Uh, Blue has got zero idle time with his economy. Because if we check the idle TC, we see now almost no idle TC for both. But idle economy, Red has more idle echo. He's walking with the villains a lot more, sending more, you know, but he's still going up to, to castle it quicker than his opponent, yep. as you can see. So what is now going to be the following, uh, Tristan? Because Jadwiga is going up 15 minutes wow, in castle. Well, really fast or early time. 16. Very fast. Well, most likely, my thinking here is that Viga wants a TC towards the middle. Now, I just noticed that Otto the Great is moving those two villagers from tree to tree. So the one tree there, as Mapu is trying to show us, is actually lower on the wood count. And he was on it, and he moved away. So he still doesn't want to open that up because he knows that Yadviga can come in. And he's adding a barracks now. So it seems like we might see like some pikes from Otto the Great through the middle as, as an option for him. Pike Siege, Pike Monks, because only Pikes, I, I, it has to be followed with something, right? Or not? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, man, also, it's many goal. Small... Man, go man in a bread, uh, Tristan. So it's going to yeah. go heavy on, on goal. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Yeah, Pike Monk, Pike Siege is always perfect. I think the worry here is what if the opponent pushes you? What if the opponent attacks? And Yadviga, the player who prioritized the middle mem, 
is now going to back away a little bit, is planning for the outside. So we had the player who started planning on the with the inside is going to expand to the outside, and the player who's started without the middle is going to go to the middle. It's a complete reverse of how they've started here. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of complicated here for red because with how you attack here, the Teutons, you don't have knights, you're going to go light care. Well, if you go pikes and he's doing even forging, what do you do? Cavarches. Cavarches is also tricky here because if you go, if your opponent is going with some siege monks, Cavarches are not going to be really effective. Yeah, you can raid, but I don't know. Anyway, for now, we see how red is basically going arena style, extra TC, spears and scouts, and a monastery there. But blue is doing the same right now. Monastery as well yep. as I can see there. And uh, obviously a little bit behind in the timing with adding TCs, but for now, double monastery. So heavily on monks, Mr. Mr. Tristan. Wow, interesting. I mean, this is, is, is also just so fun because there's also no relics in the middle. So it's like, if, I think if there were multiple relics in the middle, every game might be a monk bush. But now it's like, you're just going to have the monks there for control. I love the monk edition from Yadviga, but Yadviga won't have as many. And pretty soon, out of the great, might have an army to be able to contest the middle, but we'll want those spearmen to be alive. And the spearmen can't really run too far here. But nice kill there. I have to say, out of the great is really, really, is a chill player, man. Like a relaxed player who doesn't seem in any rush. That starting scout has just been looking around the middle. Very impressive. Okay, who are chill players? This is probably MBL, right? Very chill, never going for the aggro, if, right? If okay. Auto the Great, okay, I mean, Monk goes down. <laughs> if Auto the Great, if Auto the Great gets housed, did 50 pop, MBL confirmed? Okay, let's see. I, I, let's, could, uh, I could see it. Actually, okay. hold on a second. Can we look at the wood line? Those houses next to the wood line from Auto? Can we look at that? The outside, I'm so sorry. The, the, there's Mapu's like, what are you talking about? I think the outside wood line for auto. Oh, I mean, I, we'll see. We'll see. 50 pop, man. 50 pop. If we see auto the great get housed, it might be an MVL sighting. Okay. Well, he's doing now extra tone center. He did will borrow. So he's having the economy. He's two extra TCs right now. Coming with a lot of spears and monks. Who likes to go with the monks and now Micron as well? Let's see the micro. He has a, a tournament. tournament red did not he, he got it already. The monks. He converts the monks and then he has oh. the spears there as well. And Auto the Great is going to take the middle. And Auto the Great also is housed at 50 pop, maybe, sort of, kind yeah. of. Does the light cap dive in here? <laughs> Yeah, but there's a lot going on, Tristan. He's doing he was without the loom. I mean, if he no was loom. committed, but he has a lot of experience. No loom till now. Well, he's chill and greedy. Greedy and chill. Who can be greedy and chill? I'm not gonna say names. We just give information, all information, right, Tristan? Anyway, TC in the middle. <laughs> people people might be thinking, right, Tristan, that he converted two monks and lost them. Oh, he lost two monks. Doesn't matter. It's not his own monks. So definitely, yeah. Mm, the, yeah. the map control seems to be better here for blue, but check the economy. Tristan, already yeah. eight, nine dollars ahead for, for red. Yeah, Yadviga, it's really smart that Yadviga decided to build the TCs where he did here. Um, or I guess where she okay. did, depending on how you're looking at it. Because if these TCs would have come up in the middle, this would be a very, very bad situation. It's still not great, man, to leave your main gold like this. But at the end of the day, there is still gold and stone on the outside. So you could yeah. move to the outside if you're Yadviga. You do need some type of an answer to Pike Monk, though. And I'm not really sure what to suggest. I think it's going to be really difficult. I think a castle is the only option. A castle with gulams is the only option, yep. honestly. Being yep. yep. being Jedwiga. And he's mining a lot of stone, as you can see. You can see how also Otto the Great is already with 20 on goal, 8 on stone. Not the best macro, but for going full clown is what probably you need. You might buy even yep. a stone to make a potential castle. He could go even towers. Remember, those towers got murder holes as well. So... I really believe that blue auto the great is gonna be even greater and you're gonna keep gonna keep trying to go more and more aggressive i like it man and th then you have to think where are you vulnerable and where where auto the great could have problems is on the outside and look at that auto has two pikes waiting auto's like i haven't seen light cab in a while and so has the pikeman there sees the light cab immediately drops some house walls here to protect and that is brilliant defense there from auto the great Yadviga might have a castle on her face soon. Okay. There's the pikes. He's now taking those. He's getting more map. The, the thing is, 
He looks at Tristan that he's getting map control, but the map is huge. Red can is still expanding. And I'm sorry to say, Tristan, but Menstradamus is there on point. The castle is happening. But let's be honest, what else with Hindustan is? You need to do a castle. Ooh, in my ooh, opinion. Oh, but ooh, that's open. Like have almost that's cut pretty... through here. No, that's, that's still open. I think there's a, a, a hole between the house and the palace it, side. It, but he I didn't go. Yeah, two. it was open. There you go. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Well, he gets okay. through now. Like have will die to the TC. Obviously, Otto the Great doesn't know that castle for Yadviga is going up yet. So it's still a vill lead for Yadviga. Yadviga gets a little bit of vision here in the middle now. Gets to distract Otto the Great. And Otto the Great's thinking, I'm going to push that TC. I'm going to win the game with this. But, oh man, I mean, could run right into the castle. And now that push through the middle, man, might not actually be a strong option anymore for Otto the Great. It's very difficult to decide on what you do from here. <laughs> He's coming with a castle, but he can't now because the castle is there. Now, look where he put the castle himself. But this castle is a really a problem castle for Otto the Great because he doesn't know how close is his opponent to go up to Imperial. Yeah, right? So I agree. it's tricky it's, it's very if you tricky. put the castle there. Yeah. It's very tricky. I think a lot of players, if they, if they see castle v. castle, they immediately idle their TCs and they try and go Imp. So I'm noticing right now, Jadwiga is not producing any more Vils. We're probably going to see, a, I think, it wouldn't surprise me if a market's being built and we're going to see wood sold and food purchased right now. Yeah, even selling stone, actually, Oof. just to get up All to the All the stone lane. sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's the right decision, right, Tristan? I mean, it, we're talking. In this kind of situation, you need to go up. Yeah. And even idle in the TC, he still had six villages. So, right now, Jadwiga is on the way to Imperial with very important chances to take this game. But Otto the Great is not so far, Tristan. Ooh, look at that. Look at... The, yeah, Vigan might cut through in another area here. And Otto the Great sees some of this eco. Now, the monks and pikes can't run through there. But you definitely don't want... If you're the Teutons here, man, the last thing you want is for this to be chopped through where there's a bunch of different angles for Lightcav to come raid you. You want this to be yeah. simple and smooth. So I think you, you try and prevent that if possible. Yeah, so I'm I'm checking the economy. Look at resources collected. Why this is also happening? Not even Will Barrow for Jetwiga. Well, yeah. handcart. Who is gonna be missing this kind of upgrades? Because we have to check all details right now. They are not giving, in my opinion, a lot of information with this kind of gameplay. It's been a little bit of a clown strategy, but didn't convert I a have, lot. Didn't go super. I will aggro, tell so, you. I don't know. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm getting too Come excited man. here. I, I will tell you a fun, <laughs> uh, an interesting fact. So I have data, right? As the light cab get in. To attack villagers, this is a great find for Yadviga. But you're right. You know, these eco upgrades, they haven't come in. There is a player who we speculated on already that is known for having very late wheelbarrow compared to other pros and for picking red. And that name is Tato. So just something to think about as Yadviga kills some vills. Great raids there and will be in the Imperial Age faster. Yeah, but there's a problem. Please, Mapu, let's focus in the castle because if he take the castle he's going with the rams and i don't know if he's going to be able to take that castle no but he's repairing these petars also as well taking the village going with two rams already here look at now the farmers tristan nine farmers only for jadwila it's going to be an imperial but what economy he has his economy is really at the limit he will be able to do maybe one trebuchet and that's it for now and Otto is repairing the rams underneath the castle <sighs> Which is why the petards were forced. You do not see players do that that frequently, man. We've got two very special players here. The Rams have worked. And we even had one of the converted villagers make a stable on the, on the, the side there. Oh, man, man. I mean, I'm God. with you. It's like right now, Yadviga can't make traps that easily. And can't stop these two freaking Rams. And now Otto the Great is also <laughs> in the Imperial Age. Yeah, and he has chemistry, he's doing the cap runs, all the average in the monks, the gulams are going to take over now and gonna take those runs, yes. But check that we got resources, very balanced economy. Everything zero resources, only the wood he just sell a and, thousand and wood we to have, get some gold. And we have movement, we have movement. There's more things happening in the back. There's blue in Yadviga's base. There's blue in Yadviga's base. The stable, oh, it's still the stable, I'm stupid. But we've got a knight coming from that stable. We've got the mangonel over the wood line hitting the TC. This chaos that Otto the Great is bringing right now is undoing Yadviga, and still we will have the Trebor happening in the middle. This is craziness.
Yeah, uh, but Blue has a very good position here. He has all those upgrades. Look at the amount of farming he has. He's only four bullets behind. Red is kind of stuck now doing the chemistry, but he's ready in there, as you can see. And the castle is going to be down quicker now for Red. So, Oto the Great is being great in this game. I know it's an easy joke, Tristan, but it's true. He's playing, in my opinion, <laughs> really, really nice. It's and now insane. he has four tone centers also. Yeah. I agree. It's insane. The capped Ram edition, we don't see that very frequently, man. People say, if I don't have Siege Ram, I'm not going to go for Rams at all. The Sneaky Knights have worked very well. The Trebuchets are coming out. The Monk oh. gets converted there. There's still converted. a random Villager. Yeah. I mean, imagine trying to be Yadviga. It's your first series in Hidden Cup. You have a good strategy, a strategy you practiced all week. And then the opponent does something that none of your practice games have told you was good, right? Not taking the Rhinos in the middle. Monk Pikes are pushing through the middle afterwards. Then, like, rams and repairs. And all of a sudden, Otto the Great will have this p important position in the middle. There's endless amounts of gold there. And I, I just don't know what Yadviga is supposed to do to get himself out of this position right now. Yeah, well, we still didn't see ACCM here in the tournament because we have not seen someone with five, four, five thousand score difference and not resigning, you know? So <laughs> we still need to. <laughs> I mean, seriously, we didn't see right. that. And we are already over 1K score, as you can see. Over 1K score now is still going. He's moving. So if the game keep. Ah, it's not him. Damn it. <laughs> it's not ACCM. Ah. It's not ACCM. Okay, not ACCM. Confirmed. Yeah. GG call. Confirmed we have yet to see ACCM in Hidden Cup 5. Okay. Yeah, Yadviga just realized, I can't do anything against this. There's just too many things happening. And man, what an interesting game. And, and you know what is actually so fascinating about this is I speculated that Otto the Great might be a player who isn't as good on some of the new maps. As we look to the KD there, that was great. The amount of conversions was great. We'll see the economy as well. I mean, the economy without the extra Rhinos was so good. The timing on the push was so smooth. And at the end of the day, cheap Teuton farms was superior to getting a couple extra rhinos there. Um, okay. My goodness, uh, man. I that give was you so a, good. I give you a feeling. I feel this game play. We need to see more games. But I have some NBL vibes here. Yes. With Teuton yes. and how he played in this one. You know? And the draft. Look at Arabia, Slopes, and Mudflow. MBL's like, I want maps that are as close to Arabia as possible. I agree with you. I think Auto the Great... Land completely. Yeah. Yeah. I think Auto the Great gives me big MBL vibes. Um, that is obviously, if, for, for whoever Auto the Great is, a great way to start it off. And we are going to see more creativity from Yadviga because Yadviga's got all hidden cup maps. Evacuation, Bay, and Cup. The maps that are, well, Evacuation brand new and then Bay and Cup maps that have only been used in Hidden Cups in the past. So, man, man, what a... I mean, we, we hype it up because it's a, an important series regardless, but what a special series we have here, right? This is a truly special series. The players are so different from one another. Yeah, and honestly, I, I really think that he has played this really well because Jadwiga did the castle weaker than his opponent. No panic at all. He got in battle faster as well. He never lose his own castle. He will keep going, controlling the army completely. Uh, very solid play. Uh, let's be honest. Like, obviously, uh, the winners yesterday were really great, but the losers didn't play bad at all. It's just that the winners yesterday played really insane. Honestly, it was That's really true. high gameplay from That's them. True. And in this one, what that we got really did wrong according to the, to the situation he, he had and the civilization. I don't see what he Not can much. do more. Yeah, honestly. I think, I think um, this is what it kind of came back to for me, though, is like there's this interesting thing about this map, Mem, where if you cut through to the middle and your opponent does not, you're suddenly like, I don't know what to do, right? And then they get to decide when they come in and surprise you. So Yadviga was looking like, I'm ready for you. I have scouts. I'm ready. And nothing was happening. And then all of a sudden, out of the darkness, come pikemen, monks, atonement, and then eventually a castle drop. So I think like, I think if both players cut through to the middle, the like, like right away, going scouts is great. But if that doesn't happen, it's kind of difficult for the scout player to really do anything until the other player is prepared to deal with the threat of the scouts. Yeah, I, I was very, 
very short distance, not super open that you can really raid with them. Also, if you want to yeah. use monks to, to support those uh, scouts, your opponent has Teutons that it has extra uh, bonus anti-conversion, let's say. So it was everything working great for Otto the Great. But I'm cheating, uh, Tristan. And if you want, I can tell you what is going to be the next map. And then we talk about that because I know already, you know? And yeah, it's a I map that you like. I it. don't. I imagine it's going to be. I, I have no clue. I, how are you even getting this information, man? Was it been passed down? Because. Uh, we can hop into I, game number two. <laughs> well, Did because. You look at the <laughs> I no 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 and because I'm checking also that they give for for the other castes you know to know what is going to be the the next map oh, you know oh, and then oh, I was checking oh, yeah. I was checking as well to see and then we can talk about that or you want that I keep the suspense it's your choice well the suspense is ruined we're going to we hop into game suspense. 2 anyways we're going to hop into game number okay. 2 game number 2 I agree with you sometimes it's nice to speculate but I prefer to do my speculations in the game let's see what okay. it is this will be Yadviga's choice of course go. And Yadviga goes for evacuation. And like we thought, man, with, with how the draft looked, our red player is going to be a player who is ready for new strategy, who has used that practice period and is is hopefully going to have a good strategy prepared for us here. Uh, Yadviga is playing for the Japanese. Otto the Great has the Persians. And I do want to remind people that there's this boar on the shoreline and one other player went for the shoreline bore in the previous uh, day. And it was really fast for Yadviga to move out there. And now I'm thinking that Yadviga, whoever this player is, likely trained with Vasco de Gama, who played on day one. Because remember, this was immediate. The scout has gone out there. A lot of players will not want to lose the HP on their scout. I'd love to see it. Yeah, it did the same yesterday and, and took the, the same way. Yeah. So what it can be? Oh, my God. This is so, I always have said that for me, I mean, this is pretty obvious, right? But with the 16 players, it's very hard to, to know really the players in the round one, Tristan. Yeah, it's super agreed. difficult. It, yeah. And it's, it's probably the more, the more fun because the, the, the latest the, the tournament goes, more or less you, you get more an idea who can be more or less. It's hard, hard to predict always 100%. But yep. this is what it made super, super fun. You know, the, 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 the first round is maybe even more exciting, you know, because you don't, it can be anyone, right? So Agreed. it's crazy, right? It's really crazy. I don't know. But about the Sifs, what do you prefer here, Tristan? Because both are really strong. And I think Cavarches in Castles might have a, a lot to say here. I, I think I could see it, definitely. I think both of these Sifs actually have a very smooth start here. So if we could take off the Fog of War for a second, just to kind of remind people of what we're working with here. The, the starting islands are very barren. Like, you just don't have a lot to work with. The trees are going to be gone, and, and you need to leave, which is why it's called evacuation. Um, and so I think with the Persians getting the extra food and, and wood at the start, it helps them a lot. The Japanese having the cheaper lumber camps and, and mills and mining camps helps them too. And then that's where the players will want to be. They'll want to be out in the grassy terrain, out where all the extra food and plentiful resources are. So my thinking, Mem, is the Japanese are better when it comes to the early game flexibility. But if this becomes a mobility game on the other area of the map, Persians could be really strong there with how fast their knights could be. Okay. Let's see what they're going to do. Remember that the economy is, is great for, for both civilizations, right? Yep, and yep, yep. Uh, one with the with the fishing ship working faster, then the this is for for persians as well which is which is great you will notice guys how look at the village number already like Otto the great when you check capture it you will see how he's already a little bit ahead you see one village more now or, or half yeah. a villager at the end of the of the dark age right tristan it will be one village at least up for the persians so it's something to take in consideration and that's why you probably need to be more aggressive with japan yeah i agree yeah japanese i think man at arms could make a lot of sense so I do want to point out one thing that I saw from Vasco de Gama because Yadviga's opening was so similar to Vasco. Vasco de Gama went for the boar, right? Still went to Feudal Age and went into uh, galleys and archers. So it was galleys on the water and then archers. And not only that, man, the archers went immediately to where Otto the Great is now leaving to lumber camp right now if you look at that mini map they're moving on their way across there out of the great so i would say like 
if Yadviga does the same exact freaking thing, we have a lot more tells as to who these players could be. Because right now, I'm already in love with the fact that the boar was brought in. But we're seeing a barracks too, and we could see we could still see a combination of water and land. Yeah, but the good thing also that makes that we're probably going to fail with the guess, uh, Tristan, is that since these maps brought it later, we might miss, uh, miss a lot practicing from then, right? And maybe made many players as practice, what is the best way to, to, to have a good approach, right? So yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. there is more players that are going to do that, and probably it's not going to be the last one that we see the scout, and then we're going to go yeah. crazy because we're not going to yeah. know, okay, and now who is this, right? But well... Let's see. Um, Tristan, the militias are coming from the Japanese, and it's exactly what we probably expect from Japan, right? I agree. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to see. We got the barracks there. No militia actually coming from Otto, but we have the militia from Yadviga. Yadviga also scouted the fact that this is coming. And this is just now just two militia. It's not going to be men at arms. A nice little aggressive opening. Otto the Great has already prepped some walls. And as we speculate on who is who, we gotta kind of recenter our focus here and just remind people this map is brutal to play. And Otto the Great is, is laming. Otto the Great is stealing the cows here. Uh, sorry, sorry, I was not <laughs> muted. <so> you... <laughs> I mean, it's made me, it's made me information, you know. I think, I think, you know, the, 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 and maybe LA, like I like to say, you know, it's look at it's not that it's something that cannot do other players, but. He always pay attention to this, Tristan. Always. This is true. And it's he funny as Yadviga brought those in. It took a lot of time to get those. And now out of the great gets to steal them there. So nice find there. That's that's like 450 food right there. That out of the great could have lot. maybe get back to his base. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of food, you know. And if we check Mapu, can we check his TC, red TC? Look at the, the food he has now left there. It seems that he still have a lot, but but now. He, he yeah. lost many of them, and those he did are have going the extra for board, blue though. center. Yeah, yeah, but, but look, blue TC. Extra board. Yeah, but if we go to blue TC, you will see that he has nothing under the tone center. And if he bring it, did you see? And now he's bringing yeah. those three. So yeah, uh, it's not what you I steal. Will say, it's man, what you take for Don't yourself. get too excited though, because those those are slow cows. Like it's gonna take True. those cows some time. In imperial. <laughs> in imperial yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll be there in an hour. So. Oh man, okay, do, uh, having played this map, like those... adding the lumber camps, adding the extra lumber camps, it feels so needed in the moment, but it just really hurts you long-term, Mem. And it, it's I again, was to ask that. something to bring up, how awkward it is. Look at Otto the Great, Mem. Send the archers towards the new area of Yadviga's eco. I, I could be wrong, I just see blue movement. There's so many things happening. Yeah, look at those archers. They were looking to go for the evacuation area, but they've been found by Yadviga. Yeah. Surprisingly, yet 0-0 zero, zero KD. Like, they are trying still to get some kills. There's no kills yet. The scout is yeah. going to be probably now down. No, he's going to take now this, the archer. Not really. He's microing both really, really well right now. And now there is the first kill. One militia down. But here, Otto the Great is doing a good job. Not losing the scout. Losing the scout. I mean, it can be very annoying because then you can hit every single scam that your opponent is doing. So it's important to take this scout that early. It's weird to me that we haven't seen any fish from Otto. Like, he never even docked, which I, I think most players are always going to do here. It's so five fishing ships against zero, yeah. Is that an MBL thing, that? Let's think about that. I, well, I think it it's could a be an MBL thing. thing. Yeah. It's a weird thing, right? So I'm not telling that MBL is weird, but he do weird strategies sometimes, you know? So... It can be. Look at the mill. That mill is very smart also. And he has yeah. the boar, has a lot of resources there. So maybe you don't need it, but it's, it's kind of tricky because, uh, you know, Persian's dogs also work faster. You could do more galleys than your opponent, but maybe he's thinking, I cannot kill those tanky fishing ships. So yeah, let's focus on true. the land. And like, if you build the mill on the food, you're actually getting more food income right now than, than the fishing ships are bringing you because there's not that much fish. So I think Otto the Great has basically said, it's easier for me to focus on land and potentially he can even make more army here. And I mean, he's got sneak archers headed that way, man. He's going to have scouts at home. He seems very patient here. He's not worried about a couple skirms. I actually think this could be really good for Otto. And I think Yadviga will be very surprised by what's about to happen. 
Yeah, and just look at the population. It's absolutely insane. Like he doesn't have any fishing ship, and without fishing ship, he has just only two villages behind, and he has right now even more on foot. And these archers are going to do a massacre on the wood. That Lambert that you were mentioning, Tristan, is really bad because he's so exposed. You cannot defend that, and he's taking right now three villages. This is a disaster, Tristan. Yeah, and, and a really good job there from Otto the Great to find the moment. But now Otto the Great needs to defend properly in this position. So you send your army forward. Now you need some level of defense. This is along the lines of what you could expect on this map. For those that haven't seen a lot of it, get excited for messy, messy games. Because four, five, six villagers dying. Uh, every Feudal Age is kind of what I was expected once we loaded it into the tournament. Uh their villager gets saved, but the archers are still moving, and the archers are moving there, where we have villagers everywhere, but there's a tower, man. This is crazy. Yeah. Well, Mapu is the one who is getting crazy. Like, where is Mapu really uh, going? It's, it's, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there's army all over. This is crazy. This is really crazy. Uh, man, on, it, on occasion, your microphone is evacuating. So uh, I think I know you, and you're probably moving because you're excited. No, no, no. So just don't. It, no, no, no. Oh, you're I not. Okay. What's going on? I know. I know. I know. Okay, I know. I'm aware of that, and I and I know. We'll figure it out. But I don't know why it's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no worries. It was easy for me to make an evacuate joke, so I had to go for it. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, for some reason, it's true that the, the mic is going down sometimes, and I don't know why. It's all good. It's all good. No worries. So scouts and archers. Continuing to engage against Yadviga's main army on the evacuation island. There's there's villagers that are apparently wandering forward from Otto to build a tower, possibly, on Yadviga's mainland as those archers run away. I don't know. The tower foundation was maybe canceled, man. But a messy game here. Much messier than the, the game we saw in game number or series number one on this map to start off Hidden Cup. Okay, let's see what is going to happen now. I, don't know why, but the microphone I mean, resources down, right now for Yadviga are why. looking really good, Mem. It's all right, we'll roll with it. I'm not sure what's happening, but we'll roll with it. The Castle Age upgrade should be coming in for Yadviga. Yadviga, with some beautiful micro, finds the archer kills on every single unit there. But Otto the Great was looking here on the gold. And actually, gold could be a concern for Yadviga. That is the only area Yadviga can get gold is on the front here. And the messiness continues. Again, no fish here for Otto the Great. Maybe if Otto could find a few more villager kills here and get more farmy eco, the resources could be in for Castle Age. And Mem, I don't know if you're there at this point. Feel free to speak up at any point. If not, we'll keep rolling with it as we decide as we as we adapt to the situation. Archers finding kills here on the gold of Otto the Great. And that is two villagers down there. Could be more. But still no castle age for, for Yadwiga. What is happening? We've got full scouts from Yadwiga now. Who figures I can't go castle age because otherwise I'm going to die. This is crazy stuff. Look at the action. There's army everywhere right now. Five fishing ships behind this. Archers and skirms finding the pickoffs here. Villagers could easily go down here. This is going to be horrible for Yadviga. And it seems like Otto the Great is really comfortable. Spearman in there is getting some nice hits on the scouts. There are also some archers mixed in, but maybe not enough. And the additional scouts pay off. I mean, this is all before. We're going to have fire galleys added in from Otto the Great to try and kill those fishing ships. Both players have to manage their eco, both where they started, but also on the, the, the new land. And finally, now Yadviga clicks up. Has collected 400 more resources, but 400 is not that significant. The berries, the boar, the farms, Tristan. everything here from Otto will be good enough to take him towards Castle Age soon. And Memp, welcome back. Hopefully We've got some action. Good. Uh, yeah, yeah what I do everything's is good. The program, but, uh, for some reason, it's, uh, it's, it's having these issues this, uh, that the microphone is going down, up and down, and I don't know why. Never happened. Is, it, no worries. I, it's all good, dude. I'm a low elo legend. We adapt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so mm, going to Castellage and uh, Otto the Great is not even close to go, Tristan. So who has the advantage here? 
it feels like if Yadviga can hold this, that Yadviga is going to be okay. The concern here is Yadviga is currently taking gold on this area of the screen. So, you know, right before Castle Age, a couple of villagers could go down. And there's going to be one. There's, there's still more exposed. Like, you kind of need that gold area here if you're Yadviga. But, man, to, to answer the question, I think that Yadviga has the lead. Castle Age this fast, being able to make a couple knights can be devastating. Yeah. Yeah, let's see if he's going to be able to do it. It's true that he has a lot of army out to the great, but uh, I don't know. It's, uh, well, but out to the great is going to go up. Remember that persons also work faster, the TC. So it's kind of, well, if he keeps on the hill, you know, he has a lot of army as well. 25, 20, and nine villages more, Tristan. Nine villages yeah. more. That's crazy. Yeah, and your Persians do. Persians do advance a little bit faster than other civs. This is your best time to take a fight if you're Otto. Otto knows he's probably going to lose most of this tonight, so he's taking the engagement, and it's not the engagement he would have wanted. Ideally, he would have cleared this up and then maybe killed a few more Vils. But the Knights are out, and Yadviga has 90 seconds now in Castle Age to push this all back. Okay, let's see, because the Knights are there, and now he's going to be down. All the army, as you mentioned... He's doing an extra tone center. Well, but he will be in time to have army, but uh, Jadwiga is doing how many? Four knights already. Uh, how many stables? Blue will need probably double stable at least to, to counter now, because if not, mm -hmm. he's not going to match the numbers ever. And, and man, the most important thing you need in these moments is the ability to wall. And what do you wall towards? Wood lines. What is gone? Wood lines. Like, there's just going to be villagers exposed everywhere here. So you don't usually see tower defense against a night rush, but it kind of makes some level of sense here for Otto because it, it allows him to keep some villagers safe while he waits for either his own knights or maybe some camels soon. Oh my god! Not even double attacks! I just noticed now from Otto the Great. Not a single upgrade! I know Persons is good economy, but still, we are in minute 27, Tristan. And he's doing now. Yeah. Double attacks and horse collar. Yeah, pretty crazy stuff here. I mean... And, and no fishing ships, right? So it felt like to me, like, Otto really he didn't have a build which was that great economically. Now, I think his aggression was great. I think other aspects of his eco was fantastic here. But he's struggling now to, to deal with the amount of pressure from Yadviga. And behind this, Yadviga still has the fish. Yadviga's added the second TC on the mainland. And this is looking better and better for Yadviga. And, and better and better for us, man, as we hope this series ties up 1-1. Okay, let's see what is going to happen now because the economy, as you mentioned, stabilized. We have a lot of nice coming. I don't know. It's too many, Tristan. Uh, I, it's really, really yep. too many. Yep, agreed. I agree. It's just really, really difficult. The Knights can outnumber the Camels here. It feels like with Otto the Great not having a second TC, we could have some big problems for him soon just with pure villager count, even if he's not losing villagers. And nice shot from Yadviga to know I could force the issue right now. I'm, Yadviga sees all the idle villagers and knows, doesn't feel the need to pull away here and wants to just clear up every single camel if it's possible. It actually is close to possible as some of those units survive, man, but it, it it's tough for Otto right now. I'm not seeing a good way for Otto to bring this back. Well, but uh, if you take the population, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, I agree. It's close. It's, it's, it's one of those things, though. It's like, at this point, though, unfortunately for Otto, he doesn't have a lot of gold, and he can't make an army to counterattack. Whereas Yadviga can continue to make more armies while also expanding the economy. But it is crazy, and maybe this is why people think Persians are so strong, that Otto the Great has lost as much as he has. He hasn't lost fishing ships, and he's sitting at, you know, 53 eco against 58. Yeah, and the crazy thing, Tristan, is... Otto the Great is still on one tone center. It doesn't matter. He's very close with the economy thanks to the Persia bonus. He's only behind. Yep, I, I agree. Yep, yeah, I agree with you. Knights still attacking, going in for the monk there. I think at this point, you probably got to be a little bit more careful making uh, knights against the camels. Maybe we could see the pikeman switch here for Yadviga. But, man, we also have villagers pretty heavily on stone for Yadviga. Yadviga with 450 stone. The 450 stone could lead to a castle drop. And I just... Normally, we're looking for positives. Normally, we're looking for things to get excited about here. But Otto just... 
you know, kind of started the game and said, I need to win this fast. Hasn't won it fast. The lack of fish, the lack of eco is really starting to catch up with him right now. And there goes Camel chasing the knight. That's going to be lead to a knight dying on that side. So that's nice. Also, like the light cav upgrade here from Otto. There are some monks out there. The light cav can be useful. Also, a few random raids could be useful. But here, the light cav are needed. Because advancing forward with some monks is Yadviga. And Yadviga right there on the gold again. And so you have two tiles of gold near the player base, guys, to work with. The rest of the gold is on the outside. And you're looking at one of the tiles, and the other gold was to the right of the TC from Otto. So Otto actually has no gold income available on the starting land now. And that monastery will likely go down. A tower is being dropped here from Otto. That's tower number two. And Mem, to your point earlier, I definitely am getting some MBL vibes here from Otto the Great. I'm not sure if you still agree. I could tell by Mem's silence that he definitely agrees with me on that statement. It's good to bring in casters who agree with me. It makes me feel good about myself. And the the knights and the monks just going to have to back away now for Yadviga towards the monastery. Apologies, folks, for the uh, technical difficulties, but we're making the most of it. And I, I am still continually surprised by Otto's, Otto the Great's ability to survive. So while I have a moment to continue to think about if this could be someone like MBL, I once so kindly coined the term the cockroach of AoE when talking about MBL. And I, it's not the nicest nickname for someone to receive, but is meant as a compliment because he could never be killed, it feels like. He was on the winning side in game number one here, Otto. We'll see what Otto does and if Otto could stay alive. If Otto can recover from this, it would be phenomenal. We do have the second TC going up on the mainlands now. So that's nice for Otto. Second town center is being built. And there we've got three TCs. Well, two in total for Yadviga. And three in total uh, if you count the mainlands. Hello, Memp. Tristan. If he recover, it's like if I can fix my microphone. Almost the same. You know? <laughs> Pretty insane, you know? Honestly, Memp, I just don't want you to feel bad because at this point it's really funny. All right? <laughs> but I, feel, I feel terrible, you know? But... But, but I know. what's happened, man? What, what, what's happened? The microphone is going down, man, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't I mean, know. I don't, I don't know. know what it is, but it's funny. It's funny. I can't get mad. It's okay. It's, it's crazy. Okay. Okay, well, here we go. Yadviga is hoping to drop a castle here on the front. Now, that is a long distance to walk, but I think Yadviga... Maybe a little bit frustrated with how game number one went and said, I'm looking to send a message here. And as the villagers are getting slaughtered here by the knights, this is an open invitation for Yadiga to drop that forward castle. And if this castle goes up, man, it'll deny the gold. It'll shoot down this TC. And it might mean we have our 1-1 one -one situation. There is no way that this castle could lead to anything good for Otto the Great. Yeah, man. 30 billion is different. Like, 30 villages different is it's huge. It's insane, yeah. actually. How you come back from that, it's... I don't know. That castle I mean, could have actually been more forward. Like, the, the potential was there for that castle to be between the TCs. I don't think Yadviga wanted to take any massive risks, though. This is a big moment. And I'm sure the nerves are were really going crazy for these guys. Because, again, they don't know who they're up against. This is a big tournament. The knights kind of dive through, see some camels again. No to back away. We might see some samurais appear soon to deal with those camels. It should be pretty solid. But, man, the economy for Yadviga. I mean, Yadviga's just done such a good job using a brand new map. And Otto the Great could on honestly looks like they didn't practice near as much here uh, with the lack of the dock and the overall approach. Okay, man, as you can see, well... Uh, the game can uh, stabilize, but uh, stabilize is bad for Otto the Great because he needs to do some damage and he can't do anything actually. What he yeah. can do? Like, it's too yeah, big, I map, think... so nothing he can do. I, yeah, I think what he's going to try here is he's going to try a castle next to the opponent's castle and hope to go in. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, this is nice. Finding some raids like this is really nice. Uh, what we know, though, is that Yadviga's already on the way to Imp. 
So uh, a castle and then imp for trebuchets is not going to be all that good for out of the great because the opponent's already kind of won that race. Well, uh, the, the only thing is that if you reach up, if you go up to Imperial and he's going now, he has Bombard Cannons. Chemistry, you can go up quite quick, you still have the resources, but it's still, it's still 30 villages difference. And two castles mm -hmm. now in front, and he can make Cataparuto, remember, those traps are going to be as fast as the Bombard Cannons. It's yep. kind of tricky. It's very difficult. Yeah, I agree. It is one of the rare instances where we as a caster can't be that creative uh, and we kind of know, well, this one is, is over, but the player doesn't, right? I think the score maybe, man, there's only a 300 or 400 score difference. So I don't think Otto's going to expect his opponents on the way to him. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. You sometimes don't understand how the score can be that close. Well, because at the end, look at the Echo KD and, and the KD is so equal. Yeah, so it was really, it, like, it this game was really close. Yeah, it really just came down to... The fact that Yadviga was able to drop town centers and get more villagers flowing. And it was the early Castle Age moment for Yadviga. Clearing up so many villagers and raiding with the knights while also expanding to that second town center is really what brought Yadviga to this position. And this is kind of what you expect from the best players. That they're going to be able to hit you where it hurts with the military and then also have really strong economy behind it. Okay, look at those cab arches trying to raid and kill even more, but you'd really don't need to kill anything anything else now. Look at the village different. And we do two yeah. trebuchets in front. He's doing four trebuchets right away. You know, four traps. You know, you know what happened now, Tristan? I'm scared to talk because I'm looking at the mixer all the time. <laughs> if it's gonna go down all the time again, you know. Dude, so, man, just act like seem... just act like yeah. Act like we're like we're like like brothers growing up and our parents told us to go to bed. But we're still yeah. playing video games, okay? Yeah. It's okay. okay, it, okay it's okay, it's okay. good now. Okay, okay, it's okay, good okay. now. I, honestly, I think what it I mean, was is yeah, it was maybe you over. getting too excited, which for you is like that's no, no. difficult because but, but, you're excited all but, the time. But, 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 exactly. I mean, that cannot be the issue. I'm excited all the time. <laughs> it's not a problem, you know. Like what the hell? And we have the same microphone actually. We have exactly the same microphone as well. <laughs> we uh, do, and there we I go. Say, it, 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 it's a guy going down. Well, what the hell? I hate myself. It's yeah. okay. It's all right. If we have to have the chill version of Memb, we'll deal with it. Technology sucks, but what a game. What a freaking series we have here. It is all tied up between Otto the Great and Yadviga, and a beautiful job from Yadviga to understand this map. We had the boar being brought in with the scout at the start. We had the additional fishing ships, and these are the things. Like I, I saw a very clear difference between how the two people played that one. So... I love it. Uh, folks, we are going to have Memb right back with us. Salutes in chat, please, for him. I I've been on the other side of it where technology is not cooperating. We tested. like This isn't like we haven't tested things before. We've tested, and technology said, uh, actually, uh, no, we are uh, going to make your life difficult today. So please, salutes and support. He's just going to restart his PC. Hopefully things come back. And uh, again, scores 1-1 one, one here. I do want to take this time maybe to speak to you all who've shown up and have been watching. Uh, just go over a couple things as reminders here. Um, so first off, half of all donations do go through to the prize pool. We've had quite a few come in. Thank you, everybody who's donated. Uh, we've already brought in near $1,000 with the prize pool. It's amazing. Thank you. Um, the Oh, I'm on cam now. Nice. Um, the overall support though, with the subs has been unbelievable. So much has gone into this so much. You guys are going to see, uh, throughout each day beyond the games and, and leading up towards the finals. So, um, seeing my emotes in chat, uh, seeing more sub badges is, is really motivating. So to everyone who's, who's, um, contributed in what way they can, thank you. Uh, once again, reminder, everyone should know this on Twitch. I don't have viewers like this, this frequently. You can always subscribe for free for with Twitch prime. It's an easy click or two away, and you get the emotes and whatnot. Um, we also have emotes for every single hero. So um, I don't know if you guys are rooting for heroes or really how you're treating this. I'm all in on Salim the Grim. No, it's not because of the mustache. The mustache is just a benefit of the god that is Salim. So if you'd like to root for uh, you know, a, a particular hero, you have that. We also have the Who emotes which is if you're a little bit confused, we have the confirmed emote. We have the plus 7K emote in the event and make a good joke. And honestly, you have to look. There's a lot more uh, that we're just going to add. The goal is like to mix in new emotes all the time. Um, 
And um, also, we added one that people didn't see yet. I don't know if maybe we could get this somehow up on screen at some point. So basically, we, we added a doubt hero emote. And the doubt hero emote, basically what we did was we found a photo of doubt and we tried to make it look like he was one of these heroes here. And I think it is the funniest emote I've maybe ever seen. It's not the normal doubt emote. We just went with doubt hero and <laughs> it just it just looks fantastic. So uh, we do have that uh, in the event that we end up getting there. So uh, anyways, I did want to, Go over, maybe we can look at the price pool splits. What are these players fighting for? What are they, uh, what are the payouts going to be? Now, this will update as donations fly in, but that is what the players are fighting for. At the moment, first place has just crossed over $10,000 thanks to the support. And obviously, we have second, third, fourth, and then, of course, fifth through eighth and ninth through 16th. I'd also like to show what the, who the viewers thought we saw so far. Because after every series, we have a poll. I'd like to show what viewers thought we had after day one. Now, I think some people may disagree with this. They may take the, no, the wider community is wrong card. But according to the community, it was uh, Hera who beat Ganji 4-1 yesterday. And it was Jordan who beat Mihai 4-1 as well. Now, of course, right now, we don't know what's happening uh, we don't know what people think about this particular series. I could definitely see votes going a lot of different directions. And that leads us right back to our draft, where we can speculate a little bit on civilizations and whatnot. Of course, game one was Hidden Fort's brand new Hidden Cup map. Game two was Evacuation. And game two, brand new Hidden Cup map. Now at this point, Yadviga and Out of the Great are going to be playing maps that are a little bit more known. We'll see how that plays out. Now, I think Auto the Great right now, looks like Mem's going to be joining us and we'll see if he agrees. You know, you think of game one, the farms, the monks, the pike push. Then you have game two, a player who didn't prepare on a new map. I hate to say it if it's not him. He might hate me if I say it, Mem. But Auto the Great's giving me some strong MBL vibes right now. Would you agree? Because you think that he didn't prepare well for the second because he kind of lost Mm, easily and doing this kind of a strategy that we, you don't expect, right? Like not going for the dog with person, even, even if you are against Japanese, doesn't make sense. And that is very typical for MBL. That's my thinking. My thinking is MBL might really? say, there's enough maps here where I can win a series. I'm not going to prepare for all like 13 of them. And, uh, you know, evacuation was maybe one of the ones that he thought I'm going to lose on, so he didn't put time into practicing. That that would be the classic MBL. So that's but why it's his second that. pick. Persians, you know, like you don't want to waste your second pick civilization, right? It's true. It's kind of tricky. You, I mean, because if you are using your last, your seven pick, but then he won with the seven Teutons. So yeah, I guess if you it's... if you win with your seventh pick, you feel better about losing with your second pick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Well, but the thing is also, Tristan, uh, you have here, uh, you know, three maps that he filled to, to, to win, Arabia Slopes and Mood Flow. So he might be thinking, I won the first one. I don't mind if I lose one of my maps that is, is not my home map, right? Agreed. Agreed. I think that's the logic. And it, winning that first one was a really good thing for Out of the Great, because now you, you just need four wins. And you've got three maps upcoming here that could potentially be very good for you. So we'll hop into game number three. Uh, I'm going to assume it's going to be Arabia, but it could be Slopes or Mudflow. They're all very similar. And this will be between Auto the Great and Yadviga. Once again, people, thanks for being here. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the interest. And this is something, this is a series I cannot look away from. And I cannot believe that Auto the Great, after losing that game, decided actually... I'm going to go for my opponent's home map. We see Cup here and Auto the Great in the blue going forward early with the scout. Are we going to see a lame attempt? Is this MBL confirmed? Well, right, going right away, mm, probably right. Yeah, seems like it, man. I have, I have vivid yeah. memories of MBL in the past because this is fixed positions going forward to try and lame. Now, we moved the boars onto the back. 
because players like MBL basically forced us to. But right at the start, Auto the Great goes forward to lame. I'm getting very strong Master Boar Lamer vibes right now. Okay. Let's see if he's going to... Well, it's, it's not going to lame anything. But it's very tricky to send this, right? Uh, and and yeah. then it, he didn't pick... After the loss, he didn't pick his whole map. It's, it's crazy. That is crazy to me. But, it, you know, this does reinforce in my mind that maybe Otto the Great is a player who played in Hidden Cups in the past, right? So there's five players in this Hidden Cup who've never played before. So they never really would have had a lot of experience on Cup. I know that, you know, saying it eliminates five players doesn't do too much. But if I had to guess, I would say that 11... This is one of 11 players <laughs> who played in Hidden Cups before if they were happy to go for Cup here game three. Okay. Well, let's see. I think it's, it's very difficult to make a, a, a correct guess as we as we can see. Then with the civilizations, Spanish here, it's also a civilization that we don't see so often. And it's still Agreed. a guy just to go for NBL. NBL is one of those players that make, you know, special things and can be another one well saracens um, here another one that Go would on. come to mind for me for picking spanish here man would be someone like yo someone like yo really likes his castle drops we saw a player uh in sebastian and the qualifiers pick pick spanish and go conquistadors but it is def this is not a map that i've normally thought unique units are strong on uh, this is normally a map where you see the players play with the water so We'll see, but I, I do want to explain kind of how this map works for anyone who's new or anyone who needs a reminder. The basic explanation is the water on this map can also be covered by land units. And then if you were to dock one side of the water, you cannot cross over to the other. So there's a lot of scouting that's needed and a lot of decision making that's needed because uh, controlling the water... The smaller area of water controls the water that's directly beneath you or between you and your opponent. Whereas the other area, it's not between you and your opponent, but obviously it's more important long term with more fish and then also more gold. Yeah, also these this map with the as well, since you are very close to the to the mangrove area, basically all your resources are kind of uh, safe, right? Because you have all the time at the back. So it's a map that it's more or less easy to 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 wall to defend. So it's very important that you get the the mangrove area with the goal also in the middle, and that's why probably the water is here so important because how do you make damage on the land? It's difficult. It's very difficult, and I think maybe the thinking from the player who's picked Spanish here, Otto the Great, maybe he thinks if it's difficult to find damage on land. And now I have extra sheep. I can just wall up. And maybe Conquistadors is actually a possibility here. So I, I don't mind the Spanish pick. I also think Spanish cannon galleons or navy could be really strong in Imperial Age. And man, like, it feels like every time we see two really good players play this map, it's almost always going to the Imperial Age, right? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be surprising, you know? It wouldn't be surprising. I like it. Interesting okay. that we don't have a Let's dock see. from Yadviga now. No docks whatsoever. No fishing ships that might still come. Otto the Great did actually dock. And Yadviga is, is looking for that, but did not see it because of where the dock was placed. I like the decision making fast there. Ca fast we castle. See right yeah, fast. now. And it, it's Go. fast castle from Yadviga. Good fast call, castle. man. Yeah. Yeah. He's fast castle right away. And with the Saracens, market 75 wood, super cheap. You, you're going to go fast castle. And if you need resources, you can buy it easily, you know? Mm -hmm. So fast castle. Usually when there's no dog, you, we see barrack and militias. If you don't see that, it's because it, the fast castle has to be. What else now? Look at the village number already. It's fast castle yeah. right away from, from red. It's, it's definitely fast castle. But fast castle into what? What do you make? It, would monks be an option? We did have a player in one of the show matches for Hidden Cup who obviously isn't in the main event. Uh, they did go for lots of monks on this map right through the middle. Is that a possibility? I don't know. I mean, it's very hard to guess, but, well, it could be. Well, he's doing the loom now. He's definitely going to be Fast Castle. And, uh, but Fast Castle... Yeah, well, let's see what you mentioned. Like, 
Yeah. My my He's prediction, my guess here yeah. is that we will see uh, Fast Castle, double monastery monks, yeah. and that this is going to get really, really crazy because monk rushes, when you're a close distance, could be insanely strong. And I don't know, maybe it's new meta. Like in the past, uh, a couple of years ago, no one was going for crazy monks here. But I, I don't know. Could be wrong. Now that I see the barracks, I'm thinking that maybe we who, won't see as many barracks, monks. Okay. <laughs> well, no, no, no. But but, but barrack makes sense because if, if their opponent feel it, like maybe can go stable as well. I don't know. But barrack and juice monastery also with, with the spears is a great combination because you avoid the, mm -hmm. the, the counter that is the scouts. So barrack, I mean, going, let's say, only monks, it would be very tricky. You need something else, you know? And the barrack I makes think sense at the moment, here. I think at the moment, Otto is a little confused. He's like, where is this dock at? Because remember, in the previous game, we thought that both players should dock as well. Otto, who understands this map, looking around now, looking for docks, didn't see a single one. Has added two spears, has two scouts, and is hoping to do some damage here. But definitely will know. Because the feudal age time is so late here from Yadviga... It should be obvious to Otto the Great that his opponent is going for Fast Castle. Wow. He's doing the stable, he's doing the, the, the market. He can buy the resources easily. And, well, uh, all good. And uh, he's walking back at, the, uh, at home. Well, I want to apologize. I didn't say anything. I want to apologize, but we cannot uh, control these kind of things with the microphone. It seems that he's fixed it. I'm not going to say it mm -hmm. a lot of times because you know what happens when you say that something is fixed, it, right, Tristan? That then it's, Don't it's going, it. Don't he's going it. back to the, yep. you know? So not going to tell anymore. I apologize because also Tristan know and you know me that uh, I'm uh, obsessed with the taking of this too. So when these kind of things happen, it really put me down. But we were going to recover all the energy for keep going even more when we see that the player is going to be in 15 minutes in castle age. but louis reading the game he knows that he's going to be in castle age and he's doing a tower on the goal it's a really interesting tower isn't it because again members we think about players who do this some players they're hesitant to go forward like this but Otto the great is not hesitant at all Otto the great doesn't care and he is now taking the saracen player off that goal so that's really smart when you know the saracen player is going to rely on it to build that tower but there is another gold for yadviga in the back that yadviga is able to go to so all is not yeah. lost the gold is still there and it's available yeah i was going to ask a mapu mapu can you put fog of war from blue to see if blue can see the goal at the back use the fog of war from blue player he doesn't he doesn't he mm -hmm. doesn't know he has no clue about that so even if he's doing the tower now he might be thinking tristan okay he's doing the tower here he want to avoid that and coming forward but he still doesn't know if his opponent has another at the back so yeah you yeah. see he has only one farmer jadwiga but he's gonna be in castles in a moment how do you stop now that even with the walls he's doing at home being in castle is that early a blue is still need a lot of time to this go is, up to castle this is mbl this is this is mbl i there's no way this is an mbl blue, right? the great is either mbl yeah. yes yes out of the great is either mbl or he is accm or something but we have more spearmen. We got we we got like happy to build another tower. This to me feels like MBL confirmed. Um, <laughs> but just because of how comfortable he is to have walked forward here, man. But to answer your question, I think that the problem here for Jadviga, even though Jadviga got gold again, it's actually the food. Like you're actually using that gold to buy food right now. So it's going to be tough to really make a lot. And with no fishing ships. I'm just not so sure this faster castle age does too much right now. Yeah, I'm wondering what is going to be the following. Like he's balancing the economy. He bought it to stone. He's doing TCs. He's going to go for it with the echo. I mean, just okay. think that it can be three, four minutes at least in castle age faster than his opponent. I mean, Otto the Great is not even going. So if he's going some, some boom, and maybe now Siege Workshop after the second TC. He's, he's fine, and he's going to have a, a really big economy lead. And he's taking out the fees with the camels. Those camels, yep. we forgot to mention, 20 HP extra, they are tanky. They're very tanky, so they are fine. Okay, let's see if Otto the Great gets housed at 50 pop and pulls a villager off of, like, a wood line or something to build the houses. Let's see. Population's climbing, 48 out of 50. Eight spearmen here, walling in the tower. Let's see. Is it MBL confirmed moment? He does have an issue. He produces a lot. He forgets to make houses. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Now, he might build the house with the forward villager. 
Um, he actually lost units here, folks, so he's not housed yet. But he's still, he's making more spearmen. This is 100% MBL. This is definitely MBL. He's making oh, he's demos out of both millions. sides right now. Millions of them. Okay. That he has a double barrack even. <laughs> Maybe. He has a double hey, okay, barrack. Got a house. We check. Actually, not confirmed. Not confirmed. Not confirmed. The house is up. Oh, man. I mean, it's well, pretty actually, wild. He's making demos and spears. And Yadviga, the longer that Otto stays in Feudal Age, the more that I like the position for Yadviga. Like, these spearmen have not done much. We'll see if the demos do something, though, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There we go. There's your bottom boom, yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, but this but this is the problem. Look how tanky they are. Probably they will lose all them without the, the extra HP. Now extra you go HP. home. He has a monastery. He, he can go home, monastery, and then the monk is gonna heal all the all the camels. He's still fine. He's still really fine yeah. with 38 abilities, 42 for Otto the Great. Okay, but look at the resources. Otto the Great is gonna go up to Castledge when I'm gonna be 2K no. in this game. Maybe never. Yeah, no, yeah, like okay. Mem, Mem sure? like, the resources are horrible <laughs> right now for Otto the Great. That's the problem. Yeah. He had the resources to go castle, and he made tons of spearmen, and he's also making quite a few demos right now. Like, this is going to be a 30-minute castle age at this rate for Otto the Great if he can't somehow get the food to click up here. Okay. Uh, I was I was scared because I said about 2K, and you said right away, no. I was like, oh, man, don't tell me my face. I think we'll never be 2K. I mean, what the hell are you talking, man? <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. He has the stone. Otto the Great. He's going to sell all the resources. So he's going to go up to, to castle it eventually. Uh, but this, this is starting to look really MBL, as you mentioned. Look at that economy, you know, with millions of stone. Yeah. But where's the market? He, he's going to... Look how so, random no. this is, dude. This is MBL is the way to describe MBL to people is he's just so random and it, it it creates chaos, right? So it has been and it works. in some ways. Yes, it works, but it, it's you very know? tough to work when players recognize, oh, I should just chill here and oh my god. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Geez. I mean I, we need to think if there is a possibility that there is someone else that could do these things but i don't see it and right now he's doing another tower he's on the way to castleage and the following is gonna be a castle forward but jadwiga is reading this really well i believe and he's mining a stone he's doing another tower here and probably he will do a castle faster than Otto the great or at least at the same time and mamalus versus mm -hmm. kongs i don't think the mamalus are going to be very afraid against the against the kongs I mean, it might be a rare instance where Mamelukes actually become very strong. We got camels moving out, and there's demos exactly. everywhere. We got to be real careful right now if you're at Vigo. Towers. Oh my God. towers on the water, and also demos, and also spearmen. This could all be upgraded in Castle Age. So we'll see. There go the camels. Now, previously, the camels didn't die to the hits. And then the weak ones would just be healed up. There are the spears, but Yadviga always paying attention, man. Never diving in too deep, never making any mistakes. Very yeah. strong play. Yeah, Yadviga, exactly. I mean, except the, the last demo that you see there now. Look at the KD. Otto the Great with millions of demos has killed four units in the whole game. I look at now the castle here. I'm not sure. Well, the castle is going to take down three towers, record the main goal. Also the stone, uh you know. And, uh, I don't know. I think this is a perfect castle. Because if you wait at all, this that castle is just going to be a blue one, right? So you have to be as patient as possible. You have to, or, or sorry, you have to be as aggressive as possible. You have to accept that the weak villagers need to be pulled back. And that castle will clear up the three towers. It'll reclaim the gold. And as Otto makes it to the castle age at 25 minutes, Otto now is going to have to plan for something else. And that something else is a town center in the corner of the map, Mem. Oh, man, we've got a demo here. We've got a demo. The demo yeah. kills three uh -oh. monks. Some big hits there on the monks. The monks go down. The ships could be upgraded. Out of the great is making it difficult for Yadviga to know where the pressure is going to come from and what it will be. And... Mem, I think I think you're good. I think you're good. I think you're a little worried. We it should be fine. Give it a test. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we're good. We're good. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here all the time. Perfect. I'm just checking that that TC in the corner is better than probably what people think because um, when red is gonna explore there, <laughs> probably That's never. True. You know, <laughs> probably true. never. Red Bull. So that, yeah. that, I mean, who will make a TC there? Just look. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, uh. no, nobody will, will explore there, you know? Since they have the camels. But now the problem is, is the village different? It's just too big. Like, you can make a castle now for oh, He has oh, a castle. Look oh, at the oh my god. Sorry, man. They're so close. Nice micro. Don't kill anything. Now, Viga, uh, this point, Yadwiga knows this guy's gonna be crazy, so I just have to avoid the water for a second and just chill. Just just boom up three TCs, add villagers, and take it easy. Now we've now got a two villager castle mem being built near the gold. What in the world? Yeah, but 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 and also house the 75 demos, pop. The, yeah. And this is castle is demos, they're still not killing anything. Two villages doing the castle there. Too far with the economy now here. Just look. Ooh, three demos. Okay, that was a good one. Look at the look at the highlights. Good point. Uh, on point. Okay. MBL also does go for a lot of early hand card. I, I actually I look back at old hidden cups and I say, shut up, dude. Stop making guesses. So I'm gonna try and settle down with my guesses here. But I I've made it clear that this this out of the great player is unique. And you know, man, I don't know how what to suggest to people who are playing against a player this chaotic, but oftentimes it's just stick to the basics of getting a good economy and playing safe. And so far, Yadviga has done a great job as a 20 villager lead here and has survived. So as we continue on, uh, castle now for Yadviga, that's castle number two near the shoreline. And this is going to be... I mean, at this point, Yadviga can take all the gold and all the stone around that main eco. It's actually kind of awkward to see the main gold. That's funny. Otto the Great has quite a bit of farming eco there. I think matchup-wise, Spanish and Saracens are pretty close. But I'm just not seeing any offensive like tools from Otto the Great to really be able to break Yadviga at the moment. I say Camels that I agree, monk, but you didn't listen. Engaging. You know, Tristan. For some oh, reason, okay, okay. I answered to you. I, I I answered to your question, but for some reason, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't listen. I love this. My goodness. Since <laughs> I don't ignore you. You know, Tristan. Don't worry. You it's know? all good. It's all good. <laughs> but you are. But you are really polite. You know, you are really polite because you you keep going. Okay, maybe he's ignoring me. No, I don't. You know, <laughs> I don't ignore you. You know, it's okay. He's ignoring me. You know, but no, I don't. But um, Jadwiga, it's. On the way to Imperial Age already. And he has nine volumes more. Onto the Great, it's not even close to go. So now what? Mm -hmm. Now what you can do? Well, it's going to be the same situation, a very similar situation to what we had before. So in Feudal Age, Otto the Great was late to castle and he just made a whole lot more army to try and hold the map and buy time. Now, Otto the Great's going to do something similar. So we'll see a couple extra monks, couple extra spears, conks, demos maybe. And this is just a crazy boom for Otto. So Otto is is hoping to be able to just hold right now. And the way that you could somehow hold is if your eco is expanded into six different directions, which he's kind of doing, and if you have high power units. So I, I just, I think like conversions are going to be needed. Some big demo hits that actually kill camels are going to be needed here. And then if he does that, I mean, he's on the way to Imp as well. He's Spanish. He could maybe make Cannon Galleons. I think you'd actually have a realistic shot. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. And in later game, what do you prefer here? Saracens or Spanish in a map like this? Hmm. I mean, I think I would go for... I think I would go for Spanish. Um, that is if it, the situation was even. And I mean, it is getting really close. Resources collected is actually higher for Otto. Otto's got a relic collected already. Is making some monks. Like, the, the corner TC is going to be a distraction if nothing else. This is a really good game here. It's incredibly close. Yeah. And, and Tristan, we cannot underestimate Spanish monks. You know? 
the Spanish boats with Inquisition and everything, you know, and they have, as you mentioned, those crazy cannon boats, the bomber cannons, they have hazards, even bomber towers. Well, if Blue is going to bomber towers, then we know. By the way, he explored the corner. Yeah, he finally sees so, it. The outpost yeah. helps him see it. I, you know, it, it's one of those things, man. It's like, do you castle drop that? What do you do? <laughs> I, yeah. I think you just have to ignore it. But then again, you don't want a player well, like Otto the Great to be able to use that position to to disrupt you. Man, these camels are, are crazy. The camels are dealing with that. The camels has only bloodlines now. Now he's doing the husbandry. This is this is pretty wild how much they have been holding the whole game. But then what I don't understand, how he's even able to auto the grade with all this mess catch up or really the builder's number and he's on the way to imperial he's gonna have all the upgrades he has the goal and even if it was looking that we has been controlling the, the whole game i feel that blue is ahead now i it like maybe yeah position. like i do not know i do not know i cannot explain how auto the great is not dead now if this is mbl we will see. We got Inquisition coming in for the monks. MBL loves to go for supremacy and fight with villagers. So that's something to think about. Supremacy is something very few players utilize, um, at least offensively, in Age of Empires 2. But the castle starting to be trebbed down. I think the navy is going to be insane for Yadviga. Yadviga building that up from those docks. And this map, Mem, is all about that gold in the middle area right now. And Otto the Great does not want to Ooh. give it up. Okay, let's see how important the galleys are going to be. The, the one who is coming with the monks is now red. A lot of camels here. He has to be careful. He's going to take down those to see how many people is there. He, not, he needs to run away. And he's doing supremacy, which is very NBL smart confirm. here. Because, NBL confirmed. Uh, well, that's another thing, you know? Well, uh, come on, Tristan. Everyone do supremacy with the Spanish, right? <laughs> but <laughs> but only NBL pick Spanish. So, yeah, it's still, yeah, right? right? But the castle is going to be down now with the 3 threat, which is okay. And uh, what is the following here? Because it seems that Otto the Great is only going for the for Supremacy the monk right now. Supremacy bills are going for the trap, oh, man. man. Supremacy bills are going for the trap. Oh my God! Did he did he get supremacy? Did it complete? I think he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying he to has. attack. Oh, the villagers fight what? back. Well, well, wait. He he lost the castle. I believe. I think it got. So I maybe think he lost the castle researching it. He lost yeah. the castle Can you researching click one it. Only? Have oh no! He doesn't have. <laughs> Yeah, man, because I can oh, tell man. you that the Spanish bullets are stronger than that. You know what I mean, right? Okay, so yeah. let's see. But he's still controlling that one. Well, for those people that don't know, I'm a Spanish, guys. And I'm going to tell you one secret. I don't know who did this game. We are not this strong. And we are not working faster. But let's move on to another topic, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you anyway. not build faster. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't, we don't build faster. Use the opposite, you know? Anyway, let's keep going now. And now you know why I'm recovering the happiness? Tristan, I find out the problem, so the microphone is not going to fail anymore. Fishing ships, oh. conquistadors, monks. Yeah, it was in the program, man. In the remix, okay. there was an auto right. gain activated. It was auto gain activated on my end. Man. So that's why it was going wild. And I didn't know because I don't use this program ever, you know. But it's fixed. It's all good. So man. I'm very happy. I mean, all we good. finally got it sorted. Oof. We got it sorted. This game has been insane. We've been through a lot, people. Can we can we acknowledge that we <laughs> and these players have been through a lot and heavy demos are hiding in the darkness. Yet yet Vika does not know about this yet. So if those trebs go to treb anything down, demos are going to swoop in and possibly kill everything. This is going to be the biggest explosion of Hidden Cup 5 so far and, and oh, maybe need... the best series, man. This is just craziness. Yeah. Tristan, we need then Fog of War from Red. Fog of War from Red, really, on the on the water side, because here, yeah, yeah, yeah he need, we need to know nice, what he sees. Be down, but we need the Fog of War here, and he gonna see. But he see the heavy demo now. He has a lot he of sees monks. Them now. Look at the army numbers. Wow, did he made a guy in supremacy? I don't think he did it again because maybe he thinks that he researched it. And actually, we forgot that this beautiful capture is version Tristan got the upper is there, and he's not researched. Yeah. You have Inquisition, Mem. but not that one. Yep. We've Go got on. monks that are about to convert ships. We will have heavy demos Ooh. from both players. We have fires. We have camels. We have greatness here in Hidden Cup 5. And I'm just waiting for it all to unleash. This is going to be crazy. And, and it seems like Otto's the one that wants to start the fight. 
Oh my god, we're even gonna have Spanish cannon galleons here, man. But why, why you keep calling him Otto? Uh, who? Who? Otto it's the Great? man. <laughs> it's NBA, man. Go get NBA, man. I didn't know. Stop, <laughs> I stop didn't calling know him Otto, that. man. It is, yeah, man. I mean, stop calling him Otto. Anyway, look at those. He's coming a lot, a lot. He's going to convert. What is going to do Otto the Great, Tristan? He's going to be able to hold this push or not? Let's go. I mean, it's really difficult to continue to get conversions with these monks, but he is getting conversions on the ships, and the fires have the galleons pinned back, and there's cannon galleons behind this as well from the Spanish. The population for Otto is climbing. He has the relics control, he has the gold control, and somehow the player, who is like 10 minutes behind a castle age, is holding the middle right now, man. This is insane. Yeah, I, I think the score is still ahead for Jadwiwa, but it's not. It's not. Blue, in my opinion, has now all the timing, all the momentum, and here with these units. And the most important, he has the map control. For how long he's going to have red gold? Yeah. If he's still in this position, like Blue, Tristan doesn't even need to attack anymore. Just hold the area. Yeah, well, the, the tricky thing will be if the Saracen Galleon number is gets much higher, it will destroy everything. Saracen Galleons are insanely strong. Now, Otto the Great, who we may think is going to be MBL, is now going to do something that is incredibly smart with the Spanish and incredibly typical for that player MBL. He's researching Bombard oh, Tower towers. to hold this bombard position. Towers. If he can get Bombard Towers up, he can maybe hold. But, man, I'm not finished with Yadviga. I think Yadviga's sick. Galleons are paying off. The, the monk count is extremely low for Otto. Otto only has 21 on food. This is problematic for Otto the Great right now. And who is red then? Is this Atato versus MBL? Is that I, possible? I, do, I got, I'm thinking big names. Yeah, I think Yadviga's played really well. Game number one, still kind of tricky for me to pick up on it. But yeah, if we think this is MBL losing to somebody, who do you think that would be? Uh, I can't wait for the community to be able Good to vote point. on this after the series, but Good of course point. it's a best yeah. of seven, man. But we'll yeah, see yeah. how it goes. Right now, fast fire ships and monks, the only army for out of the great, and there's just so many galleons. I don't know if galleons yeah, can man. be stopped right now. I mean, this is only game number three, and I don't know, but I think we have like over two hours broadcast. This is gonna be you want the seven games, and this series looks like one that can be can be definitely there. I see that happening. Anyway, we were thinking that Otto the Great was going to have this area, he has bombard towers now, but Jadwiga, as you mentioned, he has absolutely mm -hmm. everything, and he's doing the upgrade that he's gonna give what? The siege also the powerful? Uh, oh, and Hazards are uh, coming there's a new the, mem mem I, when you signed the contract to cast with me, you agreed not to make me look bad if I didn't know a new unique tech. Uh, it's a it's a new unique tech that does something for the Saracens that I forget. They changed it recently. <laughs> can you can you please, Mapu? Now that nobody listen, can you click there? No, the other, the other. Be, be Maristan. I mean, by Maristan. Explain to the, the men. Please that that explain to the people. Please explain to the people what that tech does. Let me open the gate. I think it's a monk tech. I'm pretty sure it does something to the monks. <laughs> Let me open the gate, man. The, the, the gate, no, the game. <laughs> I, I, I don't honestly, know, man. I, have, I, I think it, disaster, people are man. saying it, if we can trust, if we can trust our viewers, which come to us for wisdom, I think it it might have something to do with the healing here. So Yadviga yeah. continues to push forward with the galleons and the monks, oh my God. but. I mean, we've got so much happening, man. This is insanity yeah. right now. And you know about the topic we were mentioning now? I'm back into the battle soon. The viewers can be happy. We don't fool them. If we don't know, we don't know. Hey, Tristan? Yes, we don't lie to anyone. We're here. always honest. We don't know, we don't know, you know? Look at now. Hazards. Galleons. Played by the number. And as you mentioned, I want to point out this again because the whole thing of this tournament is really a lot about the hidden thing, right? And if this is MBL, which we don't know 100%, and I really think he's playing like him, Red is pushing him back. And he's doing a yeah. crazy job here with the trebuchets for as now. well. For now, it, for now, for now, there's yeah. more cannon galleons. Oh, the Spanish cannon galleons are back there. The demos are going to connect on the fires and clear most of them. That's the problem right now, is fast fires will die to demos. And But, you know, the, yeah, I'm but... still not ready to give up on out of the great chances if he has the gold member he's got 45 on gold his opponent has zero on gold right now
True, but Red is doing something great and he still has the market, the Sarsis market that is still working great. Look at the resources he's getting for selling and the raiding with the Hazards. He's trying to fight with the villains, but he didn't notice that he never receives the supremacy. Those villains do nothing against the Hazards. Yeah, that's a good point. He probably thinks because supremacy was clicked that it is working for him. It is not. Again, 50 on gold against zero on gold right now. I think the key for Yadviga is to continue to raid the main eco, which he's doing, but he can't look away from the middle either because the monks converting the ships, the cannon galleons and the fires, they could still find their moments and more and more stone being purchased by Otto the Great to build up bombard towers on this gold area. I mean, th this is insane. Yeah, but Tristan, uh, check the economy for blue. He only have gold miners, like no farmers. No farmers yeah. at all. Lambert is also very low. So at the end, if you have 60 farmers and also Sarnes' market and you keep raiding and pushing, you might take back the gold eventually. Yeah. I don't know. I think the this key is better here, for red right now. I agree. The, the key for red is you continue to raid with Hussars, but you never lose your galleon mass. So, um, and for Otto the Great, he, he will only be able to stop the raids from being a factor if he kills that Galleon Mass. That Hussar has killed 10 villagers right there. Yeah, then because I he, think he doesn't notice. Sorry, sorry to, you know, we're both so excited here. I really think a key here for Otto is, because he's struggling, is a couple cheeky demos. You have to try and land one demo on those Galleons. So you have fast fires in front. And if you can get a demo in the middle there and kill half of them, maybe then you've got a chance. But there's just Hussars everywhere right now. And Tristan, he really has no resources. He's buying now resources with the gold because he has no wood, he has no food. He just bought it, the, the Halvar deal. Look at this, he's buying wood. Like, yeah. like crazy, and buying food as well. He has no echo now, Blue. It's crazy. And the score difference, 4K score difference, the Hussars are coming. Someone is telling and maybe thinking, oh, is that not the best micro here, Red? I think Red is doing an incredible game, in my opinion. Yeah, Red, yeah great job, great game. job. I mean, I'm Red hasn't had gold for 10 minutes. Red is exactly. no gold, no relics, no gold income. So winning the game without gold is not going to be easy. We see a skirm no tech now, that's good. And no. I, I just think right now for Otto, he has to... The Halb is a good tech because he needs the Halbs to clear up the Hussars. Because otherwise, he's not going to have villagers left anymore. Yeah, but it's good also that Red is on a, uh, a Brady now, at least Kermit. He's going with here with the Rams. One thing very important for Red, he is to have a lot of stone. Eventually, if he's not doing castles, he might sell in that stone, you get a thousand gold easily. Yeah. With, yeah. with that, with the Sansa's market. So it can be do, doing the job. Check the population. Incredible game, ladies and gentlemen. Red player, Jadwiwa, that we don't know who it is. We're guessing that can be Tato. I. But he's getting the game. He's almost double the population, Tristan. Double the population. Yeah, I it's agree. Crazy. And and he's just he's just calmed it down in the middle, and he's keeping his galleons alive. And he says, "Fine, have your gold, bro. Have your gold. I'm gonna raid you from the sides." And this is such incredible thinking, man. It is so easy to panic when you're out of gold, and think, "I need to. I need the gold now." And then if you don't get it, your opponent stabilizes on the sides. But instead, he's taken the sides. And now I think he might even be making a little bit push towards the middle again with those galleons. Dang, what man. Make me, it, what it made me think that it maybe not 100% Tatot is that Tatot would have done, in my opinion, probably something else in game one. You know, for how Tatot uh -huh. can play. You yeah. know, so uh, we have to see all the pros and cons, right? And uh, yes. it's difficult. I don't know if you agree with that as well. I, I agree. I think Tato would have gone for the like the side siege workshops that Yadviga's done in the north. That's the type of thing that Tato has done a lot of. So what we're seeing right now is very Tato-esque to me, but I agree. Not sure about the other elements just yet for him, but it is a great player. I mean, all the players are so good, and it's a player who's got to be able to survive against a player who's as chaotic as out of the grade. I mean, this is going to be a heartbreaker. I think, you know, even if we're not even talking guesses here, I think that people want to watch, they want to cheer for the heroes that produce the best games. And right yeah. now, Yadviga and yeah. Otto the Great are producing some epic, epic games. Very nice. And Tristan, I think this is going to be the Hidden Cup edition hardest to make the prediction for, for one reason. 
Uh, hold on, like, hold on, man. The highest than ever. Man, What's look that? at the population. Look at the score lead. Look at the score difference, and look ACCM? who hasn't resigned yet. ACCM. Ooh. Ooh. Is this time? I mean, NBA is try hard, but is this is this try hard? Is this try hard? <laughs> is close to six thousand resources. He actually on a five k ACCM vibes as well. Oh my god. <laughs> What is this, 60, man? Oh, yeah, yeah, 70 yeah. population for Out of the Grey, and Out of the Grey continues to fight. And when I think fight at this point, I'm not necessarily thinking MBL. Who knows? It's a big tournament. There's a lot of different things. Obviously, every player's got the things we meme on a little bit. But yeah, unfortunately well, Blue, for Otto, uh, Otto is dead. No. Blue, he's been, he keeps thinking, I still have in quotes the middle right because he has castles yeah. bombard towers he has halberdiers he see that his opponent is coming mainly with hazards so he's thinking well with villains and halves i can still do the job but man it's 73 population do you think nbl will stay with this population in the game as well i i could see anyone doing it honestly like like it's okay. very easy for us to say it but like you're you're fighting i mean his 70 pop is a little extreme, man, but a lot of times when players yeah. drop down to 130, people call the GG. This is a big moment. This has been a crazy series. There's still resources to produce Vils. There's still Halbs to kill Hussars. You still have four Relics. So, you know, he hasn't lost a ton of ground yet. I, I don't know. I don't want to be too harsh here to whoever Otto is for not calling it when it could be the most important moment of their entire career, right? I, I think they should fight if they think they've got a chance. Yeah, it's complicated. I was telling you the point that uh, it's going to be the hardest hit. Oh my God, nice by the boom, but now it's kind of useless, right? But um, look at the names that are not qualified in the in the event. Names that yeah. back in the days, not so long ago, Nikov was considered by everyone top eight. For many, you know, he's not even there. Kapoch, Dogao, how many names are not in the in the tournament, right? So the Beleza, level is, that's another one that insane. comes to mind. Vilese, Vilese, you know, like, whoa, you know? Okay, names that okay, been this is, in, in, yeah. Man, this is ACCM territory. This is, <laughs> I, it's too I much. take it all back. This is too much, yeah, I, you know? I, it, I take it, it, it all it's back. Too much, you know? Okay, it's, NBA, it's ACCM versus Mr. Yo now, because he's also not tattooed, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, ACCM versus Mr. Yo, you know? And they keep fighting here for forever, for tomorrow. Guys, Mr. Yo versus ACCM, let's go. <laughs> 80 pop. I mean, this is not normal, man. It's, well, he's recovering at least that. He's now 80. He's doing a town center. Mapo, please. He's rebuilding. He's rebooming. I'm, oh, oh, really? <laughs> he just, he is, just bought stone okay. for more bills. We have to appreciate the fight. We have to salute Otto the Great for the fight. This okay. is not Otto, Otto the Good. This is Otto the Great we're talking about here. So Otto the Great <laughs> is going to fight like a fighter does, okay? And, uh, well, Yadviga is is very close to just taking all the middle um, away from him. Yeah. But, I mean, the population's gone up for Otto. His opponent hasn't killed him yet, so he figures, let's keep going. And, and Tristan, uh, um, not having the supremacy is a big change in this game, man. Eh? Yes. Because he has been trying a lot of things with the villains he thinks he has. And he doesn't have that upgrade. And it's huge for the moment of the game that it happened. That upgrade, it gives you a lot. Really, really a lot. But guys, auto the great, and we are not joking. We are not trolling. We are not fooling you. No, no, no. He's 100 population. And you might say, oh, man, he's half the population. But two minutes ago, it was 70. He's recording. Yeah, it was like, it was, it was in the yeah. 60s, dude. It was in the 60s, yeah. actually. So. Echo KD. Tristan, check the Echo KD. Blue has killed 12 <laughs> villagers. 12 villagers to Jadwiga. Well, he lost 234. If this is not ACCM, who else could be? Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I still could see. Like, the thing about a lot of players is this, this matters so much to them, right? And like, yeah. MBL. My, I could see MBL sitting here like, man, I got to my supremacy. I got to bombard towers. I was so I had all the gold. I was so close. Like sometimes there's this self-defeating aspect or frustration aspect. Like, man, I should have done better. And it doesn't. You don't want to give up hope. You want to keep thinking it can be possible for me here. But finally, Yadviga has made some progress through the middle. Uh, there's just red GG. everywhere, and the GG is called. 
And what a game. We actually have a capital GG with an extra character for anyone who really wants to hunt and see who would say that. Come but on. Remember, we Come got on, the audio that. fix. Listen, we yeah, got yeah, the yeah. audio fix. The game was fantastic. Oof. It was the best game of the series. It is 2-1. And there's no doubt in my mind that Otto the Great can turn it right around and tie it up in the next game because of how good these two are. Oh, my God. That, that, that was... Absolutely, while they're not having the supremacy. But you see, during, during one game, how many things can happen? We have been telling 90% of the time, oh, it's NBL, oh, it's NBL, it's NBL. Then we finish the game, yep. it's not, cannot be NBL, cannot be NBL, it's not NBL anymore. Your versus ACC, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so I, <laughs> you know, I, uh, no. <laughs> I recognize that I am diving a little too deep into this, but I think this is part of the fun. So viewers, I hope you appreciate this. So before we talk about the next game, yesterday there was a player who called GG in all caps, okay? And so I reached out to, to my stat people, and I said, can I please get stats on the percentage of times that people call GG with lowercase g's and capital G's. I actually have stats, okay? And I'm going to tell you that the majority of people are always lowercase G's, but there are four, uh, four players who 25% of the time or greater do the capital GG's, okay? I'm going to read them off. Sebastian's 35% with the uppercase GG. The Viper is 38% with the uppercase GG. Vinchester, 23% with the uppercase GG, and then Sato at 40%, which is the highest. Now, we said we said MBL, and we said, oh, we have a graphic for this? Yeah, if we have a graphic for this, we could toss it up on screen. I didn't know we had this. There you go, people. Yeah. Oh <laughs> important stats. Important stats. I'm so proud. There it is. So if you want to know the difference what? between lowercase and uppercase GG... There it's it is. Leary, Tristan. It's Leary. One percent. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're wondering, or Jordan, if you're wondering, okay, if you're wondering why some of this doesn't add up to a hundred, it would be some variation. So we were going to make a separate stat for if it was one capital G and one lowercase G, but that is just you know so small. So I'm just saying, like we think MBL or um, ACCM. But MBL and ACCM, they don't call GG in caps that frequently. So I don't know, man. I'm I'm second guessing everything. I, I think it's not MBL or ACCM. <laughs> so um salutes to chat please for production. I went to them last night at 1 a.m. my time before bed with a bunch of different things. I was like, hey, this, that, the other thing, this could be really good. They were like, honestly, we're kind of maxed out with this, that, and the other. So I didn't think we had the graphics prepared. Um, but if for those that find that interesting, you have it. Mem's going to be right back with this, by the way. She's taking a short break. And it's going to be out of the maps, home map, coming up next. Reminder, everybody, if you want to contribute towards the prize pool, thank you to everyone who's, who's done so already. 50% of donors go directly towards the live prize pool there. You can tweet at us. You can share your experiences, your opinions, your theories, your memes using the hashtag HC5 on Twitter or X or what. Anyways, uh, you also could subscribe for free with Twitch Prime, which uh, so many of you have done. Thank you for that. And of course, if you're not subscribed, you do have the salute emote available if you just follow the stream. Oh, man. And we've got Hera recycling a meme that I remember from three years ago. Hera, great social media strategist and uh, a great meme. Honestly, people are always so confused <laughs> when trying to, well, not confused, just having fun with the whole guessing game. Oh, man. All right. So, Out of the Great chose to go for Cup. Remember, Out of the Great won game number one, then lost game number two, chose to go Cup, now lost. I would imagine that Otto the Great is going to go for Arabia Slopes or Mudflow next. Um, if this becomes a Mudflow game, I'm expecting a Chinese mirror. And I think it is easy for people to maybe say boo to the mirror matchup. But if there was ever a map that had a good mirror matchup, it would be Mudflow as we saw in the qualifiers. Other than that, 
I think Arabia and slopes could see, actually could see Chinese on Arabia in all honesty too. Um, but we always see very good games on those maps. And uh, we focused on the GGs. We focused on the players getting housed. We focused on the so many various things today in this series. But again, welcome everybody for those that just got here. For those that are supposed to be working right now. <clears throat> your boss is <laughs> Normally cool. work. Yeah, yeah. Normally your boss is cool with it. <laughs> But uh, thank you guys for <laughs> watching Hidden Cup today. Yeah, well, it's, man, it's great I to see. It a bit. It, yeah, go ahead. Me. I was going to say that it's great to see so many people watching this game. You know, you can feel proud, Tristan, and you guys as a community, because I just hope that this game get this game and community get the 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 recognition that, in my opinion, it it deserve. You know, to to be in the esports scenes and with the work we are trying to do. And with the work that you are doing now together, man, and all the people watching, it's awesome. I mean, I was checking you yesterday, the, the video at the end that you were getting emotional. And you should have reasons to get it because when we love what we do for so many years and get this kind of results, it's amazing, man. So congratulations for that. It, th thank you, man. I mean, everyone's played a role to get here. To, to think back to, uh, you know, when we met each other 10 years ago, pretty much, uh, to, to now is wild to think that we're here. So, I mean, we're just getting started, people. The, the people who are here watching right now, the people who are playing their role, this is just the start of everything. Thank you, everybody. And let's, let's dive into game number four, which I have to imagine Vamos. is going to give us some more potential tells on who these players might be. Remember, you can vote on who these players are at the conclusion of the series. We have all the results stored. And then eventually, we'll have a guessing competition. But we are here... Game number four, and Otto the Great had a very messy, a very crazy game that did not bring a victory, unfortunately, in game number three. Uh, Otto the Great falls now to his home map, Arabia. We have yet Viga playing as the, the Vietnamese. We've got Otto the Great as the Byzantines. And Memp, uh, thoughts on the Civ matchup? I don't know if we've seen this that frequently. Don't think so. We have seen it. I think both civilizations are nice, but... I would say that in a 90% of the matchups where you see the Byzantines, I always favor Byzantines because they have everything. It's true that they the do. actual Vietnam have some great economy a bonus, you know? Uh, but Jadwiga is going for the lame, but he finds the, the scout. Anyway, he's not going to lame anymore. It's going to be some battle. It will go back. Do you prefer Byzantines uh, same as I do or not? I think if you if we have like the a player who is extremely optimal for Arabia, they can make the best use out of the Vietnamese eco. So um, yeah. some of the best Arabia players in, in this tournament, I would say, would be like uh, Viper, Leary, Hera. I would actually even throw Hart in there. I honestly think even though the Hart meta? came through from the qualifier, the, yeah, the, the meta, meta on the Arabia, meta yeah. yeah, they're so, so crisp and clean with their timings. And then with those types of players, I go Vietnamese. But with, if it's not those types of players, I go Byzantines because Byzantines can allow you to make some mistakes. And if the, if everything's not perfect, Mem, the Byzantines are just so tough to break. So yeah, I agree. I don't mind the Byzantines here at all for Out of the Great. And do you feel that we are in these matchups with those kind of the clean players? I don't know 100% after the games that we have seen. It has been a little bit of a chaotic games, kind of mess, yes. you know? And that's why I think Byzantines in this chaos can shine. I, I agree. I mean, Otto made like 15 Spearmen in Feudal in the previous game. So Otto is going to love cheap Spearmen. Like, this is, yeah. Otto is living yeah. the dream already. Um, yet Viga, this is a player who I'm not too sure on, right? Because game number one was hard for me to get a lot of tells. And then game number two and game number three, I, I'm still not sure what caliber player we're looking at. Some people were saying Tato. Some people saying like, yo. Um... So I think this will actually tell us a lot about Yadviga as a player because a player like Tato is extremely aggressive on Arabia. So yeah, um, we'll we do have that. Thing. Now, I want to bring up... Um, well, I'm not sure if I should... Ne never mind, ma'am. I have a point that we have a video later on a specific thing that play, uh, viewers can look for in Hidden Cup. Don't and spoil. The video, is, Don't spoil. the video is after this series. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to shut up for now. I just say there will be more details on what okay. you can look for <laughs> for the players. Don't here. spoil. Don't spoil yourself, yeah. Tristan. My goodness. Okay. <laughs> the maps, though, 
if we go to the maps, Tristan, I prefer blue map with the two wood lines at the back, goal at the back. Yeah, the berries are in front, but he has already two houses. And then if we go to red, he has the most wood in front. So yeah, yeah back yeah. here, Mapo, I like it. I blue map, I think is better. And now look at this. All forward there. The goal is forward. You can wall between those two wood lines, but I like a little bit more for the Byzantines. And remember, Tone was for free. Yeah. I, I think um, the back stone can be really nice here for Yadviga, though. Uh, and the stones are more forward for Otto, so that is the one thing I'd say. But yeah, I, yeah. I think like this version of Arabia is fairly mild compared to w other versions. So I, I don't think... I mean, I hope. Obviously, you always hope that the maps aren't going to make too big of a difference. I think that these maps, they got plenty of wood lines, they've got resources, and they've just got to decide on now how they're going to play this. Okay, for now, we see how the uptime... I mean, the uptime, Tristan, now, can we say is fast? We have seen even 17 plus, 17 po population going up. So going now 19, 20 is kind of standard. Yeah, this is a rare occurrence here to see Byzantines here on Arabia. But in the main event of Hidden Cup, we added more bands. So I think civilizations that would have been seen more frequently on, on other maps uh, might have been banned out. But maybe, maybe a, a sign, though, if Byzantines have almost exclusively been played on other maps, maybe a sign that Otto just sees the game differently than other people. Yeah. Okay. But let's see what is oh he's exploring now the barrack well expected to be there and um fix it you know the path in a little bit oh. better more than fix it you know or you will go arches i would love to see arches but i feel that the scout is still being the main meta here even yeah. more when you go that i think quick up. there you go they're far apart right so you want to use the mobility vietnamese the the, the best strategy you can go for for your economy is a scout build and Vietnamese have such good economy. So it just makes a lot of sense. And it's going to be scouts as well here from auto. So Byzantines don't have any bonuses to work with right now beyond the vision. Um, the spearmen that are being queued up. I mean, come on, three spearmen in queue. This is, this is MBL confirmed, but, but the spearmen that are being queued up is obviously uh, cheaper, but Vietnamese have the faster researching eco upgrades. Everything feels very smooth for them. And Byzantines, it's all about Castle Age, Mem. So if they are, are alive in Castle Age, they're one of the best civs. If they fall apart in Feudal Age, that might not be the case here. Yeah, but, uh, you know, if your opponent is going to scout, you have the Tone Watch, and then you are going to spam Spears. You only need to be slowly walling yourself, so they shouldn't fall apart as, as they are very strong to defend, you know? So let's see what's going to yeah. happen. For now, he's going to take a villager there, probably. Ah! He should go back or he should just commit and take the Valir. Nah, he's going back. He's going to go back. Okay. You know, ma'am, that that made me think, ooh, actually, yeah, the scouts are coming in. I'm wondering if we're going to see any quick walls on these individual villagers because we haven't seen a lot of big quick wall highlights in this series so far. Villagers are no. going to still fight back. The Spearman Probably. is here and out of the great defense just in time. Yeah, don't think we have seen any, actually. Good point. You know, I mean, we have spears, not seen dude. at any <laughs> moment. What happened? Look at the, we got Spearman in the north for Otto. We got Spearman at home yeah, for Otto. Over. We got all like over. random Spearman wandering around for Otto. <laughs> I well, if we put his flow of war, we, had, we will see. Yeah. I wish we had like Otto the Great merch, and I could just toss on an Otto T-shirt right now because this is just so. It's just so random. I love it. Oh, yeah, man. It's just spamming there. Well, he, he see that his opponent is just going the scouts as well. He's trying to be aggressive. Uh -huh. A lot of farming he has. Three scouts, seven spears, Tristan. Seven spears he has already. I mean, they are cheap, but they still cost, they still cost something, right? So, uh -huh. oh, my God. So many units he has right now, but not doing yet any damage. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, the positive here for Otto is, while, while nothing's been killed, it's the same on the other side. Yadviga has actually brought the scouts home. So Yadviga is playing reactive, and we do have a quick wall there. Could be a trap. Ooh. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay, man, I have to spoil it. I have to spoil this right now. The thing I was going to say before. The majority okay, you of high-level players... Yeah. I couldn't take it because it's so relevant right now. The majority of okay. high-level players, as we see this villager get sniped, and, and scouts getting attacked, and the forward spearmen actually kind of paying off. Okay, 
the majority of players with low numbers of scouts and archers are using box formation. And there is really three players that do not do it. I'm going to have a video on this later. Three players that do not use box formation on low numbers of scouts is, is Doubt, is Yo, and MBL. And I'm looking at these scouts, and neither player is using box formation when they move around. So I'm really like racking my brain here. Let's see. With okay, the actually the scouts are boxed now. You see how they're boxed. I need the ZCM up? there. Yeah. I need to. Yeah, oh, that no, was. I don't think that's the box formation. I don't I don't know, but I'm just oh people, no. I gotta stop thinking about it. I I can't shut up about it here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let, let's see what's gonna happen now. Those scouts are going to be down two scouts actually, but he still have more army. He's doing well borrow already. He has good economy, both with double with us and horse collar, and both players are going to be fully well. This game is going for castles, and uh, like we were talking, Jadwiga yeah. is having very good resources with this beautiful economy wow. that uh, Vietnam get and he's going to go up to castle it's quicker than his opponent much quicker he seems yep. I don't know I agree I agree it's really good uptime it'd be a perfect situation to maybe consider something like cav archers so uh, you know the the dream for Vietnamese on Arabia these days mem is the scout rush into walls into cav archers and I think even though the scouts just went down there I do think that cav archer play could be pretty good here. Even a couple archers could be helpful right now against some of these spears. Okay, let's see what is going to be the, the the transition. Um, I'm just thinking, man, he's crazy. You know, uh, I always focus. Man, you got finally hidden cap into me because usually I focus <laughs> mainly on on the map, the game, and so on. But I'm thinking all the time in the small yeah. details to see who they can be. I, and I'm getting annoyed myself because I don't know, you know, and I want to know, you know, but I, then I will analyze when the round one finish. I don't know. It's so complicated. I think Mr. I know. Tristan. I Tell actually, me. I am so confident. Like, I want to bet my existence on who these players are, man. I think this is Yo against MBL right now. I feel very strongly. No, I, but, but so all the Indian ACCM can be 7,000 behind, and nowadays a hole. There's a hole, there's a hole. He's gonna wall in time or not? He's gonna make a gate. You need to focus there. Oh, gate, no. gate, gate. No. No. Oh, this is not so wall. bad for Yaniga. Oh no. Mem, there's yeah, houses la, la. everywhere. Like he walled yeah. everything else and he never not checked there. that. What a horrible moment for Yadviga. Yeah, man. Well, and not another quick wall there. So we can say who they are not, right? Yep. So it's pretty obvious who they are not. I'm not mentioning anymore. It's still, Otto <laughs> the Great is far from going up yet. I mean, he is floating 500 resources, but still a little bit uh, far. He has a scout deck. At the end, uh, Tristan, he lost only one village. So it's not a, the biggest deal. And he's losing most Agreed. of the scouts. And you don't want to lose them. Yeah. Oh, he nice, wallet Nice wall there nice. from Yadviga because of the overchop. But I mean, at this point, like, if you're red, you want to be in Castle Age pressuring the opponent. Now... You've lost your scouts. You're scared to move out with your archers because you could run into more army from the opponent. So as long as Otto the Great can just keep that archer army from Yadviga in the middle of the map for a little bit longer, I, I think the later Castle Age is not going to be too horrible for Otto. No, and also we have to remember, guys, that the buildings from Byzantines are with more HP as well. So even Palisades, everything. Yep, yep, it's going to be harder, yep. harder to pull it down, which is... Probably not going to happen. We'll see. It's true that the crops are happening, but he has the archers. As you mentioned, he's Ooh. attacking and getting... Oh, with a snipe there with those archers. Now, yeah. the Great is still in a fine, in a really, really fine position and with Will Barrow. So his five is ahead and Will Barrow, he's completely fine, Tristan. Yeah, we need to see... Uh, really need to see the uh, fortifications for Otto right now because these are going to be crossbows with Bodkin and he cannot deal with that. So here comes the army. It's a small army. But he's pretty well fortified. We've got houses coming up behind some of the weak areas. Maybe the overchop could happen there. We'll keep an eye out. But oh, that's how he's weak. I think he should be okay against an army of only eight crossbow. If it's like fifteen, those units are going to yeah. break through. But it's not going to be that large. And then Yadviga just drops a TC at home. We're going to see a boom, and we are going to see a pretty long Arabia game here, man. It feels like. 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, they are very equal right now. Population is even ahead for Otto the Great. And remember that now he could spam whatever. He's spamming schemes already. Schemes are so cheap, really, really cheap. Resources for Otto the Great are, are, are fantastic. He can make, what, two extra TCs? Maybe one TC extra with the least skirmishes and all the upgrades as well. I didn't even ballistic here. Look at the gold he has. He's buying even food here. So Blue is in a very good position here with the with the Byzantines. And please, Mapu, can you put the forward war for Blue and people will see that you can't see everything because now they get Tone Patrol. So you cannot surprise Byzantines anymore. With, yeah, with, with Blue. and yeah, just look. There's a, you see everything. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like what we said with Byzantines. You wanna you wanna play chill. You wanna play relaxed. And then if you make it to this stage of the game, normally you're in a pretty good position. Elite skirm upgrade will be in. I just want to point out that Otto the Great has made more spears and more skirms than any other player in Hidden Cup 5 so far. Lots of counter <laughs> units. And those skirms are going to find the crossbows, and then the crossbows on the other side are going in. And also microing against Yadviga here. So really nice position. I think for Otto the Great, if he can just continue to pressure the front of uh, Yadviga's map, Yadviga could actually have some real issues here. Yeah, he did also the siege. I didn't notice, but he's doing a mangrove. And as we were talking, Otto the Great, he's gonna have ballistic. Ballistic here is gonna be sick. He has the kill advantage, and if he clean these archers, he's gonna he's gonna make a lot of damage. I know that he has the mangrove, but those units with ballistic as well, with some good micro, as you mentioned, Otto the Great is gonna be in a really strong and important position. But mm -hmm. has already the second tone center as well. So yeah, uh, let's see. But the, pro the problem is the army numbers, uh, Tristan. Look at the army numbers. Insane. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, it, it, it is a real concern, but that could change here, man. We could have a big attack round, and he didn't notice it. Oh. Did Otto notice it? Otto notices it this now. This is awesome. Oh, man. And Otto gets oh, underneath man. it next to it and kills it. Brutal stuff there for Yadviga. Oh, man. And now with Ballistics I know in, man, it's going to be a I... full clear yeah. on these crossbows. I know you're going to tell me no because of, you know, but... Why not sending the manual there that you know that the army is there with patrolling? I'm asking you. Mm. Uh, because patrol, well, the, I mean, the answer just... is, the answer is yeah. because patrol with siege is weird, but I agree that that hurts so bad. I think a patrol there could have saved him and maybe the siege would have paid off. But now it is Otto the Great, who's 2-1 down here in a commanding position. Yeah. <gasps> Yeah, but Tristan, it's weird against knights, but against this army, it's okay. And you know that he's yeah. there, you know? Yeah. He, he just lost all the initiative there, because if he kill all that army, it would be a lot closer, even still. He has more villages there. No will borrow, but now Otto the Great with 31 army, and even the plus two armor with ballistic, how do you stop that? Remember so I speculated difficult. on box formation a little bit? And I said, I said, yo, MBL, and doubt, doubt. All it is, a, it is a meme that people make. He is, he is known sometimes for maybe not having the best of micro compared to some of the other top talents. It's maybe something to think about there, but certainly Yadviga right now is just so far behind with control. It's gonna need the siege mem to make all the difference here. Okay, let's hit the siege. He need he has oh, to Oh, micro, 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 okay. micro. Okay. Ooh. So suddenly I am rethinking uh, my doubt comment. <clears throat> yeah, I nice split micro there micro from there. auto. Yeah. Uh, and very nice that we got against the ballistic. So he was doing a good job. He's losing a couple of bullets there, but there's a lot of action going on. Like it's so difficult here. The multitasking is the in this game is really, really, really insane, you know. It's really insane. <laughs> Okay. There's the uh, okay. there's the doubt hero. Yeah. The doubt hero emo. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, okay. Vega lost the uh lost villagers on that wood line, man. Been, uh, you, you think know, you think tell Tristan, you the, I can focus, but you think I can focus with this kind of emotes that you put me there? The producer I cannot focus casting <laughs> like this, Tristan. I mean seriously, I, man. <laughs> there's I have Go so on. many emotions right now, and I'm sure it's obvious to viewers. I don't know if viewers feel it too, but I just these games have been so good. The, the guessing has been too tempting. The series has been too fun. And I'm just, I'm in my happy place right now, man. I'm happy you're here with me. And I'm hoping that we get more games from this series. And it, right now, it feels like Otto is going to tie it, it up. Failed, it I, failed. I mean, it failed. Yeah, it just yeah. seems so tough for Yadviga. And also, to in this. position, Tristan, 
in this position, Tristan, sorry that I interrupt you, it's like uh, Byzantines have to shine because you can still do an army, a little bit of that army. They are 25% cheaper camels and skirmishers, and then you only need yeah. 640 to go to Imperial. With that transition, this is a game for Otto the Great to lose more than a, a game for Jet. We were to win, in my opinion. I agree. I agree. Uh, Otto is also doing the really smart things, getting as many relics as possible, and looking at different areas of the map. Look at this micro! Look at this split micro from Otto the Great against the Siege. Beautiful confidence. You know a player is good when they run towards the Siege map. It's not like some players, they're able to run away from the Siege and split. But he said, I don't care about your Siege right there. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what is going to happen there now. Uh oh yeah he's doing city or shop forward so he's very confident he knows that he has the, the the advantage with the army he's coming with knights he's coming yeah. now with a lot of army I, I like what he's doing because in this situation you could say okay i'm gonna be play greedy no he's still doing army he's still going with the with the big boom and yep. i think this is the right call here look at the score yeah it's just bloody now i, I now it, a lot of people are probably like okay well what can red do here so you can defend with siege when you're in your walls but to move out now, you need to have some knights mixed in as well for some of these skirms. So this is actually really good. Like double mangonel, double knight with the crossbow. This is a solid army. And Otto the Great was going to push the other hill. So I, I do think that maybe Yadviga could start to take some better fights. But the problem is, man, it's like every time you go to move out, every time you think you're in a good spot, you're going to have another army coming in from this freaking auto guy who is going to have something on your wood line or something, some type of a push in the form of Siege on the front. Yeah, it's true. And he's coming. As you can see, he's trying to put him away from there. But no, the Mangrel is coming. He cannot see it. And now the Mangrel is going to take some village. There you go. One down. Krobos and Skirmish is careful with that Mangrel. But take it. No, he didn't take it. Man, they are on point. Tristan, they are really not anymore. He take now that Mangrel. And because they are fighting on the left as well. There's a yep, lot going yep. on. He's trying to kill the Mangrel. And now, as we were talking, he's on the way to Imperial. How do you counter now the Imperial Age here? And look at this TC. Like, he's he's town centering right by this fight right now. Very interesting decision here from Otto. Again, I, I do not know who Otto is. I mean, obviously, I, I have strong feelings it might be a couple players here. But it's just crazy to see these plays. The Siege Micro from Otto is ridiculous here on the hill. And that's he Micros again. And we see a split from Yadviga. Both players continue to shine here, man. That was insane micro from both of them. Yeah, yeah. They are microing really well both. Like, you cannot tell completely, okay, one is outplaying the other. I really think it's really come to the previous battle with that mangrel. He fall kind of behind with the army because both are having similar population. He's doing a castle on top of that hill. But the problem is that Byzantines, for how strong they are and what we say, couple of times during this game, he's just taking that lead because check the resources for Jadwiga. It's close to go up to Imperial, but Byzantines, it has a 33 yeah. discount, 33% discount. And that's really the difference here, uh, Tristan. Could see a big shot here, man. Could see a big shot yeah. because that mango coming out of the Siege Workshop, it, it needs to be used fast. It needs to be used fast. There it is. He Ooh. takes out one mango and that's worth it for him. Imp is on the way now for Jadwiga. We have a castle in the north of the map for Otto the Great, who has four of the five relics, as well as an amazing go wow. count, man. Uh, this wow. is crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, having the four relics as well, when you are fighting and several fight, you really need to have a great macro on map control. The castle is going to be there. And now doing the plus three and chemistry probably right away. Take the resources. Three stunk he has. Crazy yep. economy. He could go up to Imperial again if he wanted. You know, plus <laughs> three chemistry. Yeah, post Imperial upgrade. You know, he, he gonna need it. Yeah, I mean, now you clean everything. I think we go for game number five with a two two. There you go, GG Cole, Otto the Great, greatest than ever in this series, probably right because he dominated here with the beautiful Byzantines. It's it's really what strong series? civilization. If you get if you get uh, Tristan disadvantage, this kind of advantage. Get what a throw. series. I mean, what a fun series nice. we have. I mean, think about what how the series has played out. If you watched game number one, we had the really unique difference of approach on a closed map. Then we had the hybrid map on evacuation. 
into the the crazy crazy action game number three on cup with all the water and the land combo here's straight land this is good too i mean I, we don't know who these players are. I did say I would bet my life that it was someone, and I am now fearful for my life because I'm second guessing myself. But it's two two. <laughs> we have uh, we have slopes, well, mud flow available on Otto's side, and then we have Yadviga still with Bay uh, as a home map. And you know what? Now uh, I think he's not Tatot anymore. I think Tatot will have played in Arabia better than this. I agree. I don't, I don't think those that's Tato. Minus as well. I don't think he's tattooed anymore. And now he has like, okay, Otto the Great, you have played only one of your home maps. Now it makes sense that he picked probably the other home map. He still have his lobes and mood flow. And Otto the Great, whoever he is, have feel really good in the two games that he, he won. Like very dominant. While the other games was I close. Have... So Okay, I have a question for you, Mem. I have a question for you. Let's go. For Yadviga. What about Barls? Could Yadviga be Barls? <clears throat> Pick like uh, how the style was. It's, overall, I would describe Barls as super solid. Out of the great two, monks super solid. Uh, it's it's a thought. I, I don't know. There, it's tough with sixteen players, but it's there's very there's some yeah there. I I just feel maybe we got Barls on either side here. Oof. It's so tricky. I get Yadviga I is is Polish, so it would make sense for for Yadviga to be uh, Barls. <laughs> you, you know, you, you know, you know the the, the game that uh, it makes me be a little bit confused about the guest from Yadviga. The first game. What? That uh, Hindustan yeah, yeah, yeah. is and the gameplay. It what is because with the other games, I, I I get in some details that okay, it's going that direction, but I, I'm not sure about that Hindustani choice and how he he. Um, he played that the approach he he took in that game. You know, I'm mm -hmm. confused yep, about that fair. game. You know, let, let's see the next okay. one because we have game number yeah. five now coming and well getting well right now is the closest series. It's only the day two, but yesterday was four one both series. Sorry for the spoil, but two two already, and we have a best of three in front of us. Awesome, absolutely amazing series. Let's hop into game number five. This would be the choice of Yadviga here, and it is going Ooh. to be Bay. So for game five, we have a map which produced a banger yesterday. And this is the final home map remaining actually for Yadviga. So if this does go, well, when this moves to game six and potentially game seven, uh, this would be then on Out of the Great's remaining home maps. Uh, we have Italians for Out of the Great. We then have Lithuanians for Yadviga here. Two sieves that I could see having different bonuses, Mem. But, but talk about the map. What do you think about the map that is named Bay. I love, I, I have fallen in love with this map more and more. I wasn't, a, I'm gonna be honest with you, since it's a, one of those maps that is amazing, you know, but mm -hmm. um, has been in the hidden cap forever, right? This one. Yep. And yep. Uh, I think this is a great map because even with the water or losing the water, better say it, it doesn't have to snowball necessarily. We saw it yesterday, actually, you know. The player who lost uh, the water won the game, you know, mm -hmm. and he has a lot of options and it brings some really good games. So um, I, I like this map a lot and I really think that the Italian skill is better than Lithuanians. Okay. Well, what about if the Lithuanian player goes forward with two villagers and wants to villager rush and lame, which is something that we saw a certain Norwegian do during the qualifier in three or four straight games. If this yeah, but, is but MBL, you say the Lithuanians. You say the Lithuanians, oh, it's the Italians, the one who Italian. is going forward, which is crazy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what happened, man? I mean, stop being excited, Tristan. It's Italians <laughs> going forward with the two villains, you know? So it's not Tabiel, you know? <laughs> I just assumed. I'm sorry, you know? I, I mean, well, you know, it, it's, it's Italian, you know? And he's going forward. Okay. So now what do you have to say about that? I'm sorry. Well, Mamma mia. It's, it's not something... Like going for the villager rush is not good for your own. Oh, economy. DC. But yeah, he, sh he should on. know. He should know to be careful here. He doesn't want his opponent to know about this. He wants to kill villagers on the wood. <laughs> oh, 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 God. Okay. This is awkward. Hello, Yadwiga. Welcome. We are villagers too, and we would like to work at your economy. 
Man, I, oh, I, I hate this tournament goodness. now, Tristan. I'm sorry. I mean, this is back to be NBL again. I mean, who is doing this kind of <laughs> strategy? Seriously. <laughs> now is NBL again. I mean, oh, man, I hate Hidden Cup. No, don't invite me anymore, Tristan. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, I mean, what is this, man? This, this cannot well, be anyone else. It has to be him. It, no? it has to be MBL. It has to be 110% confirmed. I'm back to betting my life on it. Now, it's tricky because maybe this is a strategy that people practice, man. Maybe this becomes the meta, but like, you know, he's just straight up walling in the gold and the opponent's going to have to go so far to get gold otherwise. So, not only that, you know, players that. are not it, used to this. Players don't know what to do. They, if they practice mem a million and one games, they probably would never have this happen unless they practice against NBL. Exactly. So you uh, don't know what to do when this happens. And you see why NBL doesn't practice? He doesn't need to practice. He said, the maps that I don't practice, I go this. I go make this, <laughs> these things. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, who is prepared? Who is prepared against this kind of approach? Yep. I mean, just put yourself playing this map because you want to practice your map of your tournaments, and then you get someone th that is doing that against you. What did you I do would, now? Because I would say if I was practicing, like if I if I had this if I had Auto the Great as a practice partner, <gasps> oh, I would say oh, for rest. Wh why are you doing this? This is a waste of time for my practice. That's what I would say. So okay. I, I think that this is something that Auto the Great has in him which is special to whoever he is. But we should mention that resources collected is way higher for the player who didn't have two villagers walk around the map, who already added oh the dock God. and already added the fishing ships. Wait, I don't know. 500 resources more in yep. seven minutes? Oh, man. Well... Two fishing ships as well. We also, Yadviga just ignored it. Uh, is going to go out to the other gold. And what's kind of funny here, Mem, is every resource right now at uh, Yadviga's main base has out of the great houses next to them. <laughs> we have we have the two houses there. We've got the walls there and the two houses there. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something in this situation. Red will destroy them, the houses. Oh, with so, villagers, so maybe? Ooh, it's an interesting idea. Uh, Especially if it's MBL. They, they die. Especially if it's yeah, MBL. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, but really, they get destroyed in what? In 10 seconds? If you send two, three villages, you take them, and mm -hmm. he's going to be housed. And he's Dark Age forever now. I will go take them. Yeah, he's doing it. Oh, my God. Oh, this is... We are That's really castles, smart. Uh, really. It, 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 would you have to do that? Mem. You need to kill the houses. Mem. Really. What type... Who... I think the type of player who thinks about that is a player who might play a lot of Black Forest with you, honestly. And remember, I was Stop. thinking maybe Yadviga oh could be someone like Marls. If you call me Black Forest guy again, I'm going to be practicing forever, you know? I'm not going to sleep, not going to go to the gym, you know? I'm going to go and gonna, we're going to make a best of 21 so much or whatever, you know? Okay, I I'm gone. I'm going to practice. Bye-bye, Tristan. <laughs> I mean... If you want to play 11 games against me, man, we could do that. <laughs> I just, sorry. That was, that was a okay. little <laughs> But all Black Forest, okay? <laughs> okay. You know, anyway, jokes aside, he took the house. Let's focus. Let's focus, Tristan. Let's focus. And we, we will have the challenge, you know? I know that you want to kill me. Don't worry. I will give you the pleasure that you can kill me. You will do it. But not during Hidden Cup, okay? Too many viewers to see yeah. this, okay? <laughs> anyway, 2-2 um, two, two now. The thing here is, with all this madness, Otto the Great got no damage at all. I don't see yep. for Jadwiga. And now Otto the Great has a barrack and double dock on the pond. With the double dock, double he might take the dock. fish. Double dock, and yeah. he doesn't see it, Jadwiga. This is crazy. Yeah, Jadwiga yeah, sees one of the docks, not both. So far, some of those houses still stand for Otto, but I am concerned. Actually, a housing problem there for Yadviga is Yadviga is trying to make the first fire galley. What a weird game, dude. I mean, this is game five, so I wonder if at this point Otto's like, I'm not as crisp and as clean as my opponent, and I need to just change the normal meta, and that's exactly what's going to happen. I, I could see Yadviga losing those fish, but keep in mind that at least Yadviga's had the fish, right? Otto never had that food income for himself. But I have, I have something to say, and you're going to feel sad now, Tristan. 
Okay. Okay. I I will like both players advance because both yes. looks great to me. You know, and yeah, fun they're, to they're watch. So for fun reasons. to watch. You know what yes. I mean? You know, fun to yes, watch. These series are. Yesterday we saw some great gameplay, some great crazy games, but this is being so fun. This series, and for example, this Dark Age, it looks like nothing happened. Look at the KD and KD, and it still is amazing game to watch till now. So so much. I think fun. it is a you perfect know? combination of styles, man. You have Yadviga, who's yeah. like not the most meta player ever, but is clearly very talented and well rounded with strategy. And then Otto the Great says, it like sees Age of Empires 2 through a completely different lens. And it's just the perfect match. It's been the perfect series. And, and right now, all this pressure from Otto the Great needs to do something here because those fishy ships for Yadviga still bringing in food. Yadviga has pretty much ignored the chaos so far and is doing completely fine. And the economy is problematic for Otto the Great. I'm very worried without fishing ships. Zero fishing ships versus five. It reminds me of the evacuation game where he really yeah. needed some fishing ships. Yeah, that's why I think uh, Otto the Great is going to keep going and pushing and he's doing that. He's going to try to fight for the water for sure. And he's doing that. Mm -hmm. But then I kind of don't understand a lot why the lame. If you want to go for the water, you can go probably smoother with a normal transition to go up because, well, Lithuanian has the extra food in the start, but Italians can match up that with the discount. With the, uh, for, I, for I the, think... For the app. Time. I think I the know. answer is it's initiative, right? So, you know, in normal games, yeah. we see, okay, this person's been aggressive, big demos here, uh, and, and players want to take initiative. I think what those two villagers did, or what Otto was hoping for them to do, was to give him initiative so he gets to control how the attacks happen. And in some ways, it Tristan, has, Tristan. because he was the first to attack, but we've got a demo! And yeah, not only just that. Bada boom here. Yeah, I, I, not only that, check out the queue for Otto the Great. Five demos in the queue. Well, now four. He's just going full demo, and he has a third dog in the south. It's gonna go wild on water. Crazy. It's not too much as investment. Just There's no balance for this guy. Otto, Otto the Great is is not balanced in the slightest. Not balanced in his thinking. Not balanced in his gameplay. Not balanced in his strategy. Not balanced in his eco. He's got twenty on wood and five on food. My goodness, here. So but you're telling that holding. he's an unbalanced guy? He's an unbalanced yes. guy? Yes. Would you mean? Okay. Yes, when he oh, when he tries to walk you, forward, you know? when Otto the Great <laughs> tries to walk forward, he just walks in a circle. He's imbalanced. <laughs> oh my oh, god. Oh man. Oh my is this is this joke is typical from another cast, you know what I mean? But well, you can keep going. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> Nilly's vibes we got here, you know. If people was missing Nilly, Nilly is back in the house, guys. Let's go. Okay, now with those galleys. Tristan, three dogs. I insist. If he not get in the water, it's uh it's gonna be really bad for, for Otto the Great. Agreed. And he's not really getting My... in the water. Look at this. And the thing the thing about how this is played out is can we look at the, the eco setup at their main ecos? Because like the fishing ships are gonna They've already paid for themselves. They're going to go down eventually. It's 12 to 13 on food for Yadviga, 400 food in the bank. Actually, I take it back. The farming eco has not been great for Yadviga, and it's kind of okay wow. for Otto the Great. So I'm wrong. I am yeah, incorrect yeah. in my assessment. We're just too busy looking at all these you know, these demos in the middle. Fine. And now he's taking the water. Yeah, now he's taking the water. Now it's taking the water. People might be surprised. There's so much water going on here to fight. Yeah, but the early game is so important. For the later game, it might not matter. But then you can get here a big boost if you have the pre-boom here. Uh -huh. You need to fight for it because if not, the transition is going to be really wild. If you like that, you can see how the resources now in the bank for Jadwiwa are really, really solid. But can they stabilize? Resources collected in seven minutes. Remember, Tristan, there was five, six hundred ahead for Jadwiga. Now it's getting closer. And Otto the Great will have resources to go up to Castle. It's probably very soon. And the time is going to be and 30 seconds, one minute difference. No more. And Mem, and Mem, not just that. It's archers. We've got archers from Yadviga coming in. There is no defensive army. There is no Ooh. stone for a tower. But he saw it. It was noticed. But Otto the Great noticed it and Ooh. is going to quickly drop some house walls. And that... Well, he, he can't fully wall, but he can keep the archers out for now, thankfully. Nice job from Otto the Great to notice that, because if he didn't notice that, Mem, that could have been game over. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was great. It was great. It's not with Fletching. Now he's doing the Fletching. Uh, Fletching matters a lot. Uh, like we were talking, Otto the Great is not going to be behind more than 40 seconds or maybe, yeah, just that. Maybe a minute. Remember, you don't need 800 foot. He can click up already. He's not clicking up. Why not? Mm -hmm. He doesn't. There okay, he goes. He's going up now. There you go. It's another Oof. close game. Okay, this so. It's going to be a long game, Tristan. Yeah, it is very close. I mean, there will be fishing ships now for Otto. If Yadviga can't do too much damage with the archers, a couple knights could potentially clear it up. I do like how Yadviga didn't have to sell any stone. I also like how Yadviga has villagers expanded away from his starting eco. Um, just to, to think about TCs elsewhere. Um, like that right there, like that that area, man, is so important on this map to expand, yeah. which Otto the Great can't do right now. But man, am I curious True. on who these freaking players are. It's just like, it is MBL. It can't be MBL. <laughs> it is doubt. It can't yeah. be doubt. This is yo. No way it's yo. This is bar. Like, my brain is just going a million different directions on who these players are right now. And I am, I'm loving it. This is what Hidden Cup's about. And the quality of the games, like you said, Mem, just so, so good between these two. Yeah. Very important. Now that we see the monastery, can we check if they see already some relics? Fog of War from both sides because relics here for Lithuania is going to have most important impact for sure. So he see one relic and that's it. No more, right? Yep. Wild Blue? Most, so nothing. three of the relics, and I hate Ooh. I hate to describe it this way because yep. I really don't like the fact that people call this map pants, but three of the relics <sighs> are on the belt. So yeah. that's always how it is. So you always have one relic on both of the legs and then you or like where the pockets would be. And then you have three relics on the belt. So that's the way you think about it with okay. relics on this map. Okay. Since, since you know, since you know, Tristan, that I usually cast in my channel, right? Now I understand why I see those pants emoticons in the chat. Thank you so much. You could have told me before <laughs> casting together. I love you yeah. too, Tristan. Now I got the context. <laughs> Thank you. After three hours for explaining the pants. Come on, Tristan, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> we we worked so hard I on was, that, I, and we, it really was. I really was like, what is those fans doing there? What what is this doing with the AOE? And now, okay, I got it, man. So noob, this guy. I am. <laughs> go on, go on, Tristan. I didn't know, uh, man. I well, was like, why did he put the pants there? Okay, GG. Explain the pants. Well, we got we got knights Explain. here now, and armors in and bloodlines. Now we'll see if how the crossbow micro looks here for Yadviga. The micro looks very good so far. It did kind of run into the knights as I said that though. And the low numbers of crossbows getting their value, I would say, but will likely get picked off by the two new knights. So nice job there from Otto. Otto is alive, but Otto is only on one TC. And right now, Yadviga is up to three town centers and is starting to spam those villagers. Yeah, Blue is fine. And Blue is, did, did a really good job. The Knights is still all alive. He can now heal them. It's true that he's going really quick for the Relics Red, which is very nice. Can be really good. I wonder if he's going to go Fist Traps even there because they are cheaper yeah. for Italians. And it can be important if he has the water. Why not, right? You can go for a Fist Boom with Italians it there, really. So I spoke I spoke to uh, some players before the, who aren't in the main event who are really good. And one of them said... I'm really curious what the meta looks like on Bay because in 2024, a lot of players will go crazy with fist traps, with fishing ships. Yeah. But that's not everybody in Hidden Cup, right? Like a player yeah. like Barrels or Ganji, the Black Forest guys, they would be doing 100%. it. 100%. I'm not seeing that yeah. from Otto. So uh, it could, if you know the players and, and their, their love of fist traps, like Viper, for example, loves his fist traps. You know, you might want to look for that here. But I'm not, I don't think Otto's that type of player. I really don't. I think Otto is more of a standard player. Yeah, but these Italians, gonna... uh, it's Italians, Tristan. Will yeah. make sense to yeah. do them. No? I mean, I, I think so. I agree. Anyway. Well, I think, Fort but I think, man, he's going to go, right. he's going to fish trap, but he's going to fish trap with the seven fish he has. And then some players will make it. more fishing ships for more fish traps. That's the difference. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, he has resources to make the, the next TC. He's going to make it or not. He has to probably do it. I think that's a situation shop in the minimap that uh, the fish traps are happening now. And probably that on the left is a situation shop for blue. There you go. Yep. Because his opponent has a lot of archers. But uh, uh, if blue is not doing some damage now, red is going to have a huge economy advantage. Uh, yeah, really. It's four centers. Yeah, Viga missing yeah, so really. horse collar really... 
really hurts to not have horse color with this many farms. It is something that you'll probably see, but that is an upgrade that when the game's going to go late, you really need to have a bit earlier. So that doesn't help for Yadviga right now, but um, two relics, four TCs. I mean, the Vill lead should continue to grow for Yadviga as the villagers want their gold back, man, but they're <laughs> boxing down the walls right now. <laughs> yeah. Is this is this really recorded games? Because uh, you just say it and... Horse color, man. Horse color. <laughs> he did it round. Yeah, well, I, I mean, okay. it's, it's definitely, it's definitely not. Don't worry, they're not listening to us here. That should know, be an upgrade that they notice. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But the thing is that usually this rarely happen. When we say something, it's happened the opposite. So we're having some. Uh, yeah. Good... Oh, the mango is shot there. It's amazing. Whoa! Now he noticed a lot. Look at the army numbers. And remember, mobility here matters a lot. What you do here, Tristan? Now that you have seen that you killed so many, time to push. Because right now, of course, they don't see what we do. But mm -hmm. we know that Otto the Great should do something else. Or not. If, if, this so is, if this is a player... Like, the way Otto the Great has played this, that is an invitation for Otto to go for a middle siege workshop. Like, Otto is probably going to make a bunch more army and really try and control that middle area of the map. Uh, we'll see. Right now, expanding to town centers... Uh, taking some more golden stone with that. But, man, what a game. Five TCs. It is a pleasure. Five TCs. Oh, my goodness. Five TCs. And TCs everywhere, right? Like, just spanning all across the <clears throat> the leg um, of the bay here. It's so... I think it's just underrated, man. I think this is underrated. I think yeah. more players on this map should go to, like, five, six, seven TCs. Because the game always seems to go late. And you want to protect different areas at all times yeah and then <clears throat> sorry what civilization you prefer here we didn't talk about that like in the late mm, game true. because we saw yesterday lead uh, italians versus the mongols honestly i think hazards and genoese cross women as we saw yesterday they are insane combination really yeah yeah i insane agree i think Ita i think italians with that exact combination are really strong. I think Lithuanian skirms, um, and, and like I think Halb skirm hand cannon, and you just make your own hussars. You you don't put the gold into knights. Could be an idea. Wow, look how fast Yadviga getting all those monks on different targets. Very well played. Otto wow. kills his own monk there. Not only that, that's a lot of knights not from only the how Italian fast the monks. The, the, the Lithuanian player has... This this boom is not normal now. 110 villagers, his opponent 87, doing a castle in the middle of yep. the map. He's going to go up to Imperial. Yep. He's not going up because he doesn't have the buildings. The, 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 the transition to Imperial is going to be insane. But the beauty from Auto the Great is that he has Italians. He doesn't need a thousand foot. He can just buy and probably blue. He's going to go up to Imperial quicker even than red. Yeah, oh maybe. God, there yeah, you go. It's very possible. I think it's actually going to be the, pretty much the same, same time, time here, man. Yeah. Look yeah. at this. I mean, this is so fitting for this series, man. The fact that it's 2-2. Two, two, yeah. The fact that this series has been so close. The fact that in Game 5 we would have these imp times is just so incredible to me. Now, on the topic of Genoese Crossbow, you need the castles for that. And Genoese Crossbow produce rather slow. So if you want to go Genoese, you're likely not going to build castles towards the middle. It's going to be more defensive. And we have a, a very centralized castle here from Otto, which to me makes me think he wants to make trebuchets and not Genoese. Yeah, well, he has to. Do, he will have to do it because being the castle yeah. there, he need to keep that castle alive. Otherwise, he's going to have problems because we're talking that we prefer Italians, but as we were telling, uh, with that combo. Otherwise, uh, Lithuanians... With how many relics? Well, two relics. It's nothing fancy. You know, it's going to have maximum plus four. So right now, Lithuanians doesn't have any extra powerful units here, to be honest. Don't know what you think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, you do have that window. If there's no Genoese, the knights are do a good job at sniping trebs, potentially. We have another castle right next to this now for Otto. And stone walls from Otto. This is really smart, man. If you wall this up, the mobility of the calf can't be as much of an issue. And all the attack from your opponent will go right in towards your castles. This is really good. I like it a lot. Two castles in the same spot. He's confident that he's going to have a good uptime, which it's going to be because he's only 
only five seconds behind. Ladies and gentlemen, people in the chat, who has the advantage here? Now you have to put the name, Otto or Jadwiga. Who has the advantage? It's so even. Now you have to decide. And we want to see the spam, right, Mr. Tristan? We need yeah. to see the spam. Yeah, who has the advantage here? I, I don't, I, I, see I don't know. People, like, I want to say... I don't know. I want to say Otto, but then I'm seeing all these knights looping their way around, and <sighs> things are still pretty exposed over there. This is tricky stuff, and we will have Yadviga with range units coming out as well, like skirmishers, which could be so good with the Lithuanians. But certainly in the Treb War, it is an advantage right now for Otto the Great, and that's why he went for the yeah. double castle stack. That should be really well, uh, I mean, good things for him as he sees the Knights. He actually gets in close. He starts the conversions. And he will not get any, but he's chasing these Knights away, man, but I don't think these Knights... Will offer too much for Yadviga right now. No, no, no. I like I like your viewers, Tristan, because they confuse my my. Um, I know my English is not the best, but guys, I didn't say who you want to win. You know, I said who has the advantage, <laughs> and they put all auto. You know, <laughs> you know, they put all auto. You know, like I said, who has the advantage, man? It's the game is so even. You know, but they want auto to win. It's pretty clear. You know, pretty clear there. Anyway, he's going back now with the trebuchet. The knights are coming. The two castles there in that position. It's really smart. It's really smart. Ooh, it's really. Works. It's really smart. A bit sloppy there from Otto. He did send the Treb yeah. too far forward as he was distracted. So that hurts him. But, you know, he's getting more Monk upgrades. He's waiting for more Trebs. And these players are going to meet in the middle. Now, I would like to just apologize to these poor deer that are sitting in the middle of this battle. Now, Mapu's, like, pointing out things that actually feel relevant to the game. But, Mapu, please, look to the middle of the... Yeah, I mean... This is their home, and they're having a battle right over top of these guys. Look at the treb shots fly over them. <laughs> I mean, they're probably terrified. You well did. Man, they don't, I know you, oh, didn't, you they don't know what to do bit. with that, do you? <laughs> no, no, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to move on, you know, but I don't know what to say, yeah? But... <laughs> but you know, you have good skills, because... It's very hard to mute me. And you did it, you know? You got me a speechless. I was like, what happened with the deers, you know? Okay, but now I got it. Anyway, 21. What Whoa. a hold. What a hold. The ball what a hold? No. are killing the what? Trebs. The Knights can also... Look at the army numbers. This castle. Yadviga's winning this fight, man. The big time, actually. Look at the military numbers. Otto the Great is suffering now. Three castles. Obviously, you can still spam there, but... The monks are going to be crucial here. The monks from yeah. blue are going to be crucial because he need to take those bomber cannons down. That castle is just going to be down almost immediately. So basically, he lost 650 stone in, in what, 30 seconds? Otto and never had don't know what happened here. army there. Blue got nothing. He had like knights that yeah. didn't have many upgrades. He had a couple Genoese, but he needed a bigger mass of Genoese crossbow. And unfortunately for him, he didn't have his bomber cannons in position because he has to back them away. If he moves them forward, they will get converted by the monks there from Yadwiga. And Yadwiga converts another cannon, has the skirms, has good upgrades. Oh now he loses a cannon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the important part. That's but the important part. The monks are crucial here. Tristan, the monks are crucial here. Obviously, those trebles are there. He's going to lose another castle, but we were talking. You need... To mass Genoese crossbowman, and right now the numbers from blue for Otto the Great are really, really low. He's gonna lose that castle for yes. sure. And if he loses the other, his economy. What he's doing? Another one at the back. Wow! How he, much he stone he has? The Otto the Great. He's a wow. stubborn, no, stubborn no. Otto here. Otto refuses to give up this middle area. He feels if he loses it, he loses the game. But he is losing ground, and he still needs more. Like I would really like to see Hussar here. A couple Hussars. Yeah. Could Very really help Another monks. thing, th that Italians got heresy. I don't think they I have, have no clue. While I have no clue, I, okay. I, I, uh, it's one of those things. Like I think Italians they don't. researching heresy would would surprise me. But you're right. Maybe you consider it if you have the gold. That way, your opponent can't get the conversions. It's really expensive, though. The castle still needs to stay up. Right now, Otto is trying to just convert his opponent's monks. So he doesn't lose the cannons. He's actually done a phenomenal job, but still needs more army than this, man. Just monks. Yeah, he's crazy. Just bombard cannons. He's, he's crazy. not going to do it. 
Yeah, I don't know if we can see if we can see the conversions done here because I think this is really important. You have to click in that panel, Mapu. I don't know if you know, but if not, you click the panel where the relics are. You click it, and then there's the conversions. 12-12 for both. The mods yeah. are having 12-12. Really big deal here. It's, it's, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, we can go back if you want. And and yeah, but he's pushing there. And with the monks, he's just stopping out of the great to take the trebuchet. He cannot use the bomber cannons officially. Remember, bomber cannons that are cheaper for Italians, but useless right now. Yeah, if if Otto can hold this with with some light cav, like like just 10, 15 light cav mixed in, big bomber cannon shots there, I actually believe he can be okay. That castle there defends him, so that night raid will actually lead to very little. His economy is is actually looking better with food behind this. He's making another castle behind this. Wow. Yeah, but I don't he's know how he's not dead yet. Tristan. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Huh? The Trebs needed to advance forward here for Yadviga. Yadviga was maybe distracted with some other things and is finally going to advance forward again with those Trebs. And now the monks are going to be needed again to get conversions on the cannons. And the monks are chasing. The monks get pulled back, but the Trebs and cannons okay. for Yadviga taking down castle number four, is it? How, how many can yeah. he build? <laughs> well, he can build whatever he wants. You know why? Because right now Yadviga has only... 166 villages and he just lost eight. He was up to 174 villages, you know. 174 oh, villages, incredible, you know. And that explains it. It's crazy, you know. It's playing everything right. Not a lot of farming though for for blue and Jadviga. As you were talking, it's not having a super extra farming. He's pushing a lot, and I have the feeling that you were right with your predictions before. This sounds me more and more like a barrels gameplay to me, like this kind of. Very aggressive player here, he's pushing, but not controlling the macro as good as the super top, top, top. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Sense, I mean, okay, you know? Otto's not going to have, Otto's not going to have many villagers oh, for much longer here. Uh, they've just gone to slaughter. That actually helps Otto, so he has more population. But this is a yeah, very good, like, arena or Black Forest style middle push here from Jed Vega. It's like, take the position, castle the position, continue to push. Never lose the snowball ever. And Yadwiga's up to 200 pop. The final castle will fall here for Otto. And if you don't have a castle wow. with the Italians, I don't think you have a chance against the Lithuanian wow. Cavalier. Uh, pretty crazy. I think he has lost what? Uh, Tristan, four castles there in the middle. Probably let's take the battle here and then we will try to come back. Cavaliers are coming. Yeah, a lot. Maybe five, maybe. Cavaliers, skirmishes, many trebuchets, bombard cannons as well. Those are going to be fully upgraded now, finally. Cavaliers. And the push is real now. 57 army. I think it's the right time now for Red to finish the game. Tristan, but the map is really yeah. big and he's doing another castle at the back. Otto the Great. The, the issue right now for Otto is that you now have, there is an open path directly to your eco. If Cavalier get into your eco and it's starting to happen, you are gonna take massive losses. Uh, and, and Yadwiga is protected with castles and is protecting the Trebs at all times. And man, I, you see how many monks are constantly targeted on units? I'm really leaning towards a Ganji, a Barls, a play, players who rely on monks a little bit more than, than maybe some of the others, constantly. Those red monks are finding new targets every time I'm looking well, there. Think, yeah. Yeah, I think Biles could be... I think Ganji actually played yesterday, in my opinion. But still. Yeah, yeah, maybe know, it was Patrick or yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think so. I, I agree with that. in uh, Because I think that was the guess yesterday in your channel, right? It was Ganji, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Anyway, yeah. look at those ratings there. Still ready more. Now he doesn't have that many as you mentioned. But... He still have good numbers of army and also in the queue is 27 Hussars. You know, but would you prefer 27 Hussars or 28 Cavaliers? I think the answer is clear, right? Oh my God. Um, well, you know, if there's 20 Genoese crossbow too, I think it's very strong. Like True. what Otto's doing now is this composition that he's actually going for is really strong. But the problem is his eco is wide open. Now he's going to get some raids in here, which is good. But... um. We do see Pilot a big fight Whoa. right now from Otto. There's a big fight happening. The Hussars finally are here. The Genoese crossbowmen are here as well. The monks will die. Some bombard cannons will die. And the Genoese crossbowmen are there to kill the Cav. I, I think oh, it's but tough for but, Otto but from Tristan. here. 
Yeah. Oh god. But, but those those Genoese don't have the upgrades. They don't have Pavis. They are not the lead. They are missing the armor. They are missing yep. many upgrades. Yep. Well, those yep. Cavaliers are gonna be Paladins in a moment. He's having all the upgrades red. He's pushing there and also raiding in the farmers as well. He's looking really rough, and I really believe that this is gonna be the GG very soon. At least that is ACCM oh, because look at the score, it's 3,000 and then we are going to drive into another direction again, who you never know, the Bombarcanos are going to go down. This is game over, Tristan, because over. there's no map at all, it's game over, right? Don't want to yeah. be anti-hype, but... It feels like it. Whoa. It feels, it feels like Yadviga's got a memp. I mean, Yadviga's killed 100 villagers, sure there's some random raids happening, but it is something that Yadviga is able to focus on consistently throughout Imp. Yadviga has had this this push. Also, Paladin was canceled, by the way. Canceled the Paladin upgrade oh. to save some resources, which I don't, I actually okay. don't hate. But continuous push, continually taking down things with these trebs. Can we get a double click on these trebs and see just how much they've accomplished? Like, there should be a stat for those trebuchets there to tell us the situation with, with how much damage they have done. They have dealt 52,000 HP of damage. That is, uh, what is that, 10 castles worth, depending? That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, he, he just decided to go to the Wing of Hussars. Okay. Interesting there. But still, the problem, is that, the problem for Blue is that he is still constantly attacking, raiding. This game is confusing me again so much for who they can be. <laughs> It's crazy. JJ Cole, called. man. Um, called. Whoa. It, it, it was looking that Otto the Great was going to be in a better position in the middle, but he couldn't do the job. Honestly, it's your viewer's fault. When I made the question, they all spam Otto and they they bring him all the bad luck, uh, Tristan. All the bad luck. I'm really since that question, he started to lose all the ground, man, completely. I think, honestly, if you is. look at the military, this kind of tells a lot of the story. You can see the conversions yeah. there. You can see the total KD there. I think that y Yadviga just took the better trades in Imp, and that decided it. Because economy, it, it, look. It's the same. Auto actually no, collected no, more resources. The, the, in general, it's very close. So I think it was no, Yadviga's food? monks and the unit control, which was so, so strong yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, because Otto the Great, that was 20 villages behind at some point. Look at his echo. Yeah. He can't catch up Crazy. even a, a, even ahead. It was, I don't know. He started laming here. Look at the replays. I love this, man. Good job with the production. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, this is how it all started. It's crazy. If you just saw the end, you wouldn't yeah. have figured that it started here. Otto the Great, I, I think he really wanted to make it messy for when it got to moments like this, because this is more of a standard situation. And in this situation, this fight was all Yadviga. We had the monks getting conversions. Of course, the knights Yadviga has actually had upgrades, actually had the extra attack. And those are just some leftover units there from, from Otto the Great. And Otto the Great's going to be left thinking, should I have built safe castles? I think with the Italians, if you're building safe castles, you get to the Genoese mass, but we never got to see the Genoese mass because he instead chose to try and go for the Treb War. I think this is a player mem in Auto the Great that is not comfortable with the safe castles, that prefers that fast imp style Treb War. And that, again, will make people think a little bit who would do that of the big names we have here in Hidden Cup 5. I'm really not sure. Also, we have to give the credit to Jadwiga that he never let him mash. He was quite quick with the Treb yes attacking yes. with the monks. He was very, very active. I mean, when he reached the imp, I don't remember he stopped in a single moment. Not that, not even point. 30 seconds, you know? Yeah. So he didn't have time to mass or, or do anything else. And he got the monks earlier as well. It was a great play, honestly, for Jadwiga at the end. Very, very good. I think it was on, on his end, really. Don't think Otto the Great did big mistakes because Agreed. Jadwiga forced him to Jadwiga forced him to play that way. And the beauty of the situation we find ourselves in, people, yes, Jadwiga's ahead, 3-2. But Jadwiga has to win on Otto the Great's home maps. And on these maps, Ooh. which have been only land, yeah. the maps that have been only land, which I guess has just been one, uh, or two, sorry, Otto the Great has oh, won. 4-2, yeah. 
Yeah, hidden forts in Arabia. So I think we're prepped. I think we're in a good position to potentially go to a deciding game seven. But obviously, we got to jump into game number six first. Let's do that. Will it be slopes or will it be mud flow for out of the great? And what civilization would he choose to play? Both players still have their first picks of Chinese available. And here is our answer. We have Gurjaras against Malians Ooh. here on out of the great's home map on slopes hmm. memp <clears throat> i'm thinking about the civilization right now i think i prefer malians here they looks to me really really smooth to play honestly with the cheaper discount for the wood with the extra bonus uh, with the goal gujara has the bonus with the herd balls on the mill that doesn't yeah. feel an old to me and honestly even for the late game uh, well similar option right because camels are very strong for both. Different up bonus, different upgrades, but similar options for, for the late game. The Betos, well, the other got the, the unique units for the, the Gujaras as well. The mm -hmm. Frisbees, I like to call them, you know? So, I don't know. I prefer Malians because I think the economy is just better. Yeah, I think, I think the big thing with Malians is maybe not necessarily the economy, but they just have more options, right? Like, they can make knights. More and knights. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Gurjaras yeah. can't make yeah. knights, you know. But I will say, like, you know, I, I, I am quite an opinionated character, and there are some units in this game that I just simply do not like. And one unit which bothers me, which I feel is so annoying in so many ways, is the Shravamsha Rider. And I think if, if Otto the Great can get Shravamsha's running in and around Yadviga's economy, Otto the Great is the perfect player for that because of how freaking tough those things are to kill with raids. So if this gets messy and the base is open, I think the Shravamsha Rider for the Gurjaras could actually end up being quite strong here. Okay, so uh, um, Otto the Great needs to be aggressive and need to be aggressive from the start. He's already going there with the camel trying to maybe lame the boar. Now he's not sending bullets forward. I mean, it's important also go to the, uh, I like to call to the flanks, you know, to the side, to the sides with the, with the short fish, with the extra deers as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. It's, it's a good point about those uh, riders. It, it's still, I feel that Malians here is so versatile, really. I, I like them a lot. In general, I think yeah. they are very powerful in many maps and here, they are so smooth to play, really. I think with the Gujaras, well, you need to play just perfect. Yeah, I, I think where the Malians can struggle here, though, like I think what typically makes them strong is when they go a combination of knights and archers, or like camels and archers in Castle Age. And you always do have to think twice about, as we see Otto the Great get housed at 15 population. <clears throat> <clears throat> um nbl confirmed <laughs> but uh you know i, I th do think you have to think twice about the crossbow play because it's just tricky with the possibility of this revamption rider um so i agree okay. i think malians are superior i think that Otto the great is gonna have to play you know at, at like 110 percent if yadwiga comes here at 100 percent. but with slopes there's there's lots of options and lots of ways you could pressure an attack i think the potential is there Okay, let's see. Let's see what is what is going to happen. Definitely, it's going to be very interesting. The loom being done a little bit earlier that he probably he wanted. I don't think it's a big deal, Tristan, because he's, you know, with the civilizations, what, 18, 19 population up, 20 maximum. Yeah. So he should be about yeah. to go up soon. So it's going to be a big deal. And then into what? Into scouts? Maybe that, that we guys is going to go some militias, two militias, the, the French uh, rush, you know, like... Or we'll go scout. The map is big. I think a scout probably and having mobility is the best option, no? Yeah, I, I agree. Now, Mem, I want to talk about something specific with the Gurjaras here. So okay, the let's go. So right now there are the starting sheep or turkeys or geese, whatever, inside of that mill. Okay. Now, I personally feel as though at this point, instead of seeding farms you should start to pull the turkeys out of the mill, or geese, sorry, and start to eat them. And I think there are players okay. that also agree with that. Um, for example, I know that like Doubt and Tato, those two players are always doing that. I'm not sure where some of the other players in our scene, the main event, stand on it now. But the idea is you get the food boost early, 
And then right here, you actually start to eat them. So I think that does eliminate, you know, it's just something to bring up. It is interesting to see that Otto the Great is choosing not to do that here with the Gujaras. Okay. But maybe if you don't have deers to push, but since he's pushing now the deers and also you can even move, maybe you don't need it. And that's why the reason, because the mm -hmm. map, this is a custom map, right? It's not like the standard map then. It's not that, Arabia. Uh, yeah. you, it's not Arabia, you know, here you have more resources, right? So, yeah, and then yeah. if you can take those extra, you will have those extra ships forever during the game, which is nice as well. Mm -hmm. If you can keep it. It's a fair tricky, point. You know, but, but, and it's a fair point also what you mentioned, just in case of the, the players, right? That they are, you know, uh, they are used to do some of that as to be stable and going to be stable as well. With what we expected, right? Yep, Absolutely. Yeah, and, and okay. I think Otto we'll the Great is 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 realizing that it's going to be a bit awkward to produce too many scouts. Actually, I think I'm wrong. I think there is a stable up at home there, so it's going to be a scout war from here. Neither player has taken a risk to go to the sides just yet. Ooh, is that it? Oh, that's the deer underneath the TC. Never mind. Forgot he had the deer there. Um, I'm you know, Mem from I'm here, surprised. usually Tristan? it's a wall game, on. and we're not seeing that. Oh, I was going to say that. When I said I'm surprised and I told you go on, I was like, now they're starting to make the walls, but this is really rare, rare, sorry, and weird that there's no wall still now. Like nothing. Just now blue is starting. Usually the players are wall completely at this point. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm more in a three I, I two think, already. I do wonder how much of that is the uh qualifiers versus the main event though, too. I would expect main event players to play a bit safer, but the thing the best players have is they have a lot of confidence in their quick walls and their damage control, and also their attacks here. So, like, Yadwiga going out, being aggressive, Otto the Great immediately just defends beautiful quick walls here from Otto and doesn't allow this attack to do anything, at least just yet. Tristan, do you think that the players at this point, when they have played five games together, they might be guessing who they are each other? I, I believe so, and it will be fun. So right? we don't get to find out who who they think they're playing against now, but at the very end of the tournament, every player's guess on who they think they played will be data that we have. And I, I guess in theory, the more games you play against somebody, the more you're going to have to guess from, right? Okay. Yeah, because they have faced already many times, but let's see. He's going to see now the first villager down or not. Otto the Great need to have the initiative. We were talking about this. I think that villager is going to be... No, it's not going to be down. You need to go back and now pull a farm there with that villager. Very low HP. He's going back. But this is what you don't want. Oh, he's being attacked at home. Let's see what happened there. Yep. Mr. We do have an attack there. We Mr. do have an attack okay. there. The villager is super weak. Otto is going to go back in, and we don't have a prepped wall there from Yadwiga. And that is going to be a dead villager. And the scouts yeah. are weak, but they do get away after killing a villager. Nice find there for Otto the Great. This is what we said he needed. A little bit of a lead here against the Malians. And with those quick walls, you can tell who they are not. Because that wasn't <laughs> very smooth. I mean, it, it, it's true, right, Tristan? It wasn't super smooth, that quick wall. I think well, that villager could have, could have been safe, really. <laughs> I mean, no? in theory, but I, mean, I think at this point, th these have been long games. <laughs> You know, he probably did. Yeah, they're tired. They're the tired. Is gonna have they're the guts. Tired. I'm just, I, I, I agree with you. I, I, I would say the same thing. I was thinking the same thing, but I also have to present <laughs> the other side. But yeah, okay. it's probably not. Okay. It's definitely there is no world where Yadviga is Viper. There's no world that like that much is confirmed. I wasn't thinking about Viper. Think about Hera, or thinking about like <laughs> any other players here. Well, you know, the, 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 the fastest APM players would they lose that value, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I still think, I, yeah, I think like so. maybe like Hart, maybe Leary. Yeah. I, I still think we're looking at like a MBL, like Hart something Leary, like Barrels. Yeah, exactly. Or Dow. Yeah, Hart and Leary are super quick in those situations, like super fast yeah. as well. So yeah. let's see. Anyway, they're coming with the battle. Look at now Otto the Great. I think he's doing the good job here. He has two bullets more. He forces also 15 seconds idle TC. And now he has a lot of farming. This is probably the situation he wants to have. But then you check resources for Jadwiga. And Malian's economy is really smooth. I don't know if he should be doing the market, which he's not doing right now. Yeah, this, well, is, this is a lot of army from Otto, right? Like, And it's 
it's an awkward army. It's it's an auto army. We have the starting camel. We have the the four spearmen, one archer, four scouts. I mean, we we're seeing this in Hidden Cup Five, but man, but a lot of people they see this when they play against the AI after they watch the stream. Yeah. Like this is a really tough army to deal with because there's so many different things mixed in into it, and oh, all of a sudden, red... auto's in on the wood line. Red need the tower here. Red need the tower because I don't think he's gonna have army to stop this. Yes, his army is with fletching, but he has two archers. I don't know. He's gonna be able to stop this. Now he's doing the house, the palisade, just to make me lose bad, and then he's gonna make some nice quick walls. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> I don't mind if to lose, but it's fine. There, yeah. <laughs> if there were more archers there, this is devastating for Yadviga. But for now, Yadviga is able to kind of hold. In some ways, there's been some good patience from Otto the Great, though. I spoke a little too soon, but he didn't over invest into his attack too early. Did get some good kills, is controlling the game, which we know is what he likes. But Yadviga with some great defense, man. Yeah. I think like that could have easily led to three or four villagers going down, and he didn't lose a single one. Yeah, it's a very good defense. It's very good play by Red here. And check his resources. His resources are looking so great. Not great. Amazing, because he's on the way to Castle Age. Malian's economy kicking in here. And Yadwiga is on the way to Castle Age. Well, wow. Otto the Great has army, but not an old army to do damage. Look at the numbers, Tristan. 10-8, and you are up to Castle Age. You are fine. Exactly. And, and man, we were saying like that the Gurjaras can be good against the archers with Shravamshas. But you need to click up. You need to be in Castle Age to be able to make the Shravamsha riders. And there's going to be a really good timing here for Yadviga, provided that the you know archers aren't lost to kill with crossbowmen. And, and Yadviga's up 3-2. Everyone wants that game number seven for our entertainment. But this is a position Don't that good. Otto the Great, yeah. it, it, you know, Otto the Great's going to have to find a fight here before castle age if he cannot find one he could be in big trouble yeah but he can't find it why he can't find it because also red is not being greedy and he has double archery range himself he's producing yeah. archers and skirmishes as well he's doing the market and if we focus here red is probably going to kill the army before reaching castle age even tristan and red is yeah, in a really nice in a very good position right now yeah I do, I do actually think in some ways this isn't horrible for Otto though, because he's still trading uh, reasonably well. He's killing just as many archers as he's losing. And he also has kept that army from Yadviga there, right? As opposed to Yadviga being halfway across the map. But I am really curious to see if we see something like tower defense now or what Otto the Great does here. Because when you see Castle Age yeah. and you're down a game, you're instantly like, oof. Uh, what do I but do Tristan. here against Crossbow? And really, not only that, I think this is the civilization that you want to see the, the ballistic right away. Can we check map if he's doing the university or something? Because Malians get the bonus so, so fast, the, the, the ballistic. Yeah. And if he's doing that, yeah. he can dominate. I don't see any university, but not TC either. He's going with the knight. Would you have done the university here? Because it can be... Um, it can be a... I don't know. It's tricky, but... I mean, it's expensive, me, I know, but... I, I'm I'm doing it right because I'm I think it, it's good as well. Um, but I think if you already feel like you have a nice lead, the second TC is what most players at this level are going to do. Um, second TC doing. on that wood line is huge for Yadviga, so that's a really good decision. And the reason for that, Mem, is because a player like Otto has just had two minutes to know where his opponent's pressure is going to come in and know where he needs to defend. And so with that in mind, oh. Yadviga knew he'll probably defend from this. I need to get a lead in another way. And what do you know? Like house walls everywhere. The only vulnerable area was the gold. And there's a tower. Beautiful play. Nice. And now he's doing the university. He has the army in the north. The TC in the south. Another bunch of army, even more in the south, close to blue base. It's playing really, really smooth here. But all being said population auto the great is still a little bit ahead with two villages more so he's still fine and we're gonna have another great game tristan which is what we love what we want this is awesome yeah what that deer is really in the way there what an interesting tc it's not the first time i've seen that member i do remember in the qualifier that some players built their tc on the food now robo is gonna hate me for this but i would love if if it's an easy stat if anyone remembers who built the tcs on the food i'd like to know 
could have been someone who didn't make the main event. Here comes Otto the Great with his army. And Jadwiga is making his way towards the hunt on that side. But he is actually doubling back home with the crossbows that have ballistics. Maybe expecting something as the game will stabilize. It will Oof. go late and boom, crossbows finally get spotted in the middle. Yeah, but also he did the tone watch, which is great. He is going to be harder to surprise him, but he's going to try. Both are kind of attacking each other at the same time, but that knight is yeah, going to yeah, work yeah. like an outpost, you know, so he's completely fine. Let's see those arches. He's coming. He's going to find now that that DC Fog of War. I think he's missing that. He's missing the tone center. Probably Siege Workshop as well. But, but Tristan, look, how great are Malians here? Two TCs, Siege Workshop, University and Ballistic, and you can afford... All that with this civilization is crazy. Mm -hmm. It's really crazy. I, and I, now, ag Otto I agree is with you as well. But yeah, I'd like to point out though that despite all these bonuses, Otto the Great is the only one that has killed villagers. Otto the Great has, you know, as elite skirm coming in. Ballistics has been in for Yadviga for a long time, and only now are we really seeing those crossbows take an engagement. And look where the look yeah. with the micro here from Otto the Great, and look at where the engagement is again, Mem. Otto the Great has made it so Yadviga's engagement is on the <sighs> other side of the map from where Yadviga actually wants to be. I am really impressed with Otto the Great here. Ooh. Oh yeah, but at the end he lost two villains there now. Ballistic kicking in, finally doing some damage. The skirmishes are coming. Population is still now, a, well, a little bit more ahead for Yadviga. He's going to take another villain. No, he will need a 30C and he's doing the 30C there. Otto the Great, there you go. This is why they do these TCs here. Usually the following is another TC if the goal is there or the stone, which is great. A lot harder to rate, but still, uh, after all these battles, Tristan and what we are talking, I don't know who really has advantage here. It looks like Yadviga has four villains more. Okay, but Bozo as well for blue. It's, it's Look, at this, Look at this micro. Look at this micro. This micro is insane. This micro is insane. He cleared up the army on the front. He says, screw your siege, which he, he did back in the Arabia game. A beautiful splits, beautiful moves. And uh, <clears throat> maybe I, I, I spoke too much, but still... Not me. anymore. <laughs> oh, okay, well, I well, mean, it, 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 it was cast the curse. a good it, engagement. It's fine. He's now yeah. redeeming himself for all the people here with more splits. And uh, he's going to need something <laughs> to deal with the siege. <laughs> Did you notice that it happens all the time, man? We can't do this, you know, because it's happened all the time. My goodness. I hate when that happens and it happens all the time. Crazy. Anyway, but 83 population, man, 80 population. Go on. Tell me. Remember, like, how this series has gone, right? On, like, the really mixed maps where there's water, Yadviga takes it. But where it's just land, it's all been about auto. And right now, Otto finding more kills. Otto is going to have his own siege. I, I am seeing the comfort that Otto has on this type of map. It's just very evident to me that he feels he feels fine here. And yet Viga, I think, really trying to force the issue right now. Like, really, like, okay, big numbers, big numbers through the middle. Let's do it that way. Let's see how it pans out here. Because if Otto okay. could defend okay. with one or two Meganels, this could be insane. Let's focus on that. MBL is, in my opinion, the best player in the Mangoros battles. Yes. I yes, don't know what agreed. you think. The best agreed. player in the Mangoros battles. And now we're going to have some Mangoros battles going on. There's a Mangoros coming. Blue is going. Red is going to be there. And he's saving but by a little. That wasn't the smoothest play, but he got the lag. So maybe the oh, lag God. of the Mangoros player. Okay. Ooh, this. Oh, man. There's action all over. And right now, then, even if you if are MBL someone... or whoever you are, it's difficult. Tell me. If someone is better at micro than you, you know what you do? You make more units. <laughs> and that is what Yadviga has turf. done here with this seed. Yeah, Yadviga has six mangonels with the seventh on the way right now and has this massive force here on both TCs. This needs to be dealt with. This will be the biggest engagement of the game. Otto is expanding to the other side, which is smart. But if you don't defend these TCs, you're going to have a really big problem to here see. if you're auto. And here we go. Here we go. Coming from the other side. How does this micro go? Big moments. Big moments. Okay, big well, shots from Otto the Great. I, the micro I am continues. Am I am I, okay. Honestly, it's sick from both of them. It's sick micro yeah. from both of them. But Otto's going to defend because it is Otto the Great. Oh, my God. The the look great. at the micro there. Yeah, well, wow. blue 
He's taking everything, Tristan. Look how he take all the crossbows. You can see the big badaboon there. And right now, army numbers, auto the great, 27, Jadwiga 8. Time in a momentum now, so 500 the stone. Yeah, I MBL mean. Uh, like, if we needed yeah, yeah, yeah. another I mean, reason, if we needed yeah, something yeah, yeah. else in this game, after the supremacy and the awkwardness and the vil fighting and the laming, this is MBL. And if I am wrong, if we as a community are wrong, we are going to be shocked at the conclusion. <laughs> that was insane, okay. dude. It was six mangonels on the field for Yadwiga. It went down to two. Beautiful play. Yeah, he has now three because he did another five mangonels there. And we forget to mention how expensive the mangonels are. They're very yeah. expensive. One of the most expensive units in Castle, right? So it's crazy. And now blue, five Oh, the mango nails. Okay. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Oh God. Okay, MBL uh, is gone now. It's not MBL. Yeah, it's, it's, not not MBL. MBL it's not MBL. MBL not confirmed. It's not MBL. MBL is gone. He lost all the mango nope. here. What the hell, Tristan? <laughs> Stop killing this, man. <laughs> not confirmed, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> he lost every <laughs> with the mangonets now. It's, got <laughs> it's insane, well, man. You know, oh I think God. I think at this point both players both players <laughs> needed a reality check, right? They were so comfortable going with Siege, they both needed a reality check so they could switch into something else. And that oh god, that something else is gonna be knights for Yadwiga. And knights can be fantastic here in combination with Siege, but the Gurjaras can also mix in their camels against this yeah check check the wood for jadwiga here if he just sell he go imperial right now look at the resources he has yeah yeah you know? i think man when he sees this imperial. castle if he sees this castle he is he gonna drop it. his own oh yeah he's gonna go yeah. up to imp anyways yeah he's already thinking yeah, yeah. about it and he does sell the wood you call that man he's gonna buy some food he's gonna click up this imp oh. time could give jadwiga the series that is actually the the perfect thing to see it's like you're building your own castle you're already imping, and your opponent doesn't know you're build a castle, and your opponent isn't imping. This could be so good for Yadviga. Yeah, and being Malian's uh, Tristan, right? When his opponent is going to go up to Imperial, you know, or better say it, when Red is going to be in Imperial, having chemistry in what, in 15 seconds? Like so fast? You're going to have Bombard Cannons probably on the field and traps while your opponent is not yet in Imperial. Yeah, it's, re it's really that. tricky. And, you it's know, the so other hard. thing, too, is if you don't have knights, if you don't have a unit that can dive underneath castles to take trebs, it's a little bit of a problem there, too. Now, I do think the way Otto is building up, Otto has expanded his eco nicely. He's going to have a castle on the left side protecting him so he can't be broken there. He's made military buildings in different areas. Otto is not going to go away quietly. But a lot of this gold that's accessible for these guys, the gold and the stone on slopes, is through the middle okay and i think that whoever wins the treb war is going to have the ability to make a lot of gold units yeah i, I know there's small insight here tristan when you are with three tcs and your opponent has five and you are only 10 villages behind and going up to imperial faster your macro has been insane with yeah in 40 minutes not even three minutes i don't see in total Red macro yeah, it's, it's, in this game has, has been brutal. Has been really I agree. Good. I mean, Dude, it's, like already. these guys are so good on Arabia. They're so, so good. And obviously this yeah. is slopes, but on Arabia style maps, it's impressive to me. I do just wonder if the lack of army right now for Yadwiga could be a concern. This castle here, that protects the area, but that's not a castle that is necessarily a good sign. Um... You're going to have Otto build a castle over there to kind of gain control of that hill. This army from Otto can run into Yadviga's eco. There's no army to stop what Otto the Great has right now. Yeah, I will do... I, having Ballistic, Tristan, if I was red, I would do a comb, just a couple of towers to avoid all this. It's only skirmishers. You know, if you make a couple of towers, having Ballistic, having Chemistry, is going to defend really well. But he's not doing it. He just prefers to wall a little bit. But a couple of towers will, will kill. It's true that also those knights are going to kill it. So it's fine. And yeah, he doesn't have a lot of farming, but being that fast in him, let's see now if he can take the castles down. The problem is that blue has a lot of farming one more time, and now red is not microing that well, and probably gonna lose pretty much everything. Uh, Tristan, yeah, this is an amazing help, fight. But no army. 
Woo! Yeah, this is an amazing fight. Cool. And out of the great, out of the great, clears up everything here. We've got ranged units around. And the Chakrams also are a pretty helpful unit against what we're seeing here. And Yadviga skyrocketed to Imp, had the faster Imp time, but hasn't been able to really get the army out yet because the plan was all to go for hand cannons. I mean, man, man, <laughs> the, the series continues yeah. to deliver. And believe me when I say, Yadviga's not finished because Yadviga's going to be able to trep at the middle continuously. Hand cannons are being masked. And hand cannon is, is going to be really strong if it can get, you know, going with bombard cannons in the middle area too. So I, I just, I don't know how this game is going to go. I'm just going to say again, Otto seems to be in his comfort zone, man. He's got good population. He's got yep. units and TSTs everywhere. And he, it feels and like he's been here a thousand times before. Listen. And Castle's everywhere. He has one on the left, one on the right. He's there. He has all the camels, heavy camels in two seconds. He's even sending an armored elephant that helps a lot. And now who has no army to take those armored elephants is Red. Red right now has a lot of this, but sadly for him, well, the hand cannon is going to help. I'm going to take it to camels and with the bomber cannon, it's going to be fine. Oh my God, as you mentioned, who's winning this game? I I'm not sure anymore, but I really believe that at some point, that we will need some cavalry. I don't know. Even Farimba Lightcaps yeah, can be great, actually, you know? Yeah, we got Lightcap coming in. I mean, man, there's no shortage of food right now for Yadviga. We got a Trebor on the right, which is kind of unprotected for both, so we have to keep an eye there. We still then have the ongoings towards the middle, where we, we have a Bombard Cannon, and I, I mean, there's too much to look at. The population's higher for Otto the Great right now. They're both still spamming villagers with 150 vills, but on this side, Yadviga loses the Treb, and heavy camels are underneath the castle there. The middle area is happening too. We, we've got the middle trebs and the middle bombard cannons. That treb will survive. But the bombard cannons and the trebs in the middle are massively important. And now everything for oh auto God. is going down. And this to me feels like it could swing either way. We have a win for auto on the right. But we've got some big problems through the middle right now. Yeah, big problems in the middle, and then all your economy is there, but you need to save. I think Red need to save this, and he's gonna save it. He takes the traps, and he now saved Bomber with the Bomber there. Cannon. Well, yeah, if he stabilizes he gotta, he gotta in this area, and he's gonna and be fine. What? It's not, this isn't it. We got the North as well. Uh, like, we are just gonna be skipping around no. people. You are gonna get dizzy looking at all the different areas that these players are fighting for, and it is gonna be continuous, either damage control in one area or pushing in the next. But I mean, Mem. We talked hand cannons before. It's now 25 of them. I think handling those hand cannons is going to be a big problem right now for Otto the Great. Yeah. Oh, he has been playing all the times without Satrias. Remember, 25% cheaper in terms of food. That is a lot of resources that he could save. He's doing now the the, the upgrade, but the castle is going to be down. How are you going to take? Oh, but the hand cannoneers don't lose against the castle, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he's raiding, which is, is very nice. He's raiding here. He's raiding all over now with the camels. But he's also holding here population for blue is still 200 pop. And here on the right, he's also attacking all over the map. Blue is holding in the middle, raiding in the north, and now taking on the on the right side as well. This is nuts. The bomber cannons. Bomber cannons are so expensive. Oh. Bomber cannons are so expensive. He's lost so much here, Mem. And if this castle yeah. falls, there's like 50 villagers here. This would be amazing for Otto. The castle's gonna fall, but now the castle's gonna fall for Otto in the middle of the map. Yeah, but yes, his skirmish is just losing there. I don't know. It's not the north. He's now expanding in the north a little bit with another TC Jadwiga. His score is still say that blue is ahead. I have the feeling that we're gonna have the first game number seven in Hidden Cup 5 is looking like this because uh -huh. now Jadwiga, when he loses his castle and he's losing now, it has all that and protected. He's gonna lose the castle here too, but I prefer the position now for Otto the Great, uh, Tristan. I agree, lot. and it like, it felt scripted. GG! This whole series, this whole series has felt scripted, Mem. Whether it's the player guesses, or, or the back and forth, or our conversation on how we felt like Otto the Great would feel comfortable here, would somehow be able to figure out how to tie this up 3-3. Yet again, the, the theme remains. If Otto the Great is on a map, that is similar to Arabia, or it is pure land, Otto the Great is the player that's favored now. The final map is another one of those styles. Otto the Great probably is feeling amazing, considering he was possibly at a Civ disadvantage. 
And, and man, it's just like the theme with this player, I'm realizing his castle age times are normally a bit later, but he just makes so much army. There's, there's like exactly. spearmen, archers, scouts. Exactly. Like he just has so much army all the time. That's why. Right. That's why he was later, right? And then he never got any damage from the early castle from his opponent. Oh my God, Tristan, I'm so hyped. You know, I was thinking for how many years we know each other, how many times we have cast together. We didn't have that much luck when we cast together in some of the tournaments. And, you know, I think this is the best series we have cast together. Yeah, it, it it has to be because the series it's, is beautiful. It man. has to be. I mean, the, it's really the hidden aspect aside, and it, I mean, this is not hidden anymore. This has to be MBL, right? But the hidden aspect aside, this series has been so, so crisp, so clean. Um, or, or sorry, it hasn't been crisp and clean at all, but it's just been fantastic in terms of the, the execution on both sides. Um, the strategy has been so cool. And you know, the other cool thing I'm kind of noticing right now is Jadwiga's three wins were on the three home maps. Otto, two wins on two home maps, and then game number one. That is yeah. actually, I know I pointed out that, you know, they're, they're preferred maps and all that, but it is actually quite rare that one player's side is, is wins and the other player's side is also wins. So, and now, my goodness. Tristan, with 100% Chinese war. So, decided game, mood flow, Chinese war, mirror game, and people might think, oh, mirror game. Well, mirror game with Chinese in this map can be insane. Not, not, not good. Insane. I don't know what you think. It, it, is, it is arguably going to be the craziest game in the entire series, what we're about to witness, because of <laughs> Mudflow producing absolutely ridiculous games. And I'm not going to make people wait anymore. To those who are here for this, I hope you feel privileged. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all the support so far, Ridden Cup. And uh, we are going to move into game number seven now between Yadwiga and Otto the Great right now. Okay, so uh, apparently it's not right now because our uh, observer is taking a short break. So actually, if we could send it, if we could send it to me for a second uh, production, it'd be fantastic. Okay, I would, I would love it. You just send it to me for just a second before we get into game seven. Man, we'll be right back with you. Okay, guys, if you say game volume for the fiftieth time. We've seen it. Speaking to 1% of you, okay? I have a production team of five people working on everything. We tested uh, different devices and listened to it. I'm very happy with the level of the sound. Just, if you respect me, if you like me, know that we've seen it. And I love to cast this game. It, it, we, we, we have it at a level that I'm happy with, okay? Um, but I, I'm not trying to encourage more of this, but you have to understand... How much has been put into this? I just wanted to, you know, I can't keep keep shut. I wanted to just say, maybe just please try it. Just focus. If you're not happy with it, great. You're not happy with it. I'm sorry. It is what it is. We'll regroup after today. We'll look at it. Believe me, every day is strategizing post-match on what we can do to make things better. But what's not making things better is have it be a continuous spam. It all right. Just that that's my ask. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now, back to the draft here, man. I mean, what are we going to speculate on? We've got Chinese war. So, uh, it's not going to be... Well, well if it's NBL, Tristan, if it's NBL, he might yeah. not he pick Georgians, and then he doesn't pick the China the first pick. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it could it be... It could be Honestly, Georgians. Georgians could be because with Muslim having the, 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 the fish under the DC, having less the 50 foot, it doesn't matter. You are not going to be idle at all. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. And then the Monaspas, you know, but it has to be China, right? It's it is mirror. China. It, it has Here to we are, team number mirror. seven. I mean, that's so strong. And guys, ladies and gentlemen, in number seven, decider Chinese mirror with two great players. We're going to have a great players advancing and another great player, Tristan, that sadly is going to be eliminated. Why China is great in this map, Tristan? Because it's well, great, right? The main thing about Chinese in general is they start with additional vills, but the struggle is the lack of food. So when you have zero food but more villagers, it takes a long time usually to produce more vills again, which kind of makes Chinese balance. If you put food right underneath the TC, that makes Chinese one of the best sieves in the game. So usually the like 30 or so seconds of TC idle time you would have with Chinese um, on other maps is not the case here. And so people feel like Chinese are simply so strong that they can't be beat. And thus we we they both actually picked Chinese. Now that is possible in Hidden Cup 5. 
your very first pick can possibly be the same pick as your opponent, and that is only revealed after the pick is made. So they see the game the same way, Mem, but this map is crazy for other reasons as well, and that's mainly due to the wood and where you have to take the wood, because where you're taking the wood, there is also water. Uh, and another thing very important, can you put map of the Fog of War again, please? Just Fog of War, a, a moment. And with how the TC has the, the, the mangrove, right? Just go and see mm -hmm. the TC, uh, the extra LOS that now the Chinese have. Yeah, yeah. You don't get surprised. Well, the other you thing too is the Chinese, the Chinese you know, have population space. Don't they have population too. space now for their TCs yeah. as well? So yeah, they, yeah, the Chinese were buffed as well, which I think plays its role. It's just very smooth. And it, I mean, from before the games were even played, they obviously prioritized Chinese as number one. But Mem, think about this series. Think about how back and forth it's been. Think about how even it's been. What better way to decide who the best player is than having the same options, the same civilization, the same tools on a map like this? This should be amazing. It should be definitely amazing. And I think this will be favorite blue for how he has been playing in just land map because people might be thinking, oh, but the middle looks like a water. Well, there's not going to be dogs, at least not early, not going to fish. Later, we can see some other ones there, but just to kill units, right? And create all these chaos that if, as we think, Otto the Great is MBL, he feels so comfortable in these kind of situations. Yeah. Really, really comfortable. I remember, okay. I think it was this map. MBL versus Capoch, right? And he mm -hmm. did that domination. I think with the Mayans, Capoch was coming with towers, if I'm not mistaken. If this is MBL, this map is fit him a lot. Really, really. Yeah. So what everyone wants to see here, the emote everyone wants to use is the demo, right? That, I mean, we're talking about scouts and eco, but deep down, everyone's like, give me a freaking demo, please. Um, but the thing that's yeah. important to mention on that the dock doesn't give you any other benefit on this map, right? If you make a dock, you can't fish. So that's a big investment early. So I feel like the timing on that is critical. And I think the best timing on that is after you have already farmed, you've already made spears, already made scouts. Um, but Mem, that's not, not everyone's going to agree with that statement. But I wanted to point that out. The timing on that is critical. And then players need to look for it. Because you need to scout that thing, man. If you don't know a demo could come to your wood line, you could that could be game over. Yeah, through that. Well, let's see what was going to happen. I want to make you a question about another topic. I'm just checking capture H and look at the color. It has been oh, that we were picking green at all yeah, during the whole series. Picking and green. they picking the decider. So the colors have been Indeed red and blue the whole series in the final game. Except the last game. Which is the color to green? Hmm. Well, uh, I do have stats on greens. color, Memp. And if you would like, I could talk about it a lot. But we'll play the video again at some point. The player who picks green the most <laughs> is Leary. <laughs> I know. But it, did, did you feel that this is a Leary gameplay? I don't. Even less with the maps that he has won. That is definitely what he doesn't like them. So, I, I, I. Also, I, I, I. unrelated notes. Stats. Unrelated note. Um, yeah. yeah, unrelated note. Um, we are currently hiring for a new stats person. So, if you would like to apply, <laughs> please go for a position that does not exist.com and you can uh, you, you can apply there for uh, for stats for Hidden Cup. Hmm. But Tristan, okay. Don't fire. Don't don't fire in the decided game. Wait this game to finish. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they maybe were in problems, you know, for the for the rest of the game. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, it's gonna be cool. You know, I'm gonna stay for the next game. Anyway, a scout, right? Is uh, is the approach and mobility here? It matters a lot. A little bit faster, yeah. red with the scout with the stable up. Yeah, I really like what Red's doing here too. I wonder if the initial lumber camp spot was intentional, Mem, but. Look at how the walls are blocking off the potential of any demos there. That is not a lot of walling, and you can just freely walk over towards your wood line now without having to worry about a ship coming in. So I, I like that. I think that Otto the Great needs to follow suit and get some walls down too. Ooh, now he's there with the scout. He has to be careful. The spear is going to be in time. Um, if this guy is MBL, I want to see a tower in the next 
three, four minutes maximum. Don't know what you think. Mm, yeah, I could see it. I could see but a tower behind that wood line being really smart. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Scout's well, going see. in here to let's the wood line. It. And Embia uh, <clears throat> Otto is uh, fighting back on the scouts. We got quite a few spears out. Scout number isn't high enough yet where you're expecting a lot of carnage. But there are three scouts there from Otto the Great, who, by the way, is not using box formation. We'll have an interesting video on formations after this series, which I think will really help people uh, add add some level of enjoyment here to Hidden Cup if they're not already at the max. Um, more walls from Yadwiga. I like it, Mem. And so far, final game. No one wants to make any mistakes. Yeah. No, not so many kills. I don't know if Blue has seen completely the where the woodland is. Did, did he did he spot it the wood? The blue? I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, he did. He did. He right? did yeah. He knows. He not completely. He has explored everything, but we don't see yet any any tower. I mean, it's the decided game, Evan. If he's MBL or whoever it is, do you want to take a risk, right? Because sending now villages forward is a risk, uh, Tristan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Imagine that you you yeah, there think... and then you lose those villages. Yeah, I think also for as good as the Chinese are with their start, it is it is awkward on the map to expand your eco initially because of the double berry spots. So I think once this gets to maybe like 15 minutes, that's when the army counts will be insane. The upgrades will be insane. We already have forging coming in for auto, for example. Mm. So should be wild maybe soon you here, man. That risk. Yeah, you can, you yeah. can maybe take the risk. Getting though. housed. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Okay, five scouts coming. You have to be careful. Three scouts going around, four spears. Now you have to be careful in this area, but he has two spears, so he's fine. And those are with plus one. The spears are coming. The scouts are coming as well, but we still don't see any villages forward or anything. Are going to be wild battles? It will be. Right, Tristan? The battles will yep. take a little bit, but there will be a point that it, it will snowball. Otto, I just, like, Otto just queues up Spearman constantly. Do you remember the Byzantine game, right? <laughs> now this game, we've got nine Spearmen right now. Two more on the way. Just does not care. And, and this is the map for it, man. This map is normally Scouts and Spears. So it is the perfect situation for Otto to spam those Spearmen. Yeah, for now, it's still... Well, now the KD is starting to, to increase, definitely. 5-3 on his favor hmm you have to be careful some more spears but not taking any big losses still the wood is completely wall it might if he's doing the tower there but as we were talking they don't want to take any risk and uh, population auto the great is still like oh this is a big here. opportunity no here there's big no opportunity defense. there's spears but they're not here and this is disastrous for auto and it's actually fine never mind he has another spearman he has the scouts and uh, Yadwiga decided better on taking that engagement. Scout's still moving around. We do also have a full wall here for Yadwiga on the right side, which is not something we see every day on this map. And a good fight oh. here for Otto, getting some more good hits here on the scouts. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm a little bit disappointed that he didn't commit a little bit more in the in the woodland because he could have taken at least one or two villages. He didn't take any. You know, yeah, but the steel yeah, is yeah. coming with the, with the with the spear. I think he will have taken it. Oh, wow. Blue is not being greedy at all. He's doing even the armor now. Fortune is already done by Red, but Red is kind of, Tristan, he's reacting more. I feel that Otto yeah. is just getting yeah. the initiative here, and Red is just reacting of what Blue is doing. Yeah, and, and it makes sense. If, if Yadwiga is a player who doesn't prefer these types of maps, it would make sense. And you can see as the multitasking becomes more important, Yadwiga having some problems, and this is what Otto excels with. Auto excels with making it scrappy, making it messy. And that's going to be our first villager kill of the game. There's spearmen everywhere. It is the spearman offensive from Otto the Great, well, who's gone for attack and armor here with spearmen. 12, 11, two more in the queue. He's going all wild. He's spamming. He has seven villages on goal. He's now taking the farmers here and... In this map, in this situation, both with the sensibilization, look how Otto the Great is playing. Amazing, Tristan. He's taking now a huge lead. Yeah, that villager is very weak as well. That villager could easily go down, but I think we've got something going on maybe at Otto's base. No, we don't. There's just spears everywhere you go. And Ooh. it seems like Yadwiga is crumbling here, man. Yadwiga just doesn't have enough army and is really stressed out at the moment. All these farms have to be vacated. And the walls on the other side are not protecting anything over here. Well, uh, Tristan, 
you see the dog you wanted to see but what i see is five billions down and ladies and gentlemen Otto the great he sell his soul he sell everything no stone no nothing and he's on the way to castle it tristan Otto the great is getting there into the next round basically well 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 oh, hold on Ooh, hold on I, let's see the scouts i'm there. not ready to go quits yet we had a quick one yeah, from yeah. Vega. it does seem like the spearman though should be able to defend this now mem if you need to come back big time, what do you need? You need a demo. What is being made from that dock right now? Demo. A demo. <laughs> demo. Demo. And, it's coming. And, 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 and there's the, no the walls. Wood line is not walls. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. There's no walls. There's definitely no walls. You have to be, be careful horrible. there. Oh my God. Oh God. Yeah, but I'm take so the resources. Concerned. But he, oh, oh, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Zoom in, zoom in. Papu, Papu, we want to see the blood. Zoom in. Ay, ay, ay. He's gonna wall. Oh. House wall. Oh, Ban this guy. Ban blue, man. I don't man. trust it. No, no, no. I don't. Oh, oh, oh. House. what? The house, man. Now ban red. <laughs> Oh, he think he think the demo in the house, oh, he man. He loses so another distant. villager to the scout. What is happening? Yet Vega needed to try and loop that demo around. Another villager gets doinked by Otto the Great. What a find! Saving him for later. And then the scouts go in. The scouts die. And Mem, this might be it. This might be GG. I mean, you, you have to agree now with me, right? Because, man, he bought it back 100 stone just to make probably a TC on the wood. But the castle is now here. Has to be so disappointing. GG, good luck, Ness. Not ACCM either. Jadwiga lost and we got crazy. 4-3 for Otto the NBL. Great. Tristan. Wow. I mean, we're going to see what people think about these players. Who? They think these players are, but Otto the Great was down 3-2 and brought it back. Can we go back, Mapu? Mapu, take it back here. We got to see the most created unit for a second. I Everyone knows how, like, what was created. 28 Spearmen. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even make a oh third God. type of unit. <laughs> how many scouts? The... But he did five. Tristan, five. five scouts. With five scouts, <laughs> we won the game. Seriously. <laughs> He's uh, he lost... scouts. What is this? Yeah, it's crazy. And that's Otto the Great for oh, you, Otto. Man. People are going to be so freaking pumped to see Otto play in the next round. Congratulations to Otto for being so great. And Mem, uh, we, this series, I think, for from the casting side, from the viewer side, for the player side, it had its ups and downs, but man, did it finish on a high. I had so much fun, dude, casting this series. And, um, I mean, we got to go back through it all, right? Game number one started off like this. We had Yadviga thinking the rhinos in the middle were important. Otto didn't take a single rhino in the middle. Eventually ended up pushing here with some monks, with some spears, and it eventually turned into like a castle drop, man. And there, there's the ramps. Look at that. How many players Crazy. make petards against ramps? How many players repair a ram underneath it like that? Yeah, pretty, pretty wild, pretty well. Don't forget this, Tristan. Remember for the rest of the tournament, how many times you're going to see that both players win their whole maps, the whole yeah. home maps. Yeah. Even if it's a 4-3, you know? Yeah. It, it's, it's pretty wild and how close the series has been. So everyone has won just the whole maps. So this game was the decider. Yeah, seriously Crazy. was. This map is so cool, man. Wow. I mean, this is just so good, man. The different approaches, game one, this game here. We had the boar being brought in by Yadviga. Still wondering if Yadviga maybe teamed with or practiced with Vasco de Gama from day one because Vasco already did that. There we had the lame from Otto the Great. This was maybe the first sign from us that maybe this could be someone like MBL with the, with the stealing that he's known for. Uh, this one was, was really messy. Like, I think both players uh, think ha had one, big problems Tristan? managing this yeah. map. Exactly. I, I think, Tristan, this map, we not even you or me know exactly where was the key here. I, I, wrote, yeah. I yeah. don't really know, you know? Like, well, yeah. he got the fees uh, red all the time, right? Like most of the time. So that gives him that boost and get faster 
fast app. Also, Tristan, I, I don't have a lot of information about this game because my microphone in this game, I was, I was more focused on the was, microphone. I was going to say, you were, <laughs> you, you were, you were going bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was not 100% here. I'm very happy that after this game, it, it fixed it completely. Thanks, God. Yeah, because we same. got yeah, it was a, a crazy series and in mind that I will have missed it. It will be, well, I was depressed here, but the series were going just better from here, better and better all the time, Tristan. It was insane. Yeah. yeah, and this, this game, I mean, this game were pick, fantastic. Okay, viewers, pick your favorite game. Pick one. Was it this one? This game was insane. I mean, this was the game for me where I realized that Otto is a chaotic player. Otto is not a meta, meta player. Again, tried to steal resources, went for the tower rush. We had like eventually a sneak TC here. Um, I, it's it's so fun to look back at this mem because it it actually was quite a long series. I almost forgot some yeah. of these moments. Yeah, yeah. Aren't wow. they I think the first game again has been today Bay again. Yeah, I Bay was, was a sick the, game. The, the, I mean, he started Bay with the lane again, the whole game. I think for me, the best game was again Bay. Like yesterday was Bay, in my opinion. And again, I mean, this was very cool, was nice, you know, but it was a lot more passive. And then all the battles was happening more here, like at this stage of the game, right? But yeah. Bay, it was crazy from the start. I agree. You have villagers going forward. Man, like, think about this, though. This game we're looking at here. To lose this, Otto went down to, what, 60 pop? Otto refused to quit, even though it was over. That could have been so heartbreaking. And Otto the Great had to win oh. three more games over time, yeah. had to reset his mind, and get the job done anyways. That is amazing from Otto, because I, I could see players, after having all the gold there, thinking that maybe... All hope was lost. This hole here. Oh, Yadwiga. I mean, this yeah. this hole really slowed down the early Castle Age timing. Yeah. Oh, man. And, and this, this and well. here he, yeah, was well. Kind of, in my opinion, was uh, in the previous games really fast. The supremacy that he lost the castle, I think it was more important than people think. Very important. But well, yeah. that was yeah. already the previous game. And now in this one, well, uh, the Byzantines, man. I think it was really the Byzantines here, honestly. That was really powerful in that position yeah and now this Bay. is the game oh this is the game you're talking yeah, about yeah, game yeah. five i mean when it's two two right this is the game and we got villagers going forward we had at one point like three docks from Otto, who walled in his opponent's resources you know what i will say though what really reminds me how good this series was is a lot of the games that players lost it was close enough where they could have won like they were in the better position at various points Otto the Great, I think, maybe had the better position in this game. And then Yadviga said, I'm going to convert everything you have. I'm going to bombard down all your trebs and ended up taking down every single castle in the middle here. It was beautiful yeah. play. And if we think about, we were talking that in the land map, I mean, at this point, this is only land. So Yadviga also in the land map, he played well, you know, like, yes. because here the yes. water doesn't have any impact, you know, and he controlled everything. So whoever read this, it, it, it did a great series, and it's very sad for, for him definitely to lose in a decided game. And I it's don't know, brutal. It really yeah, it, be, it is absolutely yeah, brutal, brutal to, to have been killed off here because Yadviga, I wanted to see more from this player. I wanted to see this player play on and, and maybe play in some different matchups. But that's also the, that's the great thing about Hidden Cup too is that it is brutal, right? There's no second chances. You have to make the most of every moment. Speaking of moments here, look at this. Look at this dirty dancing here with this with the siege micro. Like this is unbelievable. Really solid from both, but it was all auto with his split micro and his dancing there. And that crazy was, well, sequence. Yeah. That is like all the, the highlight time. of yeah. someone's career right there after Hidden Cup ends. Oh my god. That pressure yeah, continued here. here. You had auto raiding. Yeah. Castle will go down. And this was the final game. We didn't have too many highlights. I did feel like maybe Yadviga needed to be more aggressive right there. But the Spearman yeah. came out, Don't know what so it happened. was kind of complicated. What, what, what happened in this game? Because it was the, the most one-sided by far, actually. Yeah. On yeah. the whole series. I, I mean, basically, yeah. every time Yadviga went forward with scouts, the scouts died to spears. <laughs> and then the spears yeah, ended up true. killing villagers, too. It was like the spears versus scouts battle actually made all the difference there. So... Poof, what a series. Now, man, um, normally I, I I was planning on passing, you know, saying goodbye to the co-caster, moving on and doing the poll. But I want you here for this. 
because you and I have very strong opinions. Uh, viewers who are watching on Twitch, you're going to have a poll come up here for one of the players that just concluded, one of the heroes. And it is your time now to vote via the chat who you think <laughs> the heroes are. Um, now, As my one of these... Goes, well, you know. Well, well we have, we you know, Yadviga. we're going to do Yadviga first. We've got a longer vote period this time. So this is the player who lost. Now, people are typing 11. I don't know if they're laughing at us, but if you typed 11 by mistake thinking it was the wrong hero, you can re-enter your... You could change your vote. Like, I could see MBL vote going down now. What do you think, man? If you had to give three players that Yadviga could be, who would you pick? I will have go for for Barls, but I think Barls in the last game will play a little bit better than he did, probably. So okay. I'm now a little bit confused, but I have to say three names, right? So I'm going to go for Barls, right? Okay. Sebastian. And, well, Sebastian, I'm not sure. And honestly, uh, I don't know, you know, because ACCM okay. will, will never resign the I way think... he did in the last one, right? Well, let me, let me, so... let me go then. I'm going to say Barls. Yeah. Uh, Ganji. Okay. Or... I think it was yesterday, no? Well, I think Gan Ganji ah, and Barls ah. are very similar to each other. And true, true. So I think it could have been Ganji or Barls, maybe. Uh, the third one's Jordan. tough for me, but, but apparently people think Jordan. So uh, maybe. I mean, the no. tricky thing about Jordan is it is possible he's not bringing the level as he did in the previous Hidden Cup because we don't know how much Good he's point. been training compared to others. Good point. But apparently it is the, the Polish queen is the Polish player <laughs> Barls. Okay. 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 I like that. I think that's reasonable. I, we have to see more. I think the community is somewhat on par. I do also think they're stealing that from us, man, but that's fair. So what about our winner? What about Otto the Great? Well, Deb, give, mean, me three, give me three guesses, man. <laughs> okay. I, I told you three guesses. M, B, L. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, hopefully you do. You agree with that? Though? Okay, <laughs> I gave you three. You know, so you got uh, it, man. I have to say, MBL did a great job not getting housed compared to his usual game. So that's the only thing that's in the back of my mind. Like, I could actually see a wild world where that is still ACCM. Um, yeah, for the for the yeah for the resign in that game, could be <laughs> for the yeah for the game he never resigned. They Beyond never resigned. that. Okay. I'm really struggling to pick anybody else here, man. <laughs> Who could send Maybe. two villains also forward like this? Sito? Maybe Sito? Sito? Oh, my Sito God. Sito likes to do that? Oh, my God. Tristan. You see? We say Sito at the same time. Okay. Also, also remember the I, capital yeah. GG? Sito says capital GG more than anybody. Maybe Sito? Okay. Uh, I mean, if we... I, I, it, it's fun to think you have a player picked out. Because if we see okay. indications it could be them later on, we'll then begin to feel very silly. Can, can you do but can I, you do Tristan for, for the future in the in the voting a change? Can you make from one to seventeen and remove the eleven? I'm annoyed, man. I think that the chat is laughing at you and me all the time. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm really okay. annoyed. Please change that change that number, you guys. Eighty percent, eighty percent of the community. Thinks wow. it's MBL. Second place is Sato at 6.9%. Third place is ACCM at 44 So this is the most landslide victory we've had so far in any vote, any poll. Um, so maybe MBL is not so hidden, but uh, uh, what a what a fun series. Man, we kind of said it all already. It, it was a blast of a series. Uh, the best series yet in Hidden Cup 5. So happy you're here for it, man. And thank you. So thank happy, you for man. all your work. Thank you for joining. It was so much fun. Was really fun, man. I'm not telling you like a, like a joke about removing the eleven. Maybe it's good also for the voting because a lot of people put eleven randomly when they get fun. And about the yeah. season, about everything. Obviously, I apologize again for the problem with the microphone. I finally, I got to uh, fix it. I'm so hyped that you invited me here. So I'm hyped with the tournament and good luck with the rest of the tournament. And hopefully, we can cast more together. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed. We love this game, guys. Thank you, Mr. Tristan. Okay, take care. Uh, thank you, ma'am. See ya. All right, salutes in chat, please, for Memb.
Uh, as I explained when we were having the the mic issues originally, uh, I've been there and, you know, he felt like it was out of his control. Thank you, everyone, for being understanding when sometimes things happen. Also, whatever we're doing with our chat on screen, I already told production we got to change this. You guys, there's too many people here. This is... We we tried to tweak some things, and uh, this is you guys are breaking this right now. This is this is rough. So our apologies there. We will try and fix that and make that improved in some ways. Uh, being told that will that'll be addressed at some point. Now, this is a good problem to have, or I guess here this is a good this type of problem is the type of problem that I will accept. There's too many people here, too many people excited, too many people is great. Um, well, not too many, you know, a lot of people is great. So thank you guys for being here. I hope you've enjoyed your experience so far with Hidden Cup. Um, it's been, uh, as I said, and will say a lot, it's been three year buildup in my brain for a lot of these details, a lot of these things we're going to do, and it's been months of work and we got lots of people involved on this. So I hope the work has showed, um, couple reminders, guys, we've got the whole bracket here on screen here in a few seconds and we've got the schedule for you for hidden cup i need you to know what's happening or what has happened we're going to have gregory seventh against gajamata up next so stay tuned for that but then we have the other sets from the round of 16 covered on tuesday and wednesday we'll have king steven salim the grim salim is my boy that series is going to suck it's going to be a 4-0 because salim cannot be beaten you heard it here first uh Kozral versus emperor sigismund Alfred the Alpaca against Jan Jiska, Alexios Komnenos, and then Robert Giscard. And um, we have an emote for each and every hero here. So if you have subscribed for, I don't know, free with Twitch Prime, like so many of you guys have here on Twitch, you have an emote that you can use uh, if you want to root on your favorite hero or just, I don't know, feel empowered uh <laughs> there's other emotes as well such as the plus 7k emote which is if i actually make a good joke um i have to say i really appreciated the fact that that's been used more than i expected usually it's been when my co-caster makes a good joke or riley makes fun of me in the hero videos but still i like the emotes being used and uh there will be more okay we'll add it throughout the day the idea is to kind of give back in some ways but obviously if you want to contribute subscribing to the stream is a great way to do so and get something back too um also donations are split 50 50 towards the prize pool we already brought in over a thousand dollars thanks to people's donos may not get to do shout outs for everyone uh for example someone donated one dollar uh so thank you for the 50 cents contribution there uh that'll be reflected if we get another dollar donation but um we've got like some hundo hundos in here i feel kind of bad um when people contribute so much that i can't thank you but we just got to keep the show on the road. And I hope you guys understand that that's the situation. Okay. All right. So ladies and gents, um, as I said, there's a lot of cool things coming. We want to keep the show on the road here. Uh, we have a sponsor, a big sponsor for Hidden Cup 5. And that sponsor is Surfshark. So next, we are going to hear from our lovely sponsor. And then move into a, a, well, let's hear from the lovely sponsor. Then I'll explain what's happening next. In the lead up to Hidden Cup 5, I spent a great deal of time speaking with potential sponsors. Most of them weren't products that I could really get excited about, or they didn't believe in me or AOE2 to have a strong viewer base. Surfshark VPN was a massive exception to this. These days, the internet is kind of everything. I mean, back when this game came out, we were playing on wooden computers, and uh, our keyboards looked like, well, they looked like the same one that Doubt is still playing on. But unlike Doubt, times have changed and with all the good internet can bring there's also a lot of bad sometimes using a vpn like surfshark can provide a safer experience when sailing or surfing through the internet i mentioned doubt and his old outdated keyboard and when i asked him about an edit he told me as long as i don't have to do anything do whatever you want so here is the lord doubt say on hidden cup 5 sponsor oh if you need a vpn if you want to surf, if you want to be, no. <laughs> Internet is unsafe place these days. If you want to be a safe surfer, <laughs> we have an amazing deal here. It's called Surfshark. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. Below the stream, you will find the Surfshark link and the deal with Hidden Cup 5. That is it for now, though. We now move into our next series in Hidden Cup 5.
And if you need VPN, surf shark. Oh, man, got to love doubt. I mean, again, I asked him about, I was like, hey, is this cool? Can I do this or whatever? And he said, as long as I don't have to do anything, do whatever you want. So it was like pure doubt energy. According to the votes so far in Hidden Cup, we have not seen doubt yet. But keep doubt on your mind. So here's the deal. Uh, in the previous series, I couldn't keep my mouth shut on some things that I think you should look for with players, okay? Day one, I had a video on color and players picking color. And if we could just show age of colors real quick, that'd be great. So far, it seems like all the data that I've collected is that players in non-hidden cups have color preferences, and it's huge. But I, um, I'm not really that convinced that in hidden cup, players are picking their favorite color if it's not like color one or color two. Uh, we do have an overlay for it, but I think... I might have caught production. Here we go. So, like, for example, right? You look at Hera. Hera possibly very telling. 99% of the time playing blue is also is included most Hidden Cup data. Um, you can look through that. We have a video, which was about seven or eight minutes, where I talked about some of these players and their color preferences as well, which I think is kind of some fun additional data, uh, you know, if you want to speculate on players. But, you know, to bring it back to me now, the next video, and, and then we're going to take a short break, is focused on a gameplay element. And it's a gameplay element that I don't think a lot of you guys are actually looking for or even aware of uh, how often it's used or why it's used because the gameplay elements are, are a bit more unique, okay? So uh, we're going to play Age of Formations next, which I think could shed some light on how players are going to play throughout Hidden Cup. Then take a short break and be right back with the next series. Thanks, guys. Years ago, when someone was trying to convince MBL not to steal a boar, he responded with this. Oh, let's uh, all just play peaceful in Dark Age and live in peace. This is Age of yeah. Empires, man. It's a war game. You're supposed to take things and do stuff. I'm taking a boar. And that statement of it's a war game is worth remembering from time to time. The point of this game is to build up an army to slaughter the opponent or slaughter the opponent's army. And while you probably know that, you probably didn't know that there could be such a big difference in how players control their armies. Now, some players are faster than others, but players can use their speed, or lack thereof, with a variety of formations in the game. The default formation in the game is line formation. But after that, there is the box formation, the flank formation, or we'll refer to that as split, and then the stagger formation. In Hidden Cup 5, we just see 16 heroes. We know there's 16 players behind these heroes, but we don't know who is who. So I wanted to dive in and look at the numbers on how these formations are utilized in the game. And the numbers are mind blowing to me. So we're gonna start off with split. Now, split or flank formation is usually used with crossbows or any range units as you may try and approach or depart from an enemy siege weapon. You don't have to be that experienced to know what this is. This is the most common form of micro that you'll see with crossbows, and there's something just very satisfying about it. The numbers you are seeing on screen there are the average amount of time that the split formation was utilized in a game for these players, and that's the middle of the pack. And the numbers you're seeing on screen are surprisingly low for me. We've got quite a few players there that I would expect a little bit more micro from, but at the end of the day, the split formation is a very niche use. When you think about it, players are probably splitting away from a mangonel a couple times a game, so a lot of the averages being around three to four does make sense. But above the handful of times that the other players seem to average, we have two of the youngest players in this event much higher than the others, with Mihai at 11 splits per game and Sebastian at 14. And then at the very bottom, below everybody, we have four veterans of the game. We have MBL, ACCM, Yo, and Doubt at one split on average per game. So let's move on to Stagger. 
So the common use of stagger is when you have a group of ranged units and you want to spread them out from receiving a lot of damage. If you don't have the ability to split, sometimes it's best to just spread out your units so fewer of the units get hit by incoming shots. Now, it's not just ranged units. You can also do this with a group of knights to maybe surround other units. And it is something that players probably use more than split. It's just not as obvious. So yet again, we have the average. We have the middle of the pack here, with the lowest of the mid being Barrels at 12, heading up towards MBL, who's at 21. But yet again, we do have players that are at the top here, and it's pretty substantial. We have Hera, who staggers 39 times a game on average, and then Leary, who staggers 43 times a game. So if you see players who are using stagger very frequently, Hera or Leary confirmed. Now, I know the big numbers are exciting, but most of you guys actually just want to find out who is at the bottom. And yet again, we have some repeat names on this list with ACCM at two, Yo at one, and then Sebastian and Doubt at zero. So, so far, uh, if you're keeping track, Yo and Doubt split on average one time a game. And then Yo uses Stagger on average one time a game. And Doubt never presses it at all. This is mind-blowing to me, how there could be such a big difference in unit commands. But we're not finished yet. The final formation box has a different use for pro games than when you were 12. When you were a kid, you probably had uh, made a knight and maybe named this knight and maybe was role-playing with this knight. And this knight was your favorite knight and it was your friend and you wanted the knight to be protected. So you used box formation to surround the knight and escort him around the map. That is not what pros use box formation for at all. And box formation is actually a relatively new use for the pro scene. Where you will see box formation utilized is with low numbers of units. If you have low numbers of units and you are not using box formation, changing directions will sometimes mean that the units will actually move in directions you might not be able to control. And this is a bad thing if you're a player controlling your units because you want them to stay as tightly grouped as possible without changing position. And so box formation is part of the meta now with the majority of players using box formation for low groups of scouts and archers. Beyond a certain number, like 10 to 12 units, box formation no longer has as much relevance and you are going to see most armies just in the standard line formation. So now that you understand why box formation is used, let's look at the numbers, because we have massive discrepancies on this one. The middle of the pack, the average, is five players. Sebastian, Mihai, Viper, Vinchester, and Ganji, both are doing this a solid chunk of the times they're playing a game. And this is beyond what I thought would be just Feudal Age armies. It is very clear that box formation is being utilized in the Castle Age and beyond with these averages. But then right below them, we have the numbers that I would have expected. Uh, Heart, eight box formations. Tato at six. ACCM at five. Four from Jordan. Like, all of these numbers here, this to me makes sense. Because at least in my experience, again, it is low numbers of armies. And if the game goes on for a long time, you're not going to really benefit from it that frequently. But at the top is something that I have to assume is just a little quirk. I, for example, am always selecting my TCs without actually doing anything. Players have all these things that they do that are just habit, that have no benefit whatsoever. Now, maybe this is me jumping the gun. Maybe this is actually helpful. But Hera averages 316 boxes per game. Hera is boxing out there, and I have to assume that this is something that he is selecting with every type of army he has, because that is a lot. So if you see someone spamming box formation in Hidden Cup 5, Hera confirmed. Now, that's hilarious, but what's even crazier is the bottom. Leary uses box formation one time a game on average. One. And then the others... We have MBL at zero, we have Barrels at zero, and we have Doubt again at zero. If you were looking at small groups of armies, if you were looking at scout formation specifically, this is an easy tell to find out who players are in my opinion. You don't have to look far to see that MBL and Doubt 
do not do this. You could look at clips and see they are not box formationing their scout. So if there is no box formation used by a player in Hidden Cup 5, MBL, Doubt, or Barrels confirmed. And that, my friends, is Age of Formation, which completely blew my mind. I was not expecting to see so many discrepancies here. And if you're adding it up, there is one player who has an average of one of these actions per game with one split a game. That is Doubt. So that is it, my friends. Uh, thank you very much for watching Hidden Cup 5. More Hidden Cup 5 action is coming up next, so stick around.
All right, ladies and gents, thank you for your for your patience there. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tunes. Hope you enjoyed the video. What did you think about the formations thing? Was your mind blown like mine was? Because I couldn't believe the discrepancies, man. And, uh, you know, obviously, like, some of that I knew, which, by the way, the whole box formation thing, if you watch the first series, extremely relevant when it comes to guessing Yadwiga, because I was not seeing box formation. And so the three players at the bottom of box formation, I think, is, is what you should consider to, you know, with your guesses. But um, yeah, you learn that, that Hera has too much time. Yeah, I, I don't know if 319 box formations a game really is recommended. Uh, pretty sure most doctors recommend you stay under 50 a game. But uh, yeah, that was that was wild. It was fun stuff. So <clears throat> the idea of Hidden Cup, okay, is obviously to have fun. Um, the guessing game's fun. The games are fantastic. I aim for the maps to be good. But part of that too is those types of things, you know, uh, the deeper dives, the deeper information on on various things. And I hope you guys have appreciated the work because it hasn't been that easy to make sure that stuff is prepped. So far with the reactions you guys have given me and the support, it, don't worry, I'm definitely feeling like it was worth all the headache to, to make it happen, all right? So, um, <clears throat> this is gonna shock you, but um, I did not pay attention in school. Um, I snuck out of class, I played Counter-Strike actually at my high school. Um, don't tell the computer teacher. I didn't pay attention, I didn't study, I didn't give a crap, and somehow I'm 30 years old and like kind of made my way through society. But I just, I didn't pay attention. I didn't remember things that I wish I should have now at this point. And um, so I have brought in someone who is more informed on life, more informed on history, to introduce our next two heroes. Because in Hidden Cup 5, 15 out of the 16 participants, well, no, 15 out of the 16 heroes that the participants are playing on actually existed in history. And, uh, you know, for me, it's like in one ear, out the other. I don't remember anything, and uh, I, but I want to hear about it. So to introduce our next series, to introduce the first hero in our next series, my good friend Riley, to introduce Gregory the Seventh. What's going on, mate? This is Riley Knight from the podcast half Assed History, here to have a bit of a chat with you about the heroes featured in Hidden Cup 5. All the heroes the players are using to hide their true identities are real-life people from history featured as units in various Age of Empires campaigns. And while T90 is an avid history lover, his knowledge and memory of history would uh, pretty firmly make him a historical low elo legend, I think it's fair to say. So he invited me along to tell you a thing or two about these heroes we're watching square off against one another. Let's get to know one of them a little bit better. Pope Gregory VII was the head of the Catholic Church and uh, the Papal States along with it in the 1070s and 1080s. And he's remembered for a great many things, principally though, his lifelong quest to establish Papal supremacy over the kings of Europe. But here's the problem. Right. Apart from a very minor appearance uh, in uh, in the Art of War training campaign, Gregory the Seventh doesn't feature properly in any real Age of Empires two campaign. So, to try to make this little history segment relevant to Age of Empires, I will now attempt to describe the life and times of Gregory the Seventh using only the technologies that appear in the monastery. Here we go. <clears throat> Pope Gregory VII was born in 1015 as Hildebrand of Savannah in Tuscany, which back then was part of the Holy Roman Empire. And during his education as a young man, he was noted for his faith, which led him to become a monk. And his devotion to this role saw him swiftly rise through the ranks of the church's administration, rising all the way to the rank of Archdeacon in 1058 or 1059. And as Archdeacon, he attempted to reconcile the papacy with the Normans in Sicily, offering them a chance at redemption. Uh, he established an alliance with the Pataria movement to strengthen papal authority despite the Paterine skirting dangerously close to heresy, and also reformed the papacy by giving the exclusive right to elect a new pope to the Catholic cardinals. So, how are we doing so far? We've got, what, faith, devotion, redemption, heresy, four. That's not bad. He's not even pope yet. We're not doing too badly at all. Anyway, in 1073, Hildebrand of Savannah, he did become the pope, Pope Gregory the Seventh. that's the name he took. Um, and he had a huge amount of support from all levels of the Catholic Church. The cardinals loved him, the clergy loved him, and the people of Rome loved him. There were some people who didn't love him, however, many of the temporal leaders of Europe, most notably Henry IV, the future Holy Roman Empire. 
Henry challenged the papal theocracy in a political and religious crisis known as the Investiture Controversy, which saw royalty and clergy clash over who held certain powers. Gregory issued a statement, uh, or collection of statements really, known as the Dictatus Pape, which provided some illumination on which he considered to be the areas of authority that the office of Pope held. This included things like overthrowing kings and emperors, releasing their subjects from oaths of loyalty. The investiture controversy only grew more and more intense until finally in 1077, with Henry IV facing excommunication, he finally backed down. Gregory forced Henry to seek atonement by dressing in rough cloth without shoes and had him wait in the snow outside Canossa Castle for three days to humble him. Gregory certainly had won this round by humiliating Henry. Poor Henry, honestly. I, I wonder if he got sick being left out there in the cold and the snow. If he, if he did, obviously, to get better, he probably would have needed some uh, herbal medicine. Anyway, the, uh, the investiture controversy continued after this, but Gregory's fervour to establish papal supremacy never waned. It defined his career, in fact. But he did do other things as well. He sought to protect the sanctity of clerical office by enacting reforms to control the behaviour of priests. Uh, these are known as the Gregorian reforms, and they enforce things like clerical celibacy. They forbade simony, or the selling of church offices for money. Gregory finally died in 1085, and he's remembered for his huge influence on the medieval Catholic Church with his unyielding assertions of papal authority and important internal reforms. And as such a staunch Catholic, you can only imagine what he would have done had he been around during the Reformation. If those blasted Protestants were going around trying to disseminate their Bibles, I bet he would have blocked their printing. Oh, whatever. Honestly, I tried. Come on. I think I, I, think I did pretty well. Whatever. Let's find out how Gregory VII will go in Hidden Cup. Will he assert his papal authority over his foes just as he did in the 11th century? Keep watching to find out. I have to say, so obviously I saw all of these before they were done and we had multiple versions to get them to where we were. I'm still impressed, considering that's my third or fourth run at watching that. I am still very impressed. He did a very good job at that and of course thank you to the editing team who who got it where it is uh listen we're not finished uh i i don't think it's going to be the same type of introduction for the next hero because again with my limited understanding the next hero was played a massive role in history and that hero who'll be up against gregory the seventh here in hidden cup five is gaja mada Gajamada is one of the preeminent figures in the history of Southeast Asia, remembered not only for his skill as a military leader, but also his skill as a politician, skills that brought the mighty Majapahit Empire to its peak. Interestingly, however, and unusually for the time, Gajamada wasn't a king, he wasn't a prince, he wasn't a royal of any kind. He was a Mahapati, a prime minister, roughly speaking, a vice regent, someone who acted on behalf of the king. Gajamada rose to prominence during the reign of the famous great king Jayanagara when he served as a leader of the elite royal guard. In 1321, Gajamada was instrumental in rescuing Jayanagara from some rebellious insurgents before going on to actually defeat the rebels altogether, and from this point his political career took off. Gajamada swiftly rose to the highest levels of government within the Majapahit Empire, culminating in him becoming the Prime Minister of the Mahapati in 1334 under Jayanagara's successor, Queen Tribhuana, also known as Gataja. But here's something interesting, right? In the campaign scenario, The Oath to Unify Nusantara, Gajamada narrates the opening by saying, As I feared, our king died this afternoon from an unknown illness. An unknown illness? Gajamada, mate, you bloody killed the bloke. What are you talking about? It's... This has never been conclusively proven, but many historians believe that Gajamada organised the assassination of Jayanagara, who uh, wasn't super well-liked, I think it's fair to say. He had a much better relationship with Jayanagara's successor, Tripuana, so maybe he knocked off her old man for the sake of his career. I don't know. In any case, it was a very good move because he certainly flourished under Tripuana, and after being made the Mahapati, he swore a famous and very ambitious oath to unify vast swaths of the Indonesian archipelago, known as Nusantara, and this oath became known as the Palapa Oath, and it defined his career. It saw Gajamada swear to forego eating spices until Nusantara was unified under Majapahit control. Imagine that. Imagine not eating spices. Imagine having your chips without a bit of salt. Although, then again, I know there are, I know there are a lot of Europeans watching, and you weirdos eat your chips with mayonnaise, not salt, don't you? Bloody gross. Anyway... 
The Majapahit Empire was based in what is today Indonesia, centred on the island of Java, and after making his Palapa oath, Gajamada did everything he could to expand the empire's territory outwards from Java. He led a sustained series of campaigns against the realms and the regions that surrounded his empire, even after Tripuana abdicated in favour of her son, King Hayam Wuruk. And I'll tell you this, his campaigns were overwhelmingly successful, which is unsurprising, I guess, when your troops get free armour upgrades and you can start rolling out with cheap elephants. Or maybe he just beat everyone by pretending he was Magyar instead, so they never saw the elephants coming, who knows. In any case, his downfall came in 1357, after attempting to subjugate the Sunda kingdom by plotting to turn a Sunda princess into King Hayamuruk's concubine, rather than his wife, as had been the plan. This went over with the Sunda like a fart in an elevator, fighting broke out, and the Battle of Bubat saw the Sunda royal family killed, along with Gajamada's political career. His underhanded plotting had caused shame and humiliation to come upon King Hayam Wuruk, who immediately dismissed him as Mahapati and sent him into political exile to live out the rest of his life in a remote estate. But, at least while there, he was able to eat spiced food. His plotting, as nefarious as it had been, it did result in the capitulation of the Sunda, and so his Palapa oath was fulfilled. Gajamata finally died in 1364 in his 70s, and to this day he is remembered as a pivotal figure in Southeast Asian history, helping to bring about one of the most powerful empires in the region's history. But will he be remembered as the champion of Hidden Cup 5 as well? There's only one way to find out. Let's see if Gajamata can continue to crush his foes. Well, thank you, Riley, again for the introductions of our heroes. We have our matchup now, and we have... Our next caster. Uh, good day, good day, Ornlu. How you doing? Ornlu, if you can hear me, Classic. I can't hear you. Classic. <laughs> uh, what a great way you to start things off. You can repeat that. It's all right. We're starting down here. We're only getting better. Go ahead. How are you doing, uh, dude? All right. <laughs> yes. Uh, the last series was great. There's a lot to live up to in this one, and I've been enjoying the tournament so far, so let's get into it. Oh, uh, great. It even sounded better the second time. Oh, man. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm with you. I want to get into it. Um, we briefly spoke during the break, and I was basically like, man, the second I saw that draft, I just knew it was going to be great. We had like completely different styles on either side. Um, so I think we're just going to hop in. If there's anyone I want to speculate heavily on the draft with, it would be you, my friend. Uh, we'll, we'll be there. Uh, here's a little bit more information on the heroes. Excuse me. Uh, as you know, you just learned some very in-depth in information about Gregory the Seventh and Gajamata. But um, man, it looks so freaking epic. And in long term throughout the tournament, We'll have more stats on what the players actually accomplished in their rounds. But here we have the draft. And for Gregory the Seventh, he has picked Evacuation first, our new map, and then Cup and Mud Flow. And then Gajamata has gone for Bay, Hidden Forts, and High Tides. Game one's going to be Bypass Ornlu. I mean, we're going to go back and forth here for a bit. What stands out to you? What are you seeing? Well, we do have a fair amount of our hybrid maps. We got Cup, Evacuation, and Bay all picked, but we also, oh, and High Tides, but we also have Bypass and Hidden Fort, so we have a little bit of that closed map factor. So we're kind of missing the more Arabia-like maps of, well, Arabia itself and Slopes. So that could be interesting. Yeah, you know, I am very excited here because I was extremely worried that the new maps, Hidden Forts and Evacuation, would be avoided, that people would not want to play them um for various reasons it seems like players really like them and i think a lot of this uh or loop comes down to the players seeing an opportunity to have that week and a half period of training and and coming out with a uh with a strategy that maybe no one has faced before um that's unique to age of empires too so it's a unique question but how do you think that changes the approach when the first two rounds are actually fully completed, fully played before the players get to even see what everyone else is doing in this tournament. Well, it really does benefit the players who prepare a lot. We've seen that a fair amount throughout the tournament so far. I mean, even going back to game number one of the last set, only having five bills on sheep instead of six and going for the chop through right away from Yad Viga. Like, that's yep. the sort of stuff you can get away with when you have a brand new map. Your identity is hidden because the players won't figure out who they're up against until much later on if they make it that far. So there's a lot of opportunity here, and it's great to see the players really run with it. 
Yeah, and, and you know, the other thing to remind you guys when you're looking at the order of the draft here is there's no map bans before the picks. So uh, from top to bottom there with the maps, that's the order in which things happened. So evacuation was was free and clear to pick, and Gregory took it. Same with Gajamata there and Bay. Um, and then with the sieves, we have five bans that happened for both players before the series. And then the first pick is a free hidden pick, which means it is possible, and we saw it in the previous round, that both players could actually prioritize and pick the same exact civilization. We have a first pick of Dravidians here from Gregory the Seventh, which is uh, maybe not so alarming if you look at the amount of water that's out there, but still. And then you have a first pick of the Cumans from Gajamata. So those first picks, they could not be more different, in my opinion, from each other. Well, yeah, you have the sort of slow military and navy side of things with Dravidians, and then you have the fast economy horsey boys of Cumans. Going to be played most likely on very different maps. But it's interesting because Cumans, I think, have been banned in every set so far, or almost every set. And yes. you can see that as soon as they weren't banned, they were gobbled up right away by Gajamata. Yeah, really interesting. I, and I think there's honestly only maybe two maps I think that Cumans could be strong on. And uh, I haven't, I have never seen it before. It would be Bay or Hidden Forts. I think Hidden Forts being the more obvious one. But, you know, there are some players that are more infatuated with the Cumans than others. I think of ACCM. I think of Yo. Those are probably like the top two. And then when it comes to the Dravidians, again, I think the Dravidians are strong on water maps, but there's always been a bit of debate on how strong they are. And I feel like players like the Viper, Players like Tato, players maybe like Doubt, those three might be the biggest Dravidian favorites in the game. So, I mean, if that if any of those names are up against each other here, we've got a massive round one clash. Oh, absolutely. And I think another few things that are interesting to point out, we have Poles picked, I believe, for the first time and Goths picked for the first time. So these are two players who are not afraid to draft at least some of the less conventional civs. Yeah. I agree with you there. Yeah, uh, man. I mean, this draft, it, it it's so fun to think about it. <laughs> this draft is wild. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't do want to spend day, man. 20 minutes speculating. So, yeah. Well, I want to go to uh, a fun tidbit that we have collected here, which really might not mean anything at all. But I am, if anything, a very, uh, very good at uh, giving people useless information. So I want to quickly just go over to the age of colors here. Now, I don't know what color is going to be used in this series, but we have not seen a lot of, of like anything beyond blue and red this tournament, which is a little bit unique so far. So whatever colors we see from the players in game, just remember these are the percentages that the players are choosing these colors throughout tournaments, if that means anything to you at all. I think we did see green in one game in the previous round. It was actually the final game for Otto the Great. But for the most part, it is predominantly blue. But if you see yellow, if you see red, if you see purple, maybe you're seeing the other players there. And now I, I did want to show this again. This is arguably even less important, but I'm going to show it anyways, is the GG situation. Because I have an important clarification to make on this, just in case people don't realize. So basically, 99% of the time, every player calls GG. This is if it is capital GG or lowercase GG. That's how deep we're getting into this. Is it capital or is it lowercase? We got all the data right here. Um, in Ganji's case, it's not that he's not calling GG 50% of the time. It is oftentimes Ganji does a capital G and a lowercase G, and we didn't have enough space on the overlay for that. All right? So um, if there's any other variation, that would obviously fill out the rest of the percentages there. Um, Smile at me in chat, YouTube and Twitch, if you felt like that information enriched your life and made a big difference for you. Um, anyways, with that, Ornlu, let's start off the series here. Gregory 7 for his Gajamata, game number one on Bypass. I'm sure we're going to have plenty of time to break it down. And actually, I forgot humans could be strong on Bypass as well, honestly. Yeah, and, uh, I was thinking that is a possibility. And indeed, that is exactly yeah. what we're going to be seeing game number one. Gajamata versus Gregory the Seventh. Let's go. Sick. Let's do it. All right. So, I mean, there's been some heavy speculation so far, as there always are in Hidden Cups, on who these players are. 
But we know they've got some banger civilizations here to start it all off. We've got the humans for Gajamata. We've got the Burgundians for Gregory the Seventh. And we have uh, one of many Hidden Cup exclusive maps, uh, Bypass here. Now, the way Bypass works is you have an opening through the middle. So a uh, normal hideout or arena, for example, you start with walls, but it's harder to be aggressive if you wish to. Uh, here on this map, there's that opening directly through the middle. Either player could, could walk right through their gate and start to batter down those walls. Uh, and so the option is there, but of course there's plenty of reason to also be on the outside. And the outside has plenty of food, plenty of stone, and plenty of gold. And honestly, I think some of the best games here come when one player is pushing through the middle and the other player then retreats around to the outside. But uh, I'm going to start it off with this, Orin Lu. I think the humans, you kind of know that they are going to aim for that second TC. Um, where do you build it on this map? Can you build it on the side, maybe? That would be pretty bold, because if you want a perfectly efficient economy uh, with your typical uptime with uh, cumins, you usually want to build yeah. it with seven or eight villagers. And sending seven or eight villagers all the way around to the side of the map feels a little excessive. It also kind of opens yeah. you up to just a fast castle and forward siege and whatnot. But I do think yep. that just being humans in itself already sort of puts a little bit of pressure on Gregory the Seventh. In my opinion, no other sim in the game forces your opponent to just bend their strategy than having to deal with the Cuban boom, even if you're a really strong eco civ like Burgundians. Spot on. Yeah, and it, you know, it's interesting. I On the flip side of that, if there was maybe, oh man, Ostrich is trolling Gregory here, but if there was maybe <laughs> one player or one civ that I have seen actually catch up when it comes to the economic aspect of the Cuban 2TC boom, it might be the Burgundians on the 3TC boom. But that means you're not applying any pressure and the humans are always going to come with something at some point. So I'm with you. I think that the the Burgundian player probably wanted a boomy, chill game and is looking at humans right now and being like, oh man, why did I not ban that? <laughs> well, that's what I would do if I face humans in any given draft. But yeah, I mean... Th the big question is really, what do you want to do with Burgundians? Because they're not your typical aggression sieve. Their best units, cavalry, gunpowder, halbs, those all take a long time to tech into and are units you want to make with a big economy. You want to spam them all over the place. They're not especially yeah. uh, efficient in terms of preserving their uh, their lives over a long time. So it, we'll have to see how aggressive Gregory wants to take this. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe a strategy here, because the humans can't stonewall themselves. Maybe a strategy here, um, if you wanted to boom if you're Gregory, is actually just to stonewall the middle area. And if you get uh, like two tiles of stone walls, I know the Cumans have capped ram and whatnot, but could delay some type of push there. Now, one thing I wanted to remind people of is you cannot build where the corpses are, that sandy area in the middle there. So um, you can build around that next to the walls, but you cannot actually castle drop the middle easily. I think if you could do that, going Castle Drop would be the most common strategy on the map. Oh, for sure. And Castle Drops can still be quite strong if you fought, if you use a some sort of siege push before it and then drop the castle, like where your opponent's palisades are. But yeah, yeah the yeah. quicksand in the middle of the map, you can't build on it. But I still think the as we have the 19 pop-up time here for Gajamata, all very normal stuff with humans. After the 2TC boom, how do you want to play things as humans, right? Because you kind of have two different directions to go in. Do you add in a bunch more TCs and go for a more cavalry-heavy yeah. approach? Or do you just want to go for a fast imp castle drop and use Kipchoks against Burgundians who don't really have great ranged options? Yeah, it's tricky. I think Kipchak is really strong. I, 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 there's been this debate, though, over the years. You know, Dave, who's going to join eventually for Hidden Cup 5, he has he abhors the Kipchak. He hates the Kipchak. He thinks it's the weakest unit ever. I take the more, you know, mediocre approach of really cheap unit, really strong for what it is, and it suits the human timings. Um, but the, what I, where I feel the kip check is, is strong is in the castle push forward situation. And I do wonder if that's going to be possible here if you can't build the castle in the sand. Because you could argue, like, it's going to be really important to have control of the sides. And if you... If you're going to need to control multiple areas, I think that's where you might want knights or step lancers uh, that you can kind of split up instead of the more common range unit, the Kipchak. Yeah, I mean, the thing with Kipchaks is that 
They are a cheap and generally weak cav archer, so they're really bad if you're trying to tech into them because you still have to train them from the castle, it's kind of slow to get going. So if you're going for something and then Kipchoks, usually it's a very weak and slow switch. But as you were saying, yeah, T90, yeah. if you're going for the Kipchoks preemptively, you start to build those numbers earlier, that's when the unit can look so strong. But it's it's a very polarizing unit depending on the situation you find them in. Okay, Ornlu, so we've seen enough sets now. You've been covering the games. I'm just going to say a player, and I want a yes or no, and if you think we've seen them. Can I put you on the spot with that? Go for it, man. Okay, I'm going to give you a softball. MBL? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, MBL. Uh, Hera? No. There's my hot take. Okay. All right, all right. And then uh, the Viper? No. Okay, interesting. All right, well, you know, a player who might be in the conversation with the final two there, uh, Tato has always been in love with his human 2TC boom and Tower Rush. I would say Tato and then also Yo are the two that I recall doing that the most. And that's what this is here for Gajimata. So the two town centers are up producing vills, but then some of those vills are going forward and they're building a tower in this middle region. Yeah, this is a really interesting strategy, and as you're saying, it's one that we've seen Tato do plenty of times. So the idea behind this, guys, is you go for the forward tower and try and use this to keep your opponent in the Feudal Age, because if you're both in Feudal Age, humans will have a better eco than everybody because you've got that second TC working. Whereas, especially for a sieve like Burgundians, you have that strong economy. If they can get up the castle quickly and just add extra TCs themselves, then humans aren't going to yep. find themselves with the degree of an eco advantage that they generally look for. Yeah, this, and this is just something that is so annoying if you're Gregory, because you're already thinking, he's getting ahead, he's getting ahead, I need to rush the castle. And this isn't cheap. I mean, the blacksmith in the market was going to happen anyways, the houses certainly aren't going to hurt, but this is not something that he wanted to deal with. The, having said that, I do feel like the, the reaction from Gregory has been really smooth. We've got an immediate counter tower, that's prepped and that's up. The house foundation should keep the opponent away. And he is at least inching closer to Castle Age. But I really like Gajimata's opening. I think this just gives you like an extra minute or two of time when it comes to that eventual push from Gregory the Seventh. At the very least, you forced out Loom from your opponent. You might have to use the market a little bit, although it's pretty close to clicking up to Castle Age organically. But you forced that tower, which means maybe Gregory the Seventh has to go onto stone that he otherwise didn't want to do. And yeah, there you go. Yeah. My two bills on the mining camp on stone. If you're trying to go for just the most pure boom approach, that is actually a little bit of a pain. And yes, you having those little differences in, okay, maybe my boom isn't as efficient matters so much against humans because you need to have that picture-perfect economy to keep up with them. Look at the tower. That tower, it, it almost <laughs> feels very campaign-esque, right? Where it's, you know, I guess if he moved it back next to the wall, it would look a bit better. But just another tower to hold control over the area. Gregory's going to drop a stable here. He's getting the Castle Age Eco upgrades now on the cheap and an age earlier with the Burgundians. So I, I don't think Gregory's going to be massively concerned right now. But honestly, man, like, I'm seeing why humans were banned so much. I, I, The Vil count's insane for Gajimata right now. Yeah, it is just pretty ridiculous. Right now, Gajabata has two TCs constantly churning out villagers. Gregory the Seventh has zero because his TC is currently working on Castle Age. Now, once you get to Castle Age, add those extra TCs, you will catch up, but it's just you're front-loading so many extra resources as Gajamata. And since you're pointing out the campaigns, I do just want to say that Gajamata is playing the campaign correct color as you play red in the Gajamata campaign, whereas Gregory the Seventh uh, doesn't appear in any of them, so doesn't okay. matter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also, um, if... People are thinking Tato, because this is a strategy I think of when we think Tato. Tato is known for picking red more than any other color in tournaments other than Hidden Cup. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, did, he did go like gray and blue, and he did also do red 50% of the time, but it's not like a sure thing, of course, to speculate on. But 52 vils against 30 right now. Siege Workshop's going to come up for Gregory, and this is going to be Knights and Siege. And this is where the human player needs to find a way to just delay this push as much as possible and try and get up to the castle age. 
and that can be something that's pretty tricky to do, because as you were saying earlier, humans don't get stone walls. Yeah, your palisade walls are a bit tankier, but that doesn't really matter too much versus mangonels. And the rush distance being so short, it was nice in applying the early pressure as Gajamata, but suddenly you could find yourself on the back foot. Yeah, you're pretty close to clicking up to Castle Age, but you're not really there quite yet, and it's still going to be another two plus minutes before you even can think about adding in your own mangonels. That was really interesting there. Gregory pulled Vils to repair the blacksmith so it wouldn't go down, knowing the siege was going to be here. I mean, a lot of players there might just be like, crap, I mistimed that. You don't really think about villagers against the blacksmith that frequently, but he deletes his house. Here he comes, and Gajamata must be concerned because it is just feudal age right now for Gajamata. And Gajamata wanted to build another tower, wanted to leave with the villagers, and that's not happening. And for all the positives we could say about this play, for, for Gajamata, at the same time, I'm really impressed with how smooth Gregory is smacking this away. And villagers will die, the towers will go down, and then the TCs could be for the taking next. Yeah, Gregory the Seventh smacking away Gajamata as if he was Henry the Fourth, man. Absolutely no <laughs> fear whatsoever. <laughs> I actually, I as actually a fellow know history nerd with reference. Riley, I, I do appreciate these segments. Yes, I actually know the reference because I just watched the video. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that tower is yeah, going to go down. It's a great defense so far, though, and and well, that even trying to go with another tower here, it's just like everything you can do to buy just that little bit of extra time. Yeah, Gregory uh, did just after I saw two people in my chat say. Uh, these guys are both top five. Gregory did kill uh, two of his own villagers there, but, uh, you know, he's focused on some other things. He has still killed villagers. He's still pushing out across the map, starting to get relics on the outside. Third TC now coming up, and the human player is unable to go for a castle because of all the tower defense here. So it's going to be stable units, and the Burgundians can compete in that department. Absolutely. Humans do have access to camels, though, so at the very least, you can use that to stabilize. And if we're thinking about, was this a success? Gajamata did end up losing four villagers and all of that. At the same time, I mean, look at the TC count just now getting to three for Gregory the Seventh. He's still yeah, behind yeah. by 20 villagers, and that's a 50% difference. And you just add your own third TC at this place, Gajamata. Ooh. No problem whatsoever. Gajamata sniping that. I mean, that is... Listen, you, that siege push could be coming to your base right now. You're expanding to the third town center. You're making more army. You're getting all these techs. To use your starting scout that effectively is extremely high level stuff. I love that from Gajamata. He, he, of course, has a crazy build lead. But then also, I love the stone wall from Gregory because that prevent another monk went down. What in the world? Uh, the stone wall in the middle, uh to finish my thought, does prevent an attack coming through there. Oh, yeah. I mean, this already has the makings of two really good players. I mean, obviously, everyone in this tournament is like a top 20 player, but these guys yeah. are on point with their play so far. you got Husbandry in for Gregory the Seventh. That's going to be an important upgrade to prioritize because humans get it essentially for free at this stage. But mm -hmm. Gajamata himself also he keeps up in his eco upgrades and he is just going to maintain that eco advantage as humans which is going to be so important because their tech tree i think would you could agree is generally worse than burgundians got some lancers here the lancer the the player who made lancers meta at the high level his name is tato he did that with the uh tatars against the aztecs and red bull wolo legacy finals against leary i was there I remember being so pumped to see that these days it's not really a tell to see a couple Lancers. They are really nice to have mixed into the army, especially with the human speed. But fourth TC for Grajimata going to be on the side here, Orlu. He's really looking to expand. And for all we said about Gregory losing monks, he did get three relics already. Yeah, that's pretty sick. I mean, Burgundians get the extra relic bonus. You have the food income as well as the gold income. And something that Burgundians will always have going for them is thanks to the relic bonus as well as the Burgundian Vineyard's unique tech, in a long game, Burgundians actually have a better eco than humans because once you sort of peter off with the, uh, the extra TCs, that doesn't really matter in the long game. So if Burgundians can just stall things out, that's going to be to their advantage. But you still have around a 2,000 resources collected deficit you need to overcome. Yeah, yeah, and, and Gajamata is doing such a good job investing these resources all the time. <laughs> I mean, resources are starting to float a little bit, but it wouldn't surprise me if we see more and more Lancers, more and more Knights, and just flood the map. Because if you can hold 
both side areas, you are going to have full golden stone control there. That's got to be the key. Absolutely. You need to make sure that you're checking to see exactly where your opponent is going because you sort of have three lanes on this map, right? You have the middle passage and then the either side. Now, both of these civs have great cavalry, so it's a bit easier to sort of bounce between the different locations. But now we have the Siege Workshop coming in from Gajamata. So clearly he wants to make something happen. And with this late Castle Age eco advantage for our red player, that is going to be tough for Gregory to stop, even if he already has Burgundian Cavalier. I am... I guess got some chills. Like, I'm feeling the level here. Like, again, like you said, everyone's so good. Maybe you should get a blanket, But the then. awareness... <laughs> well, I, I have one right next to me. You know, the, the level is amazing. The reactions from both of them, just fantastic here. Obviously, Gajamata with a big lead, but Gregory hasn't taken many more losses. Gregory now comes over here, gets a snipe. Lycav now moves in for a monk. Like, this is pretty flawless unit control from both players so far. Yeah, it's really hard to complain with how either of these guys are approaching this. It does feel like Gajamata is the one who's dictating the pace of the game and Gregory is reacting. But still, those reactions are basically perfect. Blue can now afford a castle. He's going to put one up over there on the west side or the south side, I guess, of the map. That's going to be away yeah. from the opponent's siege workshop. But at the very least, it's going to sort of zone off the portion of the map that Gajamata can attack. And if you can take these straight up fights with Cavalier and Monks and maybe some Spearmen, that's where you can do well versus humans. The Siege is a surprise, though. The Siege is a surprise. He didn't know about it, but he reacts to it. And that is the second time Gregory is locked in on a bunch of units. A big fight there. Gregory has to pull away as well. And Gajamata's eco lead is just insane right now. He will lose the Siege. Beautiful job there from Gregory, which means he can hold this area. He's still pulling away here with his mobility. And he will likely get some conversions. No way. Lycav going in. He won't get the conversions. Beautiful play from Gajamata. But the siege goes down, Orin Lu, and I, I feel like if Gregory could get that castle up, well, actually, on second thought, oh my god, he's 40 villagers behind right now. Yeah, you guys wonder why humans are banned all the time? This is why. It's just it's a, a very yeah. unfortunate civ to play against in a, these sorts of closed map situations. Imperial Age on the way here for Gajamata. Gregory's done a great job of stalling and buying time. But how far is that really going to get you if your opponent starts having access to trebuchets? Now, something that is going mm -hmm. in favor of Gregory VII is humans are the only camel civ that don't have heavy camel. So that isn't something that's going to scale all that well into the Imperial Age for Gajamata. Yeah, that's, that's a fair point here. Yeah, and I think maybe that is okay for Gajamata as long as he's able to protect a good position to get a castle down. I'm just noticing he saw the castle there from Gregory. Wouldn't surprise me at all to see villagers headed out that way. I mean, the activity from Gajamata is pretty ridiculous here, man. And we haven't even looked at, like, how quickly he's expanding his eco. We, we've pretty much just assumed these things with him, but he's everywhere. He's, he's left side, he's right side. He started off at home, and he's chasing those cavalier all around the map right now. Absolutely. Now... We still have Gregory the Seventh on the way to the Imperial Age. Yeah, he's only on 84 vills, but it's all about buying time for him. You can get Paladin as soon as you hit Imp with Burgundians. It is a half-price tech. He's expanding out to the side. And if you're just playing the stall game as Burgundians, you are pretty well set up to do that because at the very least, Gajamata can't have a forward castle. So you're not getting treb yeah. down right away. Yeah, and you do have, right now... You do have enough gold to work with. You will eventually run out if, if the position stays like it is. But you have the three relics. You have continuous resource income. And I think, I mean, if humans had heavy camel, I would think this is impossible for Gregory. But with instant paladin click, going up against mainly camel that can't be upgraded in him, I actually think that Gregory has a real solid shot with 30 or so paladin. Absolutely. And it is going to be that Cavalier switch incoming for Gajamata. Humans do have fully upgraded Paladins that also move a little bit faster. So the Paladin quality is actually going to be a little bit higher in the end. We'll have to see, though, can you actually make a fight happen before Gregory starts to develop his own tech switch? Also, the numbers are still pretty good for Gregory. It's still going to be a tough hold, though, because that resource collected difference is just absolutely astounding at this stage. Yeah, I, I, I do wonder if Halb makes the most sense on paper. I, I know that at this point, if you're such a big eco lead, you can maybe just say, ah, screw it, you know, and, and go for the option he's going for here. But we'll see. If there's any regret for Gajamata, it might be going for Cavalier against what will be Paladin, but still 40 villager lead 
It feels like Gajamata could probably do Cavalier and Halb. And actually, hold on a second. Gajamata is going to click Paladin as well. Just paying the full price for it here, huh? Wow, that's crazy. Oh, he's got rich man problems right there. His own numbers are climbing. He's only at 18 to 22, so that's a very small deficit. And having more resources collected, this is no problem. That castle is being denied for the time being. And I can't help but agree, Halb feels essential. It's the only way you can take fights with a worse economy. So if your units are just significantly more efficient than what your opponent is doing, and Halbs versus Cavalry is probably the most obvious way you can go about that, especially as Burgundians here. Okay, so there is, and this is a stretch, but there is a 20 second window for Gregory <laughs> where he <laughs> can have Paladin and his opponent does not. So here's Castle's getting denied. Most of his Cavalier are over here. He's being tread pushed on the other side. But in a minute, that window will open just ever so slightly. But man, oh man, I mean, it's just, it's just nonstop from Gajimata. He's on the left-hand side. He's got Cavalier on the repair villagers there. Desperation from Gregory, who's running out of gold. Hasn't tech switched at all. He hasn't had the time to even think about it. 150 bills now for Gajimata. And the camels are doing well enough there. And this feels inevitable, Orin Lu. I mean, even before we see Paladin come in. Absolutely. I mean, you're going to take the best fight you possibly can, but still just before Paladin is in, looking at around a 50 pop difference at this point, you're about to have the quantity and quality advantage here as Gajamata. He's got more map control. As you're saying, the gold is going to be a bit of an issue. It's just difficult to sustain Paladins uh, for any amount of time unless you have a really strong economy. Going to try and delay things a little bit more. It's what has kept Gregory in this game, but right now that castle's going to go down as there is just no stone to repair it. Yeah, and, and and now you see your opponent has Paladin too, and well, your opponent actually has Superior Paladin. So best of luck with that. Uh, you know, the three relics makes you hope if you're Gregory the Seventh here, but Gregory the Seventh first game in the series, and you don't know who your opponent is in this tournament. Gregory the Seventh is probably has this big feeling of oh no, <laughs> like oh no, who is this? Who is up against me right now? Yeah, I mean, this has just been basically perfect execution from Gajamata. And it's not just, oh, I'm just piloting humans and this is just like a Civ win. The amount of unit movement he had with his light cab in the mid game, delaying things with the Tower Rush and Feudal Age, I mean, this is playing the Civ to about as close to perfect yeah. as possible. Now you're charging in with around 40 fully upgraded human paladins. And uh, yeah, you're not really stopping that at this point as Gregory. Even even early guilds right now, there's not many players that do that. I I, I'm really feeling the Tato vibes. It's hard not to when the Cubans yeah. are played that perfectly. Gajamata wins game number one. And Gregory the Seven, I'll be honest, didn't make many mistakes. I think if both players play to their max level, the Cubans usually are going to have a bit of an edge there. Gajamata just took every edge he could get there and ran with it. The Tower Rush, the two TCs, and just he just exploded in Castle Age to win game number one. Absolutely. I mean, almost double the gold collected for Kajamata. That makes a lot of Paladins. Just having that uh, timing advantage with Imperial Age, even by a little bit. I mean, it's, again, it's you're, like you're saying, Gregory's not making many mistakes. It's just, if yes. you're in this sort of situation, you could argue that just giving your opponent humans on a map where you were walled at the start is already playing at a disadvantage. Yeah, well, crazy start. Now, I have been on the other side of that before. Players who are playing in this tournament have encountered this situation enough times now, okay? And you just look at that and you say, okay, I had no chance. If, if, if he's playing humans perfectly, I had no chance. I think as a player, you just like, okay, whatever. That's their first pick. I still have my first pick, the Dravidians. Uh, hopefully I get my win with that. And maybe we'll see them try and recover. But sometimes when you're looking at the very best players, they do just feel like it's a bit like a tennis match. Like the the person with the serve, or thus the stronger pick, should be the one who has the edge. Um, and it kind of goes back and forth. So we don't know really too much right now about Gregory the seventh level. I do think the Cumans kind of pushed him down. I felt like the stone walls were smart. I felt like the cavalier move was great. Um, I think it's easy to be like he should have gone how, but he was 40 vils behind. And then his opponent would just see that and switch into kip checks so i think gajamana just played a perfect game honestly yeah i mean it was clearly well prepared well executed and we'll have to see if gajamana can keep that up because the cubans pick first as you're saying clearly there was a lot riding on this 
So mm -hmm. we'll have to see. We're probably going to go to one of the uh, hybrid maps of Evacuation or Cup, Mudflow even. You can see some ships as well. So we'll have to see in a much different setting how Gregory is going to do things. Yeah, absolutely. Game two coming up. And what will Gregory pick? I hope it's Evacuation. And this is precisely what I wanted to see here. And precisely what I did not expect from Gregory, the player who who lost, he goes for the gods here of all civilizations. And Ornlu, right off the bat, before we can even talk about the lack <laughs> of wood on this map, I do have to point out the fact that there is that boar on the shoreline. And the players have been some players. We've seen two players go get that boar with a scout. I can't help but feel like with the goths, that hunt out there, with the hunt lasting longer, that could be very important. Oh, for sure. Just getting that extra food, getting that early lead. We've seen that be a major factor for these players on this map. And what are you doing there, Mrs. Lady? You've got a forward villager quite early on. Goths Ooh. very much known as the laming sieve. And Georgians themselves, they start with 50 less food. They're a bit more vulnerable to these sorts of early pressures than most sieves out there. Yeah, so I wonder if Gregory's just sending the villagers directly to disrupt the food in some way. Uh, kind of a little history of the map. Originally, we had the rhinos on the front in some of our test versions. And I told the players, pretend like it's the most important game of your life when they play. And guess what? All my rhinos were stolen. Everything was <laughs> lamed. But we never really had someone go to the other area. It seems like Gregory has found this rhino. And Gregory is not happy about how good the economy was from Gajimata in the first game. And hold on a second. I thought we saw the Master Boar Lamer in the previous series, this is a very quick lame. And will he kill it with the scout? Oh, this is he not somebody who's a stranger to lame. Wow. Okay. So to explain that, if a villager kills a rhino, you could still take the food from it. You just have to walk over there. But players who are really good at it will get the timing right. So they're, if their scout kills it, if military kills it, then it cannot be taken at all. And now there's a villager here, and Gajamata doesn't know about any of this. And can Gajamata quick wall? Gajamata gets the all quick right. wall down. Oh, man. Oh, the wait. Enough, enough HP there. That villager is having a rough time. No loom, no fun. And right now, just a nice little bit of a block on the scout. There shouldn't be any way this villager survives. <gasps> and uh, Gregory the Seventh clearly decided that uh, Gajamata was not allowed to have fun this game. Yeah, seriously, that's exactly what this is. It's like you are going to have the worst freaking time because you decided to pick humans, right? Beautiful play from Gregory. So now you're a vill up. There's our villager, villagers boxing slow-mo. Uh, you're a villager up. You're a rhino up. The goths also receive more hunts uh, or more food from their hunt. It lasts a little bit longer. And suddenly you don't feel so bad about wandering around with a villager, which I think in some sometimes when you do this, Ornlu, if you don't find the reward, you really feel the fact that your villager has not been collecting resources. I would say that for most people, but the fact that you went for the last hit with the scout, like Gregory knows what they're doing. You know, you send that villager <laughs> forward. There, there is guaranteed loss, but you're going to find a way to guarantee some I think damage. Gajamata is looking for that boar. Gajamata is looking for that boar, knowing it's there. These guys know their stuff about the map. And now Gajamata is again probably like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, he definitely wants to take that boar, and Gregory's not going to let that happen. Wow. Absolutely not. That villager is running off into the wilderness all by her lonesome, and that's not what you're doing. All of those deer have been lamed. And, I mean, as far as things go, Gajamata's been doing a good job of minimizing idle time, but this is still not at all the start you're looking for, especially because Georgians, mm -hmm. they're not really a sieve that have many bonuses going for them until you start making your uh, Manaspa. <laughs> And can can you palisade the there? Or does, it was it was I, definitely I blocked, blocked by, the by the deer carcass. Yeah, it was definitely <laughs> blocked by the deer carcass. He has to reposition. I'd be really impressed if here he's able to kill it with the scout. I think you just are happy with it to die there. Yeah. And as we have some stats fly on screen, I mean the thing we haven't gotten a chance to talk about is why you picked the Georgians, and that would be the mule cart, which could be really effective because you can drop off the hunt and the wood at the mule cart, but I mean, and for now it's just fishing ships and what's left of the sheep there and cows for Gajamata. And this has been an aggressive, scrappy start to game number two. 
Oh yeah, it, it's been a lot of fun, and I gotta say, so far, I'm liking this map a lot. It's played out very differently the few times I've seen it, as players are even going for docks at very different times, which is really unusual for a hybrid map. You usually just want to get that down as quickly as possible. So yeah. even though all of that laming happened, there are still more fishing ships for Gajamata, and that's going to help bolster his food eco and keep him at least more smoothly going into the mid game than he otherwise would be. Yeah, I think due to the lack of wood on the mainland or on the like starting island. It's now more of a question instead of a guarantee of if going for fishing ships is worth it, right? I think on other maps where you just have so much wood, it's like, yeah, of course, I have to add fishing ships or I'd be stupid not to. But now it's like, you invest wood into a couple extra fishing ships, you're exposed. You, know, you could have some real problems here. So as we see both players send villagers off to the, the green land uh, or the mainland, I've been calling it, um, We'll see what the focus now is here, because again, in, in my preparation for, for this map and this event, I had some strats built solely around denying this wood, because everyone comes here for wood or that food. And so you can lose your fish if you could get, say, like three villager kills with man-at-arms, maybe fast archers to that area. Well, speaking of men-at-arms, that is a forward barracks, and we have some militia incoming here. Gregory the Seventh has felt that it has been too long since Gajamata's life has been made miserable. So let's just come back in here again <laughs> with some more swordsmen. This You'll be able to pick up men-at-arms once he gets energy. a little bit more gold. <laughs> oh, man, this is... And this is definitely something that only certain types of players like to do, right? Like, this, this could possibly narrow it down, and thankfully you can move... You could bring the mule cart with you here if you're Gajamata and just find some other trees here. But when you see your opponents in feudal age for a certain amount of time, you know man at arm is coming in and he's got to be careful. Is he actually going back to the wood next to the barracks? That's wild. Uh... He's just going to chop wood next to the barracks for now. Well, I guess so long as you're chopping wood, you just want to go to the, the closest possible location to minimize your villager idle time. Yep. Looks like the Vils on Gold have been walled in. Of course, the Goth men at arms are going to take down the extraneous houses pretty quickly. And behind all of this, Gajamata is going for some fire ships. So he's going to at least have a better chance than his opponent to win control of water and keep those five fishing ships afloat. How is Gajamata not dead? Villager down, Rhino down. At this point, fighting back on water, builds the tower there, defends from the men at arms. Gajamata. We said the same with Gregory in the first game when Gregory was behind, how impressed we were. I am equally as impressed with Gajamata. Gajamata has had so many bad things thrown his way. And for now, he seems somewhat okay. Yeah, I mean, you look at somebody who had that good of execution in the previous game when things were going cleanly, able to adapt to a very messy game like this one. I mean, players yeah. that don't typically do super well in both situations relative to the other players at the top level, but Gajamata clearly comfortable in literally any situation you can throw at them. Gregory still being in a nuisance with all of those forward infantry units killing houses, but right now things are at least more or less even. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, Gajamata's double dock and consistently making fires. It is very likely Gajamata's five fishing ships will not be touched and that Gajamata will end up killing the fishing ships from Gregory here. Now, what Gregory is finding, though, is that there is very little resistance here on land to this infantry play. And that palisade wall goes down. And these villagers, they should be savable. They're, if this is noticed, I assume that Gajamata is distracted. Gajamata loses the vill and now wheels away as he's building a tower. And oh, my goodness. That was incredibly close. Well. Yeah, at least saves one of those villagers. The villager on the dock of Gregory's did go down, so we are at two kills to one economically in favor of Greg. And Double Bidax is just now incoming, and uh, I think that upgrade is in for Gajamata. I can't quite tell based on the color, it but is. Yep. that is going to be at it least... Is, yep. Okay, yeah. You need to catch up at least as far as that goes. Exactly. Nice <sighs> job there from Gregory. Goes back in. Man, the infantry has just done wonders. Exactly. You know, there is a point where you do then think, should I go for something to kill the villagers on the mainland. Uh, in Gajamata's case, he's just going to use the starting scout. Now, people have been saying Viper for Gregory. If this is Viper, we will see a quick wall attempt. And that villager will not die. 
It's pretty weak. And well, I mean, yeah. Gajimata hasn't really made him work for it, in all honesty. I think I could have maybe executed that wall. So <laughs> let's not jump oh, to Oh, come any on, Tina. Let's not go overboard. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Casters are only supposed to say nice things about me. Okay. Those are the rules. Oh, yeah. My, my bad. My bad. <laughs> I kid, man. Uh, but uh, uh, but also, I, mean, I hey, gotta point out Gajimata making nice use of the uh, scout regenerating HP, just poking at some bills and running out later. Ah, uh, that, that's true. Yeah, that scout will be as good as new. And also where the scout has been, right? The scout double-checked the docks. The scout saw some of the activity there on land in both areas. And I, right now, it feels like Castlage is going to come in for Gajamata. Like Gregory has not had a bad game at all. And it, I'm, again, just impressed with Gajamata's ability to survive. Gajamata adding more fishing ships now. This, I, I thought it was jumping to conclusions a little bit with the Cumans. Because cumins are cumins. But how Gajamata has played this is making me think this is a top five talent. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're only getting more information to reinforce that idea and not less information. Currently, five yeah. fire ships to four. Of course, it comes down to how these guys can take the fight. Nice job trying to get the concave there as Gajamata. And indeed, is going to be clicking Castle Age way sooner than his opponent. And super importantly for Georgians, he's got a lot of stone income. Yeah, and, you know, the Georgians, they didn't really do that well during the qualifier. A lot of times players were just playing towards the Manaspa and not really able to either find other bonuses with the Georgians or utilize other bonuses with the Georgians. Here, we've seen the Mule Cart have a massive effect. It has been much easier to just relocate villagers than with any other, with the Civ that didn't have a Mule Cart, right? Um, and now you've got an eco lead because you have fishing economy and your opponent does not. And then, then you're also going to get the Manaspa. Like, the Manaspa is a ridiculously strong unit. And on this map, how are you supposed to defend from Manaspa running in and out of your eco? It's going to be very difficult, if at all possible. It is just such a tough unit to stop. It's fast, it's strong, it's well-armored, and it just snowballs even more over time. Goths, as far as stopping that goes, I mean, you can spam a lot of cheap pikemen. But if we're getting to the point when there's a lot of Manaspa on the field running all over the place, it should be quite tough for uh, oh, good, Greg. Good yeah. demo there from Greg, though. This is a big moment. It looked like Gajimata was maybe going to be able to defend. Gajimata distracted and won't necessarily lose every fishing ship here, but certainly could lose a couple. A lot of things to focus on here. I think Gajimata will realize that and rectify it, but... Now, Goths, they can go for Pikemen. We do have uh, Spears on the way right now for Gregory, so Pikemen upgrade could probably be in. That's Scout. I feel like every time we look over at Gregory's base, it's moving around here for Gajimata. Oh, yeah, that is plenty of doing, and there it is, the castle right at home. It is on the crack terrain, notably, in case there's any sort of Castle Age push shenanigans. But yep. right now, it is just Gajimata laser-focused on getting to his unique unit and playing that more... Okay, it doesn't really matter what you do, because so long as I get to my Manaspa Mass, I am going to be cruising this game. Gajamata wants to know where those villagers went. He is looking for those vills. He is very, he's wondering, where are the villagers? I saw them on the berries there. They're not here right now. Maybe catches a glimpse of that one, but that is likely going to be a TC. Gregory's going to drop a TC immediately, probably on the wood line and the berries. And here come the Manaspa now. So pikes need, need to be out there. Uh, it'd be very fitting for Gregory the Seventh to maybe make a monk at some point to maybe get conversions. There's the TC. Scout goes down. Manaspa coming to the main eco where there's another TC. And <laughs> we need all hands on deck here in defense <laughs> against this unit. It produces quickly. And it could kill Gregory's villagers very quickly with how exposed things are around this base. Yeah, that's going to be quite tough. Georgians, of course, a great defensive sieve themselves. Got that fortified church. You can just garrison the bills in. They'll fire some arrows, some spinning arms. A little bit awkward trying to do some damage. And right now, it is. it feels like Gajamata, despite a rocky early game, he's getting to where he wants to be at this point. Yeah. I will say, with the, with the Goths, there's... Oh, what a snipe there from Gajamata. Weak villager on a farm and noticed it. Now, I will say, Jeez. though, Gregory recognizes that the fish boom is a problem and has been looping in random fires to kill the fish. So a lot of the fish is going down. And it's going to be a 4TC boom from the Goths here. And Goths on 4TCs can be incredibly strong. Now, not so strong if you're losing villagers underneath that TC. 
Uh, that's not good. But, yeah, there's a monk there. Gregory forces a delete at least, kills the other Manaspa. And I, I'm i thinking about the tech tree. I think I think Goths might be superior in the Imperial Age, honestly. Full infantry spam with all these little nooks and crannies, all these little areas that could be open in the long run. It could be really tough for uh, Gajamata. I didn't know the Georgians had a tech tree. I thought it was just blank and then a Manaspa at the castle. That's all you need. <laughs> well, I think it's like... I think they do get gunpowder, which is relevant to this matchup. I think they do uh, you get, get hand cannon. cannons. You get hand cannoneers, which you can actually garrison inside your super good towers, and they'll fire a bunch of extra bolts that can pass through a bunch of goth infantry. Dude, Orin Lou, I've never heard you more excited to say anything in your life. You've been waiting for that, haven't you? <laughs> I think you've what been waiting for that. Like Did you hear that, guys? Did you, did you hear that? That was immediate. He was like, finally, finally I get to say it. <laughs> Wait, so, so hold on, though. I didn't even fully listen to what you said. You said you garrison hand cannons in a tower and it fires something other than a normal projectile? It fires extra bolts because you don't have Arbalest, so your highest DPS unit for adding extra arrows to a tower is going to be the hand cannon here. And I think you can get oh, three I got a... bolts. Okay, but it's not shooting, like, gun powder, right? It's just arrows. Well, they're scorpion bolts, essentially. And they deal full pass-through damage, by the way. Not how, like a scorpion that how do you put damage. a dude in a tower with a gun and get scorpion bolts from it, game? It, I mean, this it doesn't is a game sense, where but anyways. five karambits and five elephants are the same uh, space in a transport ship, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it's true. That's a fair point. Uh, Ten villager lead right now for Gregory. And like we said, and like every low elo player out there has experienced the gods... If you don't kill them off, they could be incredibly strong. Uh, both these players, though, missing some pretty critical eco upgrades. We don't have Horse Scholar for either player. And then the, the second wood upgrade is missing for Gregory. But I, I honestly, I don't think that takes away from player skill. I think that just comes back to how hard they have to work on a map like this. Yeah, it, it is tough. You just have to defend all over the place. Clearly, these are both quite fast players. Um, the multitasking yeah. has seemed fairly good for both of them. And especially Gajamata in particular is just so precise with his unit movements, making sure that he is just eking out every little bit of value who he can with his cab. And oh, and able to just dive into the TC there. Yeah, nice, nice try from Gajamata. Now, the strength of the Manaspa is when you get a big mass of them. They get extra attack the, the greater that mass gets, but mass, not something that Gajamata has really been able to keep up. And he might be considering whether or not that's really worth it. Look how fast these guys are getting relics. We're going to have relic number three for Gregory in a second. And I remember he was fast to relics in the previous game. And now we're about to have relic number two for Gajimata. We may actually see the relics in the north and then the very west collected. We have a very cool looking area of the map uh, in those corners. And yep, yeah, there you go. You got Gajimata wandering over to the treasures. And it uh, wouldn't surprise me if we see a monk there as well. We are going to have every single relic collected. It's wild. Uh, yeah, I mean, these guys are just so on top of things, right? I mean, as much as I made fun of you for getting chills in the last set, I mean, this is just... It is inherently exciting to watch gameplay of this level. I mean, this is why we do what we do, right? Yeah, this is... this is Yeah. Feels like... I mean, only one player gets to move on from this series. It feels like the loser of this series... It's going to be a big name dropping out of the round of 16. Now, what I love is how we are seeing how important water still is. And I think Gregory's going to find out the hard way. If you're trying to send villagers to the to the mainland, you're going to run directly into fire ships and demo ships if you don't have anything on water there. So nice job from Gajimata to recognize that. Now, Pikeman could help out and maybe poke some holes in the ships. And uh, okay. <laughs> Who needs Navy when you've got the pointy boys? Absolutely. Easy peasy. Of course, that is a legacy back when camels were ships. Pikemen do have bonus damage against uh, anything that was formerly a uh, a camel or a ship. A so camel. they are good against those <laughs> units. And uh, I mean, still, it... both players are expanding their eco. Yeah. Also, a couple fortified churches going up and some positions... Also noticing Gajamata immediately sending some demos to that area where the pikemen were. Again, a lot of people speculated maybe Tato. I think picking the color red when I think Tato. I think humans when I think Tato. I think new maps when I think Tato, which is what evacuation is. Uh, mule cart civilizations for Tato. Maybe someone like Doubt or something. But there go the demos. Here come the Manaspa. 
And this game is dead even right now. Both players still missing eco upgrades. But, I mean, the, the amount of villagers they have is just ridiculous. Okay. Clearly read as somebody who is active with demo ships, but look at that, guys. Gregory's clicked up to the Imperial Age. Okay. Could be worse. I mean, those are He's like he... That actually might not even be an even trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imp on the way for Gregory. Just wondering when the eco upgrade check comes in for these guys. And there it is. This is common. It's like you clicked up to the next stage, and it's like, okay, eco upgrade check. Do I have everything? And the horse collar one is a big one. More pikemen obviously going to be on the way. But look at this forward position from Gajamata. Gajamata has pretty much given up on the starting area. And is dropping a one villager castle in the middle. Because he feels like he's going to have control there. But that's quite a few pikemen he's about to run into. Well, pikemen are getting converted. That's some solid monk control there for Gajamata. Who himself is quite close to clicking up. But still, the big advantage when Imperial Age comes in is just the Halb upgrade. Getting Halb out, yep. you're going to start to overrun those fairly low Monospin numbers, which I got to say, Gregory's done a really good job of trying to minimize the Monospin numbers as much as possible, as they are such a snowball unit gaining that extra attack in larger groups. This feels like a big opportunity for Gregory to start pushing back. Yeah, look at the res collected. It's it's identical. Look at the, <laughs> the Relic count, the Idle Eco count, the Idle TC, the KD, the Eco KD. I mean... A lot of the stats that we have available here, it's very close. And it's 150 pop against 130. Advantage Gregory there. But still, you know, Manaspa quite strong. The The hand cannons are possible for Gajamata. So he's definitely going to lean towards that. But now, Ornlu, it's like, this is where you cannot forget as a player that there's also the starting eco. And both players have dropped the castle there. But still, it's like, there's a lot of exposed eco on both areas of the map right now. Absolutely. The conversions are going to try and force the pikemen back for the time being. But at the very least, Gregory doesn't need to take a fight until Halb comes in in around 20 seconds. So just, yeah, Manaspa attacking barracks, you're not too worried about that. Once Halb come in, comes in, you are just going to be lighting up that production tab. And it is going to be tough for Gajamata to keep this fight going. And that's why he's even building his other castle back at home, I think. Yeah, it's a smart castle. I think I think you're right. I think he recognizes that middle castle is probably not going to accomplish much. Now, new unique tech coming in here for uh, oh. Gajimata. Uh, this is um, a tech that Ornlu is going to explain. I, I think I know what it is, but I forget the name, Ornlu. Help me out. It's called Spawn Towers. So what okay. it does is it turns your arrow, it gives your uh, most of your defensive buildings plus two attack, which is always nice, but it also allows your towers to fire scorpion-like projectiles that deal pass-through damage, which, as you can imagine, you know, scorpions are good against infantry. Svan towers are really good at killing a bunch of goth halves. Wow, interesting. And again, with my mind being stuck on Tato, Tato is the type of guy who would maybe drop the towers. Th that is a, a big differentiator. I think some of the big talents players might be thinking of right now could do everything that Gajimata has done. Very curious to see, though, if this becomes a tower defense play or even offense. Manaspa doing Manaspa things, running in, uh, and this is what we said. There's different areas to hit, and I love how Gajimata has found these areas. Even though Halb is out, there's 50 Halbs on the field apparently for Gregory, but there's nowhere in sight here. Brilliant job there from Gajimata, but at some point, you are going to need to deal with oh. the Halbs, and that's how he does it. <laughs> Tato confirmed, dude. Tato oh. confirmed. Oh my goodness. Gajimata's not beating those Tato accusations. <laughs> <laughs> got Elite Monospa in, oh. and got Chemistry coming in. I mean, you get to Monospa Hand Cannoneer, like, there is nothing Goths do at that point. They're going to roll over and die. Just exploit the mobility of your unique unit. Run around wherever the Halbs aren't. The map is so open, it lends itself to that style of play. And right now, Gregory needs to try and force Gajimata to take a fight. And that's going to be tough to yeah. do. Look at that Lumber Camp. I mean, it's good for him that he didn't build it. That's just a sign of... You no, know, you run out of villagers, you want to send them somewhere. There's nowhere to send them anymore. On a map like Houseboat, for those that know that, sometimes players delete their TC in an area where it gets too frustrating. <laughs> I wonder if it's maybe worth it here on evacuation, but the Halbs are going to make their way through. They are running into the castle fire, though. And so there needs to be some siege from Gregory to be able to take these castles down. 
Because once the castles are out of the picture, obviously you can freely move around, but then the, the Manaspa can't be so annoying anymore. Another demo <laughs> from Gajamata. Oh man, this is looking quite strong here for our red player. Yes, Gregory has the population lead, but the issue is he's not really getting anywhere in this game, right? He doesn't have as good of an army composition in the long run, and so long as Gajamata is able to protect his castles, of course his Manaspa factories, he will most likely win the game simply because he has better units and better mobility. This is crazy. Gajamata is doing a great job at pressuring all these different areas, and Gregory had been patient and waited for Trebs. We've got four or five Trebs moving out across the middle. A castle's already fallen for Gajamata. And a lot of his eco, a lot of his production buildings, a lot of his houses are still there. And that's going to be the area Gregory gets. Now, finally, I mean, the Halbs are there in defense. The Halbs could also keep advancing forward here with the Trebs for Gregory. And it's, I wonder, Gajamata must be prepping hand cannons near the uh, forward castles. So he's, he's prepping for that, but he's going to need hand cannons defensively as well right now where he started this game. I mean, not to live up to the map name, but honestly, don't you think you could evacuate your villagers uh, from the, uh, the, yeah. the starting island, just focus on the mainland and go for the hand cannon push across the front and then use the Vanaspa sort of your utility rating unit? It feels like a pretty smart I, I, way just to sort of set up that doom push that your opponent can't stop. Yeah, I agree. I think you've got to do it. I think you also, you know, as long as you have some hand cannons here to kind of hold the position, things should be pretty okay. But it is still eco that's exposed. It is still pressure that uh, is coming in, and it does it wastes brain space. Uh, that it's something you have to respect and focus on, and it makes life easier for the goth player because then the goth player can go elsewhere. We've got halbs there against monks, which is kind of interesting. Great monk control, and then we've got halbs defending against the Manaspa here, or maybe yeah, they're, they're going to defend and or loot. <laughs> What is this game? This is crazy. We've got so many things happening right now. I mean, there are seven trebuchets right now for Gregory the Seventh. Those are not messing around numbers of trebuchets. Oh, God. <laughs> like, Dude, I, I love he the has idea of like, okay, I just don't want to deal with Manaspa, right? If you don't have Manaspa, yeah. Georgians aren't that great of a sieve. So if I just snipe the castles, I will have a very good <laughs> shot to win this game. But okay. <laughs> Come on, Gajamata, was... beat those Pato allegations, man. <laughs> <laughs> the villagers are... They, we have been told to evacuate. It is not safe here. And then those guys are like, what, what are you doing to me? Um, I'm laughing because that is where I think the Trebs will go for Gregory here in a moment. Because he is has decided, I can't push with the Trebs anymore. I think he's going to send the Trebs that way. And thankfully for him, the villagers sacrificed themselves. <laughs> oh, man. That's hilarious. Their sacrifices will not be forgotten for the greater cause. Yeah, there Gregory you go. Seven. There you go. The Trebs are definitely going that way. Those villagers were MVPs. Huh. Oh, man. It is unfortunate, though. Georgians don't have heavy demo ship, so the, the demo potential is somewhat limited at this point, but... I mean, right now we're looking at Manaspa Hand Cannoneer, and if we think compared to Paladin plus Hand Cannoneer of most civs uh, that can do, do that army composition, that's usually the uh, I am not going to lose this game sort of combo. Yeah. Yeah, and, and sometimes you have to think, this is too expensive for me. But when you are, when you have 40 on gold and it's a map that where you've got a couple relics and you've, you've protected so much, this I think is actually realistic to go Hand Cannons and Manaspa combined. Gregory, both of his units that he's making, the Skirms and the Halps, he's not spending much gold. So if he takes good trades, it could be good. But the gold units are normally, in combination with each other, going to be very difficult to stop. And what? It took like 10 seconds of rest for Gajamata to immediately move out to raid yet again. Oh, man. I mean... It's it's much cheaper than a Paladin. We do have Perfusion on the way for Gregory the Seventh, which is nice. But you also have uh, a Zanari Cavalry in for Gajamata, so his Cav costs less population space. And yep. it's like Paladin, but they cost as much as a Step Lancer, or about the same. And I'm just, that is just going to be tough I'm to just, overcome. It feels quite unnatural to see eight Trebs just chilling there, you know? <laughs> I just find that so yeah. funny. I guess you might need it against the uh, against the Georgian castles, but I guess there's not many hills involved right now. So what not do you think? How do you still... change the game right now if you're Gregory? Like it feels like the momentum is with Gajamata, but 
Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe do you need to change anything as the Goths? Can you be comfortable in this type of a situation? Uh, I, I think it really comes down to sniping castles. There are, what, four or five of them for Gajamada. Mm -hmm. If you can just take those down super deliberately, and I like the idea behind it at the very least with those eight trebuchets, but it is just going to be very difficult to take efficient fights in the long run. Good control of the skirmishers, making sure they're trying to target the hand cannons and the monks. But still, that army quality is just so high right now for Georgians. The good news is Perfusion came in for Gregory. So if he loses Halbs, he's going to immediately replenish them because of the fast production speed. He did take out one of the castles there. And I think Lajamata was thinking, I just took a great fight. Let's continue in. And then poof, all of a sudden there's more Halbs. And... The raids from Gajamata, uh, the main base, the starting eco didn't accomplish that much. The skirms from Gregory have whittled down some of the hand cannon numbers. And I, I could definitely see Gregory starting to push back the middle here. And <laughs> just hope he never goes back across. <laughs> I hope he never tries to send those helps over. Oh my god, that's terrifying. It's just like looking at uh, like a, a narrow channel that's just filled with mines. <laughs> like, you just can't go across it, man. You're going to blow up. <laughs> I mean, he, he's got so many helps. He's sending them, I think. He, he will eventually send units over. The demos are just waiting. Gajamata with Trebs now. He's got to be careful with his Trebs, though. Still thinking that with how quick the reinforcements could be from Gregory, that Gregory could defend from this. But, and again, Manaspa, Hand Cannon Skirmisher has worked wonders. It has been very strong here. And, man, what a series here. Just Mapu, our observer, is going to have to keep a very close eye to the Halbs uh, that may advance across that shoreline. Don't worry, we will not miss that if it happens. Oh man, but these trades are looking pretty ridiculous right now for Gajamata. The Manaspa charging on in. They have three Pierce Armor with the Elite upgrade. Uh, I mean, you're still sending in the units one by one, so that's actually very good for Gregory. That's actually but, good. Yep. Uh, if you can beat those Trebs, that is going to be one way you can at least hang in there for uh, our Goths player. Gregory takes the score lead. Gregory holding on. Remember, it's three to three on Relics, so that is even. Very curious on the, the amount of resources remaining on this map. Manaspa and Hand Cannon and Trebs. It's not cheap. We do have the new feature with Capture Age that will show the amount of resources collected. I'm sure we'll show that here in a moment. Uh, not collected, sorry, remaining. So there's... Obviously, food's going to come in with farms at this point. Wood is, is never going to run out. But there's under 10k gold, which I think is, with what we started, pretty low. Yeah, I think this map has a little bit more gold than your standard Arabia, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. Oh, and there's plenty more to take. Oh my God! Uh, can he see us it? Right there. Yeah. That. I mean, he, you're just chilling right now, as uh, Gregory. You just make helms and skirms all day. Just not spend any I, gold and just try and grind this one out. I don't think he sees it. I don't think he knows. I don't. I don't think he knows that gold is there. He would be on that. That is two untaken gold areas. Okay, he sees one of them. He does not see the other one. He did not get the relic. Fascinating stuff. Uh, well, yep. he's not mining so... gold right now. And if he's not mining gold, Ornlu, maybe pure skirm from the opponent could actually push back this 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 halb skirmisher situation we have coming from Gregory. Well, I love the Trebs trying to take down the other Trebs. And, I mean... Trebs are pretty inaccurate, but if you have enough rocks flying over, it'll eventually take him down. And look at that, Gajamata Ooh. is forced back. Nothing else, Gregory is an incredibly patient player, and there is a lot to be said for that when you're getting to this sort of grindy game as we're closing it on the one hour mark. I agree. Yeah, and oh man, the Halbs actually made it across. <laughs> oh, guys, that was like that was like 50 military that was stuck on the other side. So if Gregory was able to hold with 50 of his pop space not being in position. He could maybe start to push here in a second, and those trebs will be more than just defensive trebs. Here it comes, and remember, there's more halbs in queue. The Goths can go up to 210 pop. It's the only Civ that can say that in a standard game, and those trebs are going to advance forward, Ornlu. This is a real opportunity now for Gregory to finally push back these fortifications. Uh, I just want to point out that uh, you can totally get to 210 pop as Georgians. You just need to have enough cavalry units. Taking up less pop okay. space. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Orlu. Yes, they have a tech where 15% and it's researched. <laughs> of their cap. And it's researched. Okay, that's, that's fair. Very relevant. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, you're correct. Trebs are here. Oh. 
Man, I thought I thought he overmade Trebs. Now I think he made the perfect amount of Trebs there. There's another demo. But I don't think these trebuchets could be stopped. Look how many. This is crazy. Castle's going to go down. I love patience. Like, look how deliberate this is. You take your perfect opportunity to move out as soon as your opponent's just slightly on the back foot. You just start to come in with your eight trebs. You just pop that castle, and there's nothing you can do to try and save that. Unbelievable. This level is insane. Trebs also went down for Gajamata. Gajamata had so much more map control, so much more gold control. And these Trebs, the MVP units of the game, remember four of them were on the other side of the map and helped take out some of the base. But Gregory has saved some of that gold for later. Gregory's mixed in some Huskarls to help against the Skirms. Earlier, I thought that full gold comp, like Hand Cannon and Manaspa would do it. Now I don't know it's realistic at all for Gajimata, and I don't know what to suggest for him. I will say that whoever Gregory is, I think they're one of the better late game players in the, the tournament. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. in early Imperial Age, late Castle Age, Gajimata was way ahead and has a way better Civ for getting into yeah. early to mid Imperial yeah. Age. And the ability that Gregory has shown to just hang in there and keep this game competitive now past the one hour mark is not something very many people can do even in this tournament. And, and especially against whoever Gajamata is, because the, yeah, the way Gajamata played against the lame is ridiculous. Uh, we, we've got, I think, the most competitive series so far in Hidden Cove 5. So don't look away, people, because these are best of sevens. These are not best of fives. And it is going to be a long one. Uh, Hussar Raids finding some kills. But when you do that against the Goths, they then get more population space. <laughs> for their cheap military. So it's going to be a 110 army for Gregory soon. And still these Trebs continue to move forward. Also, can we take a moment to appreciate the Huskarl switch timing? Because you've been saving gold, you at least have a little bit more uh, to work with because you've been making mostly trash units as Gregory. Now that the yep. hand cannon numbers have been mostly reduced <laughs> at this point, in fact, there are no more on the map, you can just start mixing in some Huskarls and they're just going to eat the skirmishers for breakfast. And also, the Cannon Galleon edition, I think, is very smart. Yeah, I wouldn't mind so the Goth player man. making some Dramans, actually. Like, we are really seeing everything here, Orlu. Everything that the, these players could possibly do. Looks like the Cannon Galleons have been noticed. So that may be dealt with here soon, but... More buildings going down for Gajimata. More space, more ground being lost. And Gregory has gold. Like, those two gold piles that were just chilling there. He's noticed. He knows about them now. He's found some extra stone. He's going to poke down the ships. And I am just speech... Well, uh, you know, I need to think of another word in these situations. <laughs> speechless, speechless, saying you're speechless is one of the dumbest things in, in the yeah, American yeah. language, but or English language, but... The American whenever, language? Now, that's what I like for my fellow American caster. Yeah, listen, we don't need to listen. To, we I realized my mistake immediately, <laughs> okay? <laughs> we move on from mistakes here. We do not <laughs> continue to talk about them, but seriously, man, like, what are we supposed to say about this performance? 80 farms for Gajamata. That's insane, but he's still dead. He's got no chance. Not against this Gregory the Seventh guy. Gregory the Seventh is, honestly, this has been, and I've casted all the games too, one of, if not the most impressive single game performance I've seen. Because Gregory the yeah, Seventh was yeah. in an awful position, and it took having yeah. the exact right units at the exact right time, and then making that, those switches at the end, and just hanging in there to try and make this comeback happen. Yeah, absolutely. And so again, from the player perspective, you know the 16 players that are in the main event. You know it, it could be anybody. It doesn't matter what your performances were in other tournaments. You could face whoever you would consider to be your biggest rival or the biggest name in the first round. And I think both players fully recognize the situation right here. Because as I'm saying this, right, Gajamata <laughs> refuses to quit. There's only one Treb now. There used to be eight. Oh, His population man. is at 180 himself. And he is not dead yet, Ornlu. He is actually holding. It felt inevitable that he would die. And here we are again. <laughs> Jeez, man. These are some good AOE2 players. You got Hussar, plus you have Elite Skirmisher. At this point in the game, resources collected are very heavily in favor of Gajamata. Yes, I know Gregory has cheaper units, but still, 
you with those uh fortified churches in the late game your farming eco is ridiculous your lumber camp eco is ridiculous and with three relics you absolutely have the tools you need to force this back and i think gregory the seventh might need to have more forward production if he wants to keep this push going okay so trigger warning viewers at home you know we, we really care about you and your emotions you may want to look away if you have ever had huskarls running through your eco. Um, <laughs> this is about this is about to to bring up some poor memories here for you because uh, at this point, Gregory has enough gold banked, and it's purely skirm and hussar, and the huskarls have started to be spammed. They produce almost instantly. They will deal with the skirm threat, that's for sure, and they will get into that farming eco if there isn't a castle anymore. And so, as good as that hold was from Gajamata, if the Goth player has gold for Huskarls and Halbs, I really fear for Gajamata's long term here, Orlu. Oh, and look at that. We got the long term trio coming in a two man saw, crop rotation, and guilds. Gajamata actually <laughs> had the presence of mind to get those much earlier in Imperial Age, but Gregory getting themselves prepped up for the long game, and it just. Again, you can only go for the Huskarls at this point because you were saving so much gold uh, earlier on when you were going for just trash units. Now that yep. Gajamata has run quite low on gold, he's just making Hussar and Skirm, which he's making fantastic use of in terms of his movement. But still, you only have so many gold units you can play with at this point. Yeah, I agree. It's just, this game just continues to be insane. Now, it's funny to me how we are seeing farms happen on the starting area um players are actually raiding each other and chopping trees on the starting island like that is normally the island players do not focus on but i am seeing movement there i know players have focused there but the main focus obviously is right here and once it's like 30 huskarls and 30 halbs it has to be hand cannons skirms can no longer contribute much and in order to make hand cannons you need to get gold so gajamata is selling off some food Selling off some uh, wood for gold. I think if it gets to maybe 30 hand cannons, Ornlu, I think I could be happy with the uh, situation again for Gajamata. Well, that's what he had earlier, and Gregory the Seventh was still able to beat it out without uh, without any uh, Huskarls. But right now, the castles, there are only two of them. They're all, uh, one of them is pretty low in HP. I love the repairs coming in for Gajamata. A lot of attention to detail from both of these players. But right now, something I'd really like to see from uh, Gregory is just more forward production. Because those goth units, yeah. they train super quickly, but they're still foot soldiers, so they need time to get out across the map. Yeah, I agree. A couple couple siege weapons as well mixed in that looks like bomber cannons is going to be the answer. I think what would help with the forward production is, a, is also a castle in this region. He's banking up some stone for that. I think he'll do that. And, uh, well, man, I, I just got to say again, it's like every time we look at that crossing... Gajamata is sitting there with something, which is so impressive. And there's the castle. <laughs> that is more aggressive than I expected. And a cow has died to the Bombard no! Cannon. I, I was tempted to bring up the cow, but I thought, no, this is <laughs> a pretty unprofessional cast. Maybe I shouldn't, but uh, oh. oh my god. Oh, well, some more Hussar raids coming in. There are 37 Hussars in the queue right now. Gregory's own production is actually looking fairly limited, especially for being Goths, but the castle has been established. And now we need to see Gajamata switch back into Trebs, but if you're making Trebs, those are quite gold expensive, then it's going to be tough to make more hand cannoneers. I, the raids, man. The raids. Gajamata's killed 190 villagers from his opponent. He's finding a way. It is really impressive. He's always finding villager picks. I wouldn't mind seeing Gregory even just palisade walling. Like, Goths don't get stonewall, right? But... <laughs> I think Palisade Walling to at least funnel some of these attacks in towards your castles and your TCs would be really helpful. My goodness. Oh boy, then this is only game two in a best of seven, in our second best of seven of the day. And <laughs> more Hussars trying to run around. And right now, Gregory this is does what I mean, right? run all over the place with his units. Yeah, this is so good. Yeah, like right, right there, that area there, if there's a wall, it's less of a, a, a stressor. And now, like, this, Gajamata is using that raid as a distraction to then find a moment to run in and snipe uh, the Trebs, possibly. So I think that would be a really smart area to focus on if you're Gregory. But his castle that he built very far forward here, I think uncharacteristic of what we have seen from Gregory. I, I expected a more patient castle. This castle, I think he expected more from 
Yeah, I think that maybe there wasn't enough siege initially to accompany the uh, the castle, so he couldn't actually start pushing down his opponent's buildings as much as he would like, especially since Gajah yeah. is doing a great job of pulling at least a decent number of his opponent's population back towards home wow. with the Hussar raids, because you just need to deal with that. You can't rely on defensive structures, and of course we have good monk control at the hour and 15 minute mark of this game. Yeah, and he just, ri just happens to convert a Bombard Cannon at the perfect moment there. Jeez. Okay, I mean, who wins this game? <laughs> this is the longest game so far Us. in Hidden Go 5. Who wins? <laughs> Us, everyone watching this game. I mean, anyone who's I mean, like, getting introduced to competitive AOE 2 with this series, man, like, this is uh, an absolute treat. Yeah, dream of a game. Dream of a game from the, since the start, right? The start has had every, mm -hmm. it brought us everything. The mid game had so many different elements and talking points. Wow, massive, massive battle here, where I think it's important to remind you that the gold units died for Gregory. The Huskarls disappeared there, and the hand cannon mass that Gajimata has seems to be big enough to hold against the Huskarls. And now, I'm I'm beginning to think that Gajimata, even though he doesn't have that relic, even though he's not mining that gold, maybe he could play this until there is no gold remaining. And maybe this combination of, of hand cannons and Hussars could actually win the game for him. Yeah, and anyone who's played like a lot of post imp AoE2 knows that having the gold ranged unit versus the gold melee unit is just absolutely essential. And a lot of this mm -hmm. is just by nature of the sibs right now, the way that the, the units match up against each other. But if you can keep those hand cannons alive, which is easier because they're obviously ranged units, that will allow you to even grind down the cheapness of the goth army. Yeah. Oh my goodness. How many people watching right now who voted that it was Hera in the very first series of Hidden Cup 5 are maybe considering that Gajimata or Gregory could be someone like Hera? Hera, the winner of Hidden Cup 4, one of the favorites here for this Hidden Cup. And you've also got Tata, then you've also got Viper. Okay, we got some people saying no. Interesting that people are saying no. Maybe they're they're locked on someone else here, Ornlu, but people are sticking with their guests so far. If but there's I anything I can expect, it's consistency from Twitch chat. That hallmark of <laughs> reasoning, logic, and measured comments. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's tough when you've got, you know, everybody watching bits and pieces here or there. And yeah. <laughs> very easy for them to change their minds. If we make a mistake, like, I don't know, saying American instead of English, people <laughs> will clip it and it will be shared and jokes will be made. Uh, that's not necessarily <laughs> the same for the... Twitch chatters out there. Uh, I don't know what the what dance that Huskar or Hussar was doing, but that was clip worthy. And we we've got 200 pop for both. The uh, Cannon Galleon's gonna get poked down by Halbs just as everyone expected, and this game continues on. What a grind! You know, I, I know some people don't like this sort of game, but I absolutely love it. It's just so strategic. Both players have to be feeling pretty tired. They've been pushed to the limit. This hasn't been a very passive game. I mean, it's been yeah. constant action from Dark Age with the forward villagers from Gregory. And right now it's just about who can just keep that going a little bit longer to just grind down their opponent. Yeah, I think there's a key in these games that, and it's very rare that it gets talked about. Um... Or I think you're like me. I think your win rate as a player goes up the longer the game goes. Is that correct? Uh, my average game time, I think, is over an hour long. So, yes. Okay. So, we... All right. So, we've got late game strategists here in the casting booth. So, yeah, the, yeah. I think at a certain point when gold is limited, trying to siege push down a position against the really good players could sometimes be a mistake. And I think you're actually... And Gajamata's doing this. Gregory's trying to do this. Your, your goal actually is to... You know... Thousands of units are going to die. But I think you want to just get some random halbs and some random hussars, I guess, in Gajimata's case, into the eco, right? And then you wait. And once their eco has been, been damaged enough where they need a recovery period, then you try and go in with the siege. And that seems to be exactly what Gajimata is happy to do. He's just like, okay, we're sending in the hussars. If they die, I could just make more. Look, I mean, on your screen, you've got like two separate groups just, just zooming right past, just passing. And I think you, this is the right approach. I do wonder, though, if the composition, the additional relic, the additional gold that Gregory has is, is going to make all the difference here. 
Well, the one thing that can be said for Gajamata is he's spamming a lot of Hussars, and Hussars don't cost wood. So at the end yep. of the day, if you're like really leaning into the long run where it is a wood game, you are going to be more wood efficient at the end of the day. You've also had crop rotation longer, which of course yep. only the 10,000 IQ players get crop rotation as soon as they hit Imperial Age, which is exactly what Gajamata did. But right now, <laughs> there is a big army on his doorstep. <laughs> oh man, and the, and the Trebs, the Trebs get taken out there. That's expensive. Three relics is not going to be enough to work with uh, to bring you more trebs. Also, hand cannons got whittled down by the skirms. Great job there from Gregory. Great fight, actually, for Gajimata after this, as he does clear out a lot of the skirms. But Gregory won't complain about that. 110 villagers for him. Interesting that he is queuing up two archers, so obviously that's a misclick. It's not something you see every day. Man, uh, maybe he just thought it, that this would game be is not going to end DPS. anytime soon. That's exactly what he did. Cav archers as well. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So, uh, can we see how much wood is left on the map? Can we get a zoom out situation maybe? And uh, use the new feature to see how many resources are left. I know we've got plenty. But I actually think it's worth considering. It looks like most of the trees are right there towards the battle. And Gregory's actually chopping wood in the battle area. So this is definitely a relevant thing to be talking about. Yeah, it's not just how much wood there is left, but where that wood is located. Because if you're yeah. running out of wood in your base, then you're sort of forced to go forward. You're forced to take better engagements. But that is also where it's going to be nice for Gajamata because his army is wood efficient, at least more so than Gregory's yes. is. Yeah, wood efficient, but at the same time, the army is like going to just get torn to shreds if it gets anywhere near the halbs. I like this from Gregory. He, he's like, all right, I'm sick of chasing you. Go ahead, run into my eco. I want that castle. It's been a long time since we've seen this attempt. The last time he ended up almost killing that castle. Seems like the defense will happen there. There are the trebs from Gregory. 90 army. It's skirms and it's halbs. The occasional huskarl. The castle will fall, which means that 100 farm farm eco for Gajamata is exposed the potential raids. Gajamata has a 200 pop, but he doesn't have an answer to this right now, Orlu. Okay. Feel free to say this is dumb, but what would you think of just having 10 vills garrisoned in a fortified church? Because you do get that plus two attack from spawn towers, so it's going to be plus six attack at this point. Um... Is it worth, do you think, the 10 pop? Especially that fortified church on the front lines. It's... It's slightly dumb. And I want you to remember okay. that I put slightly in front of my dumb the next time you have an opportunity to make fun of me. I just, <laughs> you know, it, it's just like, it doesn't feel like it's going to have as much. Like, I don't know if you should be thinking about it really as a player. You really should be spamming farms, uh, adding more vills, and getting them to work. But I mean, he might need to change something here because he's losing ground. Yeah. So... You know, that could be an idea. So I, I don't hate where your brain is at there, Ornlu, but like I said, ever so slightly, probably not something that's worth the player's focus <laughs> this time as Huskarls now run in here and start to raid the farms and Gregory finally chipping away. Gajamata, he, he's unable to kill the Trebs. The Trebs still taking out his buildings. Villagers are going down everywhere. We've had almost 400 villagers killed in this game in total. Two and a half thousand lives have been lost in the actual battles. But it, it does feel like Gregory's finally going to be able to get the job done with more Huskarls finally on the way. Absolutely. Those are the four production buildings I was looking at before. You're just sniping those important buildings, castles, town centers. Those sorts of things are your win condition once you get to this stage of the game. And it's just this relentless pressure from Gregory. It was kind of like a big tug of war on the mainland on this map. Yeah, it was looking yeah. good for Gajamata, but just able to hang in there was Gregory. And I think that those eight trebuchets and how they were used in that sort of mid-imperial age time was absolutely the deciding point in this of this game, if indeed Gregory wins. Agreed. Well, you know, right now, you're, you're absolutely right, but the big deal here is that there's no castles to defend from raids. There's one single castle for Gajamata, and that is it, which means he is so exposed in other areas... So I think even without Gregory making siege at this point, that's actually kind of a big deal losing those relics. Yeah, but I think, 
I think, um, you know, even without Siege at this point, you should, in theory, be able to get Halbs and Huskarls into the, the farming eco. And even if the villagers can be saved inside the TC, you're still garrisoning villagers constantly. It, it's a real pain. The Skirms there are going to try their best to focus down some hand cannons. Ajimata's going to fight. Maybe it's wrong of me to feel like it's inevitable now, but this is a whole lot of wood and and just land control for Gregory with four castles on the map. Yeah, that is. it's still looking, I think, much better for Gregory. He, does, he is, uh, by the looks of things, reclaiming those relics, which is very smart. And so long as he can keep this forward pressure, Gajamata is eventually just going to run out of wood. Yeah, he, he will. Um, but there's no gold to mine anymore for Gregory. And the Huskarls did die to some of the hand cannons. I mean, what, what a foolish move for me to think that with, okay, 600 gold remaining. That's actually being mined by Gajamata somewhere? Is that in the middle? Is that in the, the cracked terrain in the middle? I think it... <laughs> I think nobody knows <laughs> i think it is oh, it's man. two tiles it's two tiles yeah, i remember yeah. it next to a cliff it's definitely on a cliff it's on a cliff look for the cliff look for my friend cliff it's there somewhere anyways it doesn't matter <laughs> um <laughs> it, it, that 600 gold could mean quite a few hand cannons there there well we saw it nope okay map <laughs> it's fine that's a big deal though 600 oh, gold man. Th this is just an absolute grind fest of a game, and at least thankfully for Rex, because I'm sure the players would need a break after this one, regardless of who wins. There you go. There is that little bit of gold left um, that is being taken by Gajamata. He still has 13 hand cannoneers, so if you are Gregory the Seventh at this point, focusing down those hand cannoneers, which are more or less irreplaceable, it is going to be one of those ways that you can continue this push going forward as we are now well past an hour and a half. <laughs> Seriously. And this isn't like, this isn't an hour and a half game where it started with stone walls, right? Nope. <laughs> this is an hour and a half game where we had laming starting three minutes in. This has been continuous. This has been constant. This has been unreal. And Gajamata is not finished. And Gajamata may still win this game. Gajamata just crossed the 300 villager kill mark. 300 oh, in a 200 population game. You can never have more than two. Well, 210. <laughs> or, or whatever, nice technically, there. that could be. What, what, what would that be with the Georgians if you had, like, Max Hussar and no Villas? Whatever that would be. But, uh, uh, well, plus 15% or you know, 0. 0.85 two, times 200 plus the difference 30. of that. I don't know. I never got past Anyways, calc, man. <laughs> I think it's 230, but I'll let my chat decide. Yeah, uh, two thirty. Fire okay. now. Of course, I picked the wrong. Why aren't you expecting the Goth fast fire ship at the one hour thirty six minute mark? Like, dude, I'm uh. concerned. I'm concerned to make these <laughs> ships is a mistake. <laughs> look, look at that Huskar <laughs> trotting into the edge of the map. He's like, "Get me out of here! I know I have no chance." Oh man. Oh, okay, man. we have a trap from Gregory, and that trap is going to try and take out these fortified churches, which. We've mentioned before, but we should restate, it does increase the worker efficiency around it. And it is also just an annoying structure that you have to prioritize taking out when pushing a Georgian base. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It, it's a big buff to your eco because there aren't that many eco bonuses that really apply in a game like this, you know, way, way into the, into the late game. But the Fortified Church is absolutely one of them. You essentially get a free 10% uh, faster working farmers. Whatever lumberjacks you have uh, left are going to be working faster. So taking those buildings down is going to be quite helpful. Crazy stuff. I mean, Gajamata took losses and he's still at 93 farms. <laughs> 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 I mean... This is ridiculous. We've got Galleon upgrade coming in for Gregory. And also, <laughs> he is making Dramans. He is going to switch onto the water here to try and hit water from the side. And uh-oh. Uh-oh. We've got a tree problem here for Gajamata. What's the Mata? He's running out of wood. That's the Mata. This is bad. He's losing Lumberjacks mata, there. Mata, Mata. <laughs> this, this... I, I, I don't want to say it. Because I said it before, but it does feel like Gregory can outlast Gajamata and is slowly wearing him down. Uh, it, it does feel like just for the past, I don't know, 40 minutes or so game time, it has been this, this slow but inevitable push towards victory for Gregory. 
I mean, I think that if Gajamata were actually anything less than a top five player, and I'm pretty convinced Gajamata is a top five player at this point, I think they would have lost a long time ago. And okay. the fact that he was still able to keep things back uh, going, I I really think that even just keeping things alive for this long against the Goth spam is really impressive. Okay, so Gajamata's top five. Does that mean Gregory's top five in your mind? I think they could be, if not top five, close to a top five late game player at the very least. Hmm, interesting. Okay. If you had to guess their identities right now, what would you say? Hmm. Tato versus Yo. Tato versus Yo. I mean, I, I don't hate it. I could also see Tato Viper. Yep. I could also see like a Hera Vinchester, Hera Viper yep. type of a situation. Uh, you know, Vinch is one that, that has some qualities. I think you never know if he's going to bring it every time. Yeah. But yeah, I, I definitely could see it. Now, I also think in this particular Hidden Cup, we had nine people come through the qualifiers. I think Hart is playing like an absolute god right now. Could Hart maybe have the, some Gajamata traits? Sebastian, maybe. Maybe someone like Mihai? I could see Mihai being Gregory with his patience. But a lot of people think well, Mihai, Mihai played I'm sure was the other day. Yeah, we'll, we'll have time to talk about that. Gajamata, yeah. 85 farms now. We have... <laughs> 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 that, I mean, that, that's that's pretty much. That's what, a live look at a T90 and I right now, yeah, chat. Yeah, pretty much what the casting booth looks like right now as we try and yeah. figure out the stats and how much wood is remaining on the map. We only have twenty six thousand wood on a map that started with well over a hundred k. Every tree <laughs> matters, and every ship matters, and that fire ship actually converted, and it's gonna kill two dramans. <laughs> it could kill all the dramans. Are you it kidding me, Gajamata? What? <laughs> I mean, That's how crazy. many people have that sort of presence of mind at this point in a game? Like, yep. that is actually ridiculous. And it's going to save those stables, which is actually really important because that's one of the only things that is keeping Gajamata in this game is the fact that you can pull the halves in different directions. Okay. okay, though, can we see the fog of war from Gregory? Gregory needs to forget about raiding everything but the wood because there's a lot of villagers that just got pulled over to the mule carts right next to the wood there for Gajamata. And that, yeah, oh, he's going go. directly there. That is your sign. You're like, jackpot, baby. I've been waiting for this. And all the mules and all the villagers are going to run. You just never leave that area, Ornlu. And eventually, <laughs> Gajamata will not have the wood to reseed farms anymore. And that is spoken like somebody who knows how to play those grindy games on ladder, man. <laughs> Just camp the wood lines. That's all you need to do. Eventually, their farms will run out. Yeah. Yeah, and it's sometimes... You, know, you notice they haven't spent their gold on siege, really. Sometimes you mm -hmm. just have to recognize, I'm not going to break the opponent. This is just a, a long-term starvation game. And... I think Gregory realized that. Now, he did make the Dramans, which we'll see if he ever makes one again. He's probably really upset he lost them. But he's got to kill those Vils, man. Like, everything... I think here is where a batch of Huskarls could be really good. There's not many hand cannons. So, Huskarls come out again, and he just queued up 20 of them, and then I think maybe the Villagers might not be around much longer. Yeah, I mean, the rel the gold situation at this point in the game is actually not bad. If you're looking at, like, a regular game, three relics is usually enough to have a decent shot in post, post, post imp. But goths in particular, they just don't need that much gold to succeed. Huskarls are relatively Ooh. cheap at this point, And right now, that's a lot of lumberjacks and a lot of danger. Yeah, also, that fortified church that's on fire is firing quite a few projectiles, to your point from earlier. So that's not bad. He's also making another one. I also think I heard a boar die here at some point. So yeah, maybe garrisoning the fortified church here makes sense to try and you know, keep everything alive here. Really? I thought that 71 was only farms. slightly dumb. <laughs> well, it's less dumb now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it, so long it, as we're listen, working it, towards the direction of smart, I'll take whatever I can get. Yeah, listen, everyone knows it's it's not the it's not the statement, it's the timing, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh you know, I, I would I would say that it's it's pretty relevant when those are the only trees you've got remaining and Gajamata's still holding, but and he still has more vills, dude. Like, uh, this is ridiculous, man. Oh, yeah. This is the longest game of the tournament so far. I'm 
pretty sure. And, and if it's uh, not the longest game in the entire tournament, I'd be very surprised because this uh, this is this might hit two hours at this point. Oh yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I, I do think Gregory's still much more likely to win, but is he going to win in the next twelve minutes game time? Uh, that seems a little unlikely. At least he has that yeah. cow for an extra hundred forty something food uh, with decay. <laughs> yeah, honestly, start start taking the cows. Start start doing what you can. Also, instinctively, players when they need to take a new resource, they will build a new mule cart. Stop! You got to save all the mule carts, and you have to bring them where they need to be at this point. Don't be building new ones and spending resources on that. Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. Like, every little bit of resource you can eke out is absolutely critical. There's another trebuchet that's finally out and gonna start to go after, um, probably those mule carts and fortified churches. You're just trying to gather all the little bit of extra resources you can around <clears> the <throat> edges of the map. And even some fishing ships. Uh, I mean, fish traps are more wood efficient than even crop rotation farms. So, yeah. Just try and keep that alive. I just... I really... The fortified church is annoying. Like, I... Great job for Kazumata <laughs> to use it, right? You got to use the tools you have at your disposal. That is a Treb that has to take out a church that shoots arrows that also increases work rate. Like, that is that is just annoying, And it also right? doesn't cost stone. <laughs> it also doesn't cost any stone, exactly. You could just, you know, spam them. And I think it's it's given Gajimata a really decent shot to somehow stay alive in the situation. And look what he's finding with his Hussars. He's killing Lumberjacks. And Halbs and Skirms cost wood. As we established, the Hussars do not. So it, it, it's very dangerous right now to drop below 100 villagers, I think, if you are Gregory. And hold on a second. Villagers, maybe? Go ahead and get picked off. Like, is there a chance that Gregory loses too much economy and actually gets killed off himself here? Well, like I said a long time ago, if nothing else, Gajamata's army is more wood efficient than his opponent's. Yeah, As yeah. those halves and skirms, although not much of a wood cost, it still has a wood cost. And yeah. if you look at the wood bank, it's actually fairly low at this point for Gregory, even if he has plenty of farms. And they can see right now, Gregory's thinking along the same lines because he's starting to get those scout attacks. Yeah, pretty smart. I like it. I love how creative Gajamata's had to be. Gajamata has almost killed 400 vils. If Gajamata loses this game, killing over 400 villagers, I, I, will, I don't know if I've ever seen that in a 1v1 before. 400 villager uh, kills. I, I suppose it would be like in a game where both players killed 400. Maybe that's happened. Yeah, but I don't think I've ever so seen that rating. big of a discrepancy yeah, in yeah. a game that someone lost, right? Well, I mean, bills go down there. It almost looked like a bill was deleted there for a second. I could be wrong. We might have just missed it. Bill's going down here as well. Gregory just crossed 200 villager kills. Light Cav Tech coming in. A lot of people forget that Goths do get Hussar. And uh, here we go. One hour and 47 minutes was the longest game in Hidden Cup 4. So we have now passed the longest game in Hidden Cup. I don't know. I think there was a two-hour banger in Hidden Cup 2, but that was so many years ago. I seem to remember uh, something like that. I think it was a maybe Chinese Aztecs game or something, but this is... Uh, yeah, that's Oh, no, familiar. there was Hidden Cup 3. Hidden Cup 3 had a Khmer War between Dogao and MBL, which was unbelievable. Oh, I remember was, that game. That was like round of 8, right? It was like right. It was on it was, hideout, I think. It was round of eight. We did four best of five quarterfinals on the same day, and the day was thirteen and a half hours <laughs> yeah. because every yep. series went to the fifth game, and the final one was like a three-hour Khmer War where they ran out of wood on hideout. So uh, we we changed the format for this hidden cup to do two best of sevens a day because we knew this could happen. And I want to have some type of a voice come the final. But my god, I mean, this is crazy. Look how desperate they are for wood right now. This is crazy <laughs> desperation times. This they're both their pop is both dropping at the same time. I'm just looking at unit Q right now to see what the situation is. But this is the great fight for trees. There is less than 10,000 wood on the map. What is this? Oh, man. I mean, at this point, it's going to come down to then the light cab spam, which I guess Gajamata does do better. And maybe you can try and stall things out with the HP regeneration you get. Just try and kill a few <laughs> units hit there and run away. <laughs> hit and <laughs> run. Go attack. Come back. Go attack. Come back. <laughs> I mean, at this point, 
we, we we pretty much got like two areas with trees. You got an area here on screen where the hand cannons are arriving to. So that needs to be dealt with by Gajamata. And then uh, not too far away from this, next to the other fortified church, we have the other trees. That's pretty much it. There may be some random trees out there. But folks, this is wild. Oh, God, that is so important. Oh, God, there's a Huskarl camping that tree. <laughs> that Huskarl is camping that tree. He was told. Oh, he was told 20 years ago, sir, do not leave your post. You will be important <laughs> to the cause. And he's been extremely bored. And he is there. And actually, Gregory is going to go chop those trees as well. Oh, my God. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Also, I was trying to run in and snipe the trebuchet. There is one castle left here for Gajamata. Unfortunately, his food count is looking a little bit lower. He only has six units in the queue. Gregory has around 75 or so. Some of those are villagers, sure. But, I mean, at this point, a Hussar is not worth a villager <laughs> if it's a one-to-one -one trade. A Hussars are more yeah, expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I wonder if, like, it'll get to the point where players are long distance taking some of the extra berries. Like, you certainly don't want to place a mill on berries. I don't know if that's worth it. No, but, no. wow, man. Every ship is so valuable. That costs wood. I, I really think right now the hand cannon mass from Gajamata is the most critical thing because he can only make Hussars otherwise. His skirms won't be a fact, too much of a factor anymore. And so he needs to make sure that there's something out there that could deal with the uh the halbs that will kill his hussars and speaking of hussars going to the wood line gregory is going to lose like 20 bills here but he is taking the trees yeah so long as your may... opponent doesn't get the wood right <laughs> yeah yeah it's true it's a good point this game's insane we are about to cross the two hour mark everyone when we hit the two hour mark do me a favor just say i was here that's yeah. excluding us orlu we are obviously here <laughs> are you sure about that <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna be here. If this, it's, if this it's getting to game that point seven, I might, I might hand it off. Oh my goodness, what a game! And we're still not finished. Both players down to 140 pop. We do cross the two-hour mark. The vill count for Gregory is horrible. He's down to 67 vills. Oh man, 67 villagers. So many. This is actually kills. gonna be. We shouldn't call this evacuation. We could, should call this starvation. <laughs> well, dude, okay, Ornlu, what you said before about saving your Hussars is so critical right now. If you're going to take a bad fight, honestly, back away to that only castle you have if you're Gajamata, and you just got to wait it out and heal back up. What in the world? I, oh, boy. Now, that is still I'm 77 army... Now 80 for Gregory, but if they can't attack the castles and you can't really fight well enough under the TC, there... how much is that going to matter? Is there a... Someone earlier said, T90, is there a stalemate rule? And I was going to respond, like, of course not. But the more I think about this, like, this could get very campy. It may actually get to a point where if a player attacks, they're at a disadvantage because they're taking a risk. What in uh, the world? It's still, I mean, there's only a one relic difference though, right? I mean, they do have infinite yeah, resources yeah, yeah. via the relics, but it might not be enough of a difference to ever encourage any amount of fighting. But these games were played several days ago, right? So whatever happened has already happened, right? Yeah, I mean, I haven't been told, obviously I'm told nothing about the matches. Uh, the rounds are played before they're covered. That is true. I mean, what, the the trebs, the farms, uh, the villagers, everything's so important right now. So much more important than earlier. We've crossed 3,000 total. Wait, I can't do math at all. Sorry, 5,000 total kills in this game, which is also very rare. But hey, right now, I mean, we, we have less than 3,000 wood left on the map. As apparently, there's gold somewhere, too. I don't know where. I think there's a little bit left on the starting island. Okay, Halb's clearing up some of those Hussars. There's still 60 Halb's on screen right now for Gregory, who's had a massive score lead. Mapu, once again, is annoyed that he is a professional observer looking for gold. This is now where's Waldo for Mapu, our observer <laughs> here. But he's doing a professional job at not finding the gold, and that's all that matters. 
<laughs> uh, apparently the players can't find it either. Yeah, I mean, no hmm. one's taking it. Oh, no, there are five bills on gold for Gregory. Ooh, Gregory found it. Okay. Well, <laughs> Mapu tried to click it. <laughs> the struggle. The struggle. Oh, uh, there we go. Oh, there it is. There we go. It was hiding. Uh, okay. It's all good, Mapu. It was very hard to see. Hmm. So 50 Hussars for Gajimata. 13 hand cannons. The hand cannons being the hardest thing to replenish. He has zero on wood. His wood count is is going to be a problem for reseeding farms. If I had to, if I was a betting man right now, I would say that Gregory still wins this game because Gajimata is eventually going to lose all those hand cannons, and eventually his farms just can't reseed at this point. That is what logic would tell us, but. I'm still a little concerned that you can't make any good units as Gregory without any wood. That's true. All now, your all your units cost wood. Yeah. I mean, your, your light cav don't cost wood, but with all of the the fact that your hussars lose to his hussars, and those are the things that you can theoretically sustain the longest, that doesn't really bode that well for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if I were playing this, I would be tempted to ask my opponent their population, because I think they. They should have a gauge on how ridiculous the situation is here. Now, of course, if they chat to each other, they could show who they are. Uh, they could give the viewers guesses, too. Uh, but as we see some wood purchase there from Gregory, like, I, I would definitely have said pop at one point. Or, like, if they both go to 100 pop, I wonder what happens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ACCM, known for his late game, or for just not yep. wanting to call it quits here, and apparently uh, it is ACCM against ACCM here in Hidden Cup 5. That Treb is being protected with everything Gregory has, and that mm. mill becomes very important, actually. Like you can't this, replenish the build right now. You. <laughs> <laughs> that was also, an the market's actually at very low HP, so if that's something you snipe, and if Gajamata doesn't have the contingency market, then yeah. that's something you would actually have to spend 175 wood to replenish, which is actually a I lot wonder, of this day. I wonder if this is it. Like, if all these Hussars die, yeah. does yeah. Gajimata give up? It felt like that was that was almost a final fight. He lost a lot of his hand cannons. Mule cart. Berries are certainly awkward to take. Of course, more Hussars are going to be on the way. Farm count is now down to 60. The 140 pop for Gajimata, but in these types of games, you assume your opponent's population could be awkward as well. Ridiculous game. There's boars and deer out there, which might be worth taking at some point, but still not happening. And, and this guy this guy is still seeding farms, or, or at least sending new villagers to vacant farms. That's probably more like it. Yeah. We have less than a thousand wood! <laughs> oh boy! What? How often do we get to say that there's more food left on the map than wood? <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> what? And I mean, even the... There's fishing ships traveling really long distances to get the food that's left. There's still three fishing ships fishing away at random spots. Like, it's <laughs> out there. Look at the fishing ship working. Maybe uh, one more the, fight the here when from Gajimata. Gajimata runs out of food because his uh, boar was lamed in Dark Age. <laughs> <laughs> Should, if he wouldn't have been lamed, Gajimata yeah, would have won all the by difference. now. It would have been a couple more Hussars. Look at the Vils are headed to the shoreline, Ornlu. The shoreline <laughs> to, get, to get the food. Get oh what you goodness. have, people. Get what you have. We get that it's not ideal, but everyone has to work together here. <laughs> The power of friendship 60. compels you. 102 <laughs> fills on food right now for Kajamata. He's taking the boars! <laughs> He's taking the cow! <laughs> times are hard, people! Times are hard, but when times are hard, you've just got to get what you can. Oh my, <laughs> oh my goodness. goodness. <laughs> oh, okay, I mean, I mean both still have decent populations. Where's the, I, I, I don't want to say where's the wood, actually, because that's going to be hard to find at this point. <laughs> there, there's no go-to last remaining tree on map toggle, uh, but we're not seeing any here. Uh, not seeing any there. Mm. 
There's some deer. They might be eaten soon. Yeah. They thought they were safe. There's some cows that could be good as well. I, I don't know. I, I think it was near Gajimata, but apparently it's seven full trees that no one is taking because it is 700 wood exactly. And the trebuchet and down goes the to trap. was typed right there, but what? Like at this at this point, both players are out of wood, so they cannot what? replenish any lost farms, and it also means that you can't replenish any lost halbs or skirms. Oh my god! I And I wonder if Gajamata lose... might win it because of that. I, I think you're right. Okay, we need to start clicking farms, though. We need to know how much food is left on the farms. Because, uh, if you don't mind, Mapu, just randomly click these farms. Because these cannot be reseeded, right? So you've got like 50 or so farms, I'm guessing have less than 300 food available. Oh, we got 9k food coming in from all the farms. I didn't actually realize you could double click them. Oh, that's sick. Ooh, okay. that's a lot of food. 11k food is no joke. And so if the God halbs Mata get killed off... So got as soon as he hit imp, by the way. And it yeah, took Gregory yeah. a while longer. <laughs> um... I think I think Ornlu, you you might end up being right that crop rotation could win the game. Let's see how this fight goes. Let's see how the halbs fare. But the halb number is going down, and the hussar number will be above that soon. And the population for Gajamata is decent. They have the same vil count. They have the same army count. But purely because Gregory can't make halbs, the game ends, and Gregory made. 1,544 halves. He resigns, <laughs> recognizing that he can't afford to make halves anymore. Crop rotation and just, just, just a fight keeps Gajimata in the game. He's 10,000 score behind, and he goes up 2 nil here. What did we just witness? Oh. Jeez, man. I mean, like I said a long time ago, it feels like as efficient as those goth halbs are, they cost wood. It's not much wood, but Gajamata can just keep on spending Hussars. And, you know, you talk about trading gold units for trash units. This is trading food units for wood units. And the yeah. wood units are more valuable. Crazy. I mean, I, I wanted to talk about the resources collected in general, but I think that's really it at this point. The gold collected, the gold all disappeared. So uh, here we go. We're going to sum up this game for you. I mean, the eight trebs for Gregory, I thought they won in the game, taking out all these yeah, trebs here. Oh, no, he took out trees. Oh, look at those trees. <laughs> trebs took out the trees. No. Oh, what a man, how mistake, foolish man. of us. <laughs> how foolish of us not to notice that. That might have made all the difference there. Obviously, Gregory didn't know it would turn into a tree game, but, uh, <laughs> man, I mean, he was pushing. You remember that point in the game where we said, what a fantastic job from Gregory to not be broken and to be, and to be patient when he needed to? I got to reverse that, flip that right around and say the same about Gajamata. How did Absolutely. he survive against the goth spam for that long? I mean, it, it's just you throw enough Hussars at the problem. And it's just barely enough because your opponent isn't quite wood efficient enough. And that is, uh, and I mean, that, that is just straight up impressive, man. Gajamata killed 570 villagers in that game. It was not just the difference between one player running out of wood and the other. It was also the fact that he consistently was sacrificing for villager kills which played such a big role. Killing that many vills in one series is rare, even in a best of seven. To do that in one game is unbelievable. And, I mean, guys, imagine being uh, Gregory the Seventh after that. You're down 2-0. You, you know you've got to be up against a big star. You felt like you did everything you could to win the game. And then, well, rip, you're down 0-2, and now you've got to be expected to win four. It can't be easy. That I mean, after that point, mentally, that has to be exhausting. I mean, the, the, the first game was, you know, whatever, human boom is really good. That is just you're punching each other back and forth constantly. You're up 10,000 score. <laughs> and you just can't close it out because you're just out of resources. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I do think that you have to... I do think that you have to just try and move on from it, hop into the next game, and, and hopefully reset, get a win, and rebound. But 
Hey, uh, before we hop into the third game, I want to say thank you, everyone who's there to witness that. Thank you for the support. As a reminder, uh, Hidden Cup 5 continues all week. We end on March 2nd and March 3rd, March 2nd being the semis, and then March 3rd being the final. Um, the After the grand final, we find out who all these players were. There will be an opportunity for you guys to vote on who you think the players are. A little guessing game competition, but we're pretty much just getting started. So if you're enjoying this show, if you're enjoying what, you know, you've witnessed so far. Tell your friends, let your friends know, let your family know this game is back and, and it's happening and what this tournament means. This is our schedule, by the way. We had the earlier best of seven, which was unbelievable. We are seven hours into the day uh, and we only had one series prior to this one. And obviously we're going to finish out Gajamata and Gregory seventh here uh, to all the new primes, to all the resubs, to all my long faithful supporters. Thank you to all the people watching on maybe YouTube for the first time. And appreciating the live YouTube broadcast. Thank you for being there too. And, uh, you know, Robo, we're going to keep moving on. We're going to move on to game number three. Uh, I'm not sure who who's going to need more stamina here. The players are us, but uh, I'm ready. Oh, I am too, man. Give me more games. I mean, a game like that, I don't know. It may be weird, but it just makes me want to jump into the next one even more. And it will be on Bay. Wow, very interesting Civ matchup. So obviously, this is on the back of an unbelievable performance from Gajamata. Gajamata, if there was any stress, has got to be feeling a whole lot less, right? Because of, of how the previous game went. We've got Bay. Uh, the people will call it pants, but whatever you call it, this is a map that can also lead to late games and has led to some really good games so far in Hidden Cup. Uh, Dravidians for Gregory the Seventh has led to many people to speculate. This was the first Civilization pick from Gregory, so definitely need to win here. And we have an interesting build order, actually. We have a dock, very early dock. The Dravidians get five population space for that dock as well. But I'm not sure I l love the build order, Lou, unless uh... he's going to chop those stragglers and make a fishing ship or two. Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to lab out here for him. I would like to build a lot more if there was a shorefish next to the dock that you could gather with the villager. Because yeah, then you can just yeah. sort of treat it as like an extra bit of food income early on. But it's going to be a while before you can actually afford a fishing ship. And the village is going to walk back home. So right now, the dock isn't doing anything other than being a big fancy house. Yeah. And, and a little bit of wasted villager tide. But I think the idea for Gregory is to just walk to the... Uh, or just use the straggler trees. And you see two villagers on the straggler trees there. So this could, in theory, lead to earlier fishing ships, which is kind of the idea. Uh, Gregory wants to make use of the Dravidian bonus as quickly as possible here. Um, neither civilization can make knights. And every time I've seen this map, I have seen knights. So uh, how does that change yeah. how players play this here, you think? Well, it's interesting, right? Because mobility is something that we typically see a lot of on this map, whether it be knights or light cab in the late game or just running around with all your units. These are two very slow civs militarily. I mean, you're focusing on elephants and infantry and foot archers and monks and all that stuff. So if you're expanding all over to the sides of the map, it might be actually really difficult for either player to punish the other. Yeah. I can agree with you. I think there's one specific application where the knights have been strong that I think make a difference. And that is if someone goes archers against you, and then that period while they're trying to mass the archers and get the upgrades, I feel the knights can be strong. We've seen that a lot. One player goes archers, the other player goes one stable knights, pushes back the archers. Now that you can't do that, you do have elephants, but elephants are slow. They're more... They have less utility. They can easily be converted, so... I would say that the um, I would say that the lack of knights will actually play a role in in the how effective archers could possibly be in the long term. Well, you can then of course have to turn to the skirmishers because if it become, if it becomes an archer war, then whoever switching to skirmishers is going to have an advantage. And Dravidians do have the better skirmishers. That said, mm -hmm. Bengalis have a far better economy than Dravidians, and if they can take it to late game. Uh, Dravidians will likely struggle against a gigantic horde of elephant archers and light cab and whatnot. I really don't like this build order from the Dravidians. Like, doesn't have the wood to make a house, so it's going to get loom. Maybe loom is intended. Maybe this is maybe after loom we're going to see feudal age click. But for the first civilization pick, what I'm seeing here is just 
well, okay, he's going to click up. Proves me wrong a little bit. Maybe the idea for Gregory the Seventh is to go really fast feudal, dominate the water, and then we actually see the double dock fish boom happen, which some players like to do if you win the water. Well, I mean, we see that sort of thing from Mongols on this map. Uh, but I think they were banned in this set. So maybe if you found a way to make a super fast build work with Dravidians, which appears to be the case right here, you still get that yep, yep, speed yep. advantage that you're looking for without having to worry about your Civ likely being banned, because I don't think Dravidians are a Civ that many people are going to ban in this tournament. Yeah, this is actually is actually really tight build order. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I yeah. thought initially that Loom, like when I saw he was at 19 out of 20 pop, I thought that maybe Loom was forced. And uh, thank you very much, Production, for covering up Bay uh, on our mini map here with, with something that's not accurate at all. But um, the more I look at this, you're going to get the extra wood, which is going to give you a nice injection to be able to make the early ships. And the second dock is also very well timed. So I'm understanding this more and more from Gregory the Seventh. Yeah, and you get that extra 200 wood as soon as you hit Feudal Age. That can instantly be turned into a couple of fire ships. And yeah, you are going to be in a great spot to win water. And Gajamata himself is going to be focusing on that with his second dock incoming. Okay, so both going for similar strats. Now the Bengalis get plus two villagers when they make it to the next age out of their TCs. This applies for every age. Uh, their ships also regen. I don't know if the ship regen will have a massive effect. I hear the scouts engage. One player's in feudal age, so it should be better better for Gregory. And Gregory goes a little too close here. He really wants to kill, and he gets an extra hit. Gajamata might be able to make it back to the TC here, but Gajamata is going to have fires all over him on the water here. That's a very fast demo queued up for Gregory. You'd think that if you are faster up to feudal age, feudal age like this, you know you're going to be ahead in water, and demos are typically what you build if you're falling behind on water because that's how you get a ton of extra value. So this yeah. is kind of interesting. I it, it is interesting. Um, you would think that the player who's more in the defensive position would go for the demo. But hey, I mean, one fishing ship against uh, about to be zero. And now it's all about transitions. It seems like both players are really happy to, or are well aware they're going to need other sources of food income. But I wondered how this map would be played. I was worried that pretty much all the big fish boomers, like... Viper is a big one. Um, Viper is probably the biggest one, actually. Maybe like Barrels, maybe some of the Black Forest players. Uh, they, they might do this every time because they. I think the value of the water is more important in 2024 than it was in 2021, where you would run out of the salmon in the middle and then wouldn't really think about fish trapping. Now everyone's thinking about the potential for fish traps. Absolutely, and... Well, that does go back to the, the 4v4 BF players. Just you can spam so many fishing ships in that those tiny little ponds. That said, unlike on something like BF, your fish are very exposed on this map because there's always guaranteed to be shallows, and that's just going to be a one-for-one -one demo trade. Going to favor the guy who has more fire ships, in this case, Gregory. Yeah, and you got to be really careful now if you're Gregory because there might be another demo on the way, and we know there is, according to Capture Age. There's the demo. Gajamata was not broken in that crazy two plus hour game when he fell behind before, and he lands mm. another demo there. The perfect demo from Gajamata. And Gregory's got to be so frustrated right now. Like, are you kidding me? And by the way, no repair build nearby. No repair build. Oh, build. man. Oh, man. I mean, there is a demo coming out as well from Gregory, oh, but, but it doesn't it... do the same amount of damage there. I mean, it just hits the front of one fire ship, minimizing the amount of blast damage that is taking place. And now those fishing ships need to be on the run. More demos here for Red. That villager needs to be super careful. She does survive, but right now the fire ship number is now swinging back in favor of Gajamata. Wow. And not enough uh, repairing going on there. It's How? How does Gajamata do this? Like, these fights were so good for Gregory initially. And they're basically both doing the same thing, right? It's just the value from Gajimata's engagements. Now, that might change in a second because Gajimata's got some weak ships. But maybe as the Bengalis, you don't worry so much about being active with weak ships when your ships are slowly regenerating. Yeah, it's just a nice little bonus. Once you win a fight, you can then just heal right back up over time. 
big old walls yeah. coming in from Gajamata, making sure that, okay, I won water. Let's not make sure I lose to something silly on the land. Both players were still able to get the double bid axe upgrade, so their own economies at home are at least doing all right. Still, though, Bengali is going to be at, in overall a better spot uh, going forward. Yeah, res collected. Looking pretty good there for Gajamata. Gajamata walling up. Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, scouts actually passed through each other there. That was an interesting moment. And then the kill happens. And we'll see how things go as we advance forward here in this game. But right now, Gregory, if this was his number one pick, his number one build that has not been as dominant as the humans were for Gajimata to start off our series. Well, it does look like Gregory's pretty close to clicking up to Castle Age, at the very least, but with the market for Gajamata, buying some food at the market from with all of that extra gold, I mean, this is looking pretty darn clean. The KD isn't that drastically in favor of Gajamata, so maybe he, you could say he's investing a little too much into fire ships, but even, if so, it's not by that large a difference. Yeah, I, you know what's interesting? I would never make fish here because I would assume that my opponent would try and, and you know, come back on water, right? But Gajamata realized, well, he's pretty much not worth it for him anymore. He's probably not going to do it. He split up his fires here. And it's just two fishing ships. It's not that crazy, but he's played this perfectly. Now, guys, what he did there, I want to explain that for anyone who's watching out there. He split up the ships, but you don't click the dock. Because if you auto-click the dock, the second a ship comes out, your unit's just going to be attacking the dock. So you separate them. You leave them on attack stance, they will automatically attack the dock, and then if a unit appears, they'll prioritize the unit for you. So it actually is just making life easier. I see way too many people right-click there, and then, of course, they look back, and by the time they look back, all their ships are gone, or all their knights or something are gone. So, just a little, little tip. Exactly. And the reason you spread out the ships is, of course, in case there is a demo coming out of the dock, you don't want your ships all clumped up together. So, as yep. G90 is saying, you just hit stop, and then your ships will automatically attack the closest unit or building, and it, it will prioritize units over buildings. What Gregory is doing now, I am pr I am pretty certain he is only doing because he killed the scout from Gajamata. He is going for a forward, and he's dropping up barracks. This will probably be pikes. I could see this being siege. And I wonder if I wonder how much of this is Gregory's worry about the Bengali late game compared to the Dravidians. But also how much of it is how the series has gone, right? It's like, last game was a grind. This game now hasn't started off as you would have wanted. It feels like an all-in play uh, to maybe build up to momentum even. And no way. Gaja's like, I need vision out oh, here. Man. And what is he going to find? Wow. Now, ooh, ooh, that was a town ooh, bell. Did you hear that? I did. Ooh, Gajamata... Click the town bell by mistake, and we heard it. So a lot of players have that hotkey removed. Who doesn't have that hotkey unbound yet? Yeah. Oh man, I'm that that is an interesting one. I like I personally just removed it last year. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> um Yeah, I'm really lazy. It it makes me feel it's it's funny to know that the pros do it are, are lazy as well. Hmm. <laughs> it wasn't intentional. Well, it is going to be a light cav plus some bugs, and that's actually a double monastery. Now, Bengalis, fantastic monks. Dravidians, they don't have redemption, but they do at least have atonement. So if you're getting into a full monk war, that is something you can sort of engage in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think also this doesn't have to be your everything. I know I kind of implied that maybe for Gregory, after how the games have gone in the scoreline, that this might be an all-in push, but... Gregory is actually going to be in a really nice position to drop town centers and consider adding some eco behind. But remember, no fishing ships for Gregory. And the Bengalis, they have the monks to be able to defend in some ways. And there's no defense for Gregory because he built the barracks forward. But he must have actually built the barracks at home because I don't think he sent the pikes all the way home. That was really smart thinking, though, from both players. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is, <laughs> I mean, this entire series has been both players doing really smart moves. Now, six fishing ships, though, plus the extra four you get as Bengalis. That is already a fairly substantial economic advantage, already around 10% ahead from resources collected is Gajamata. Redemption's yeah. going to be in, and he's even feeling safe enough to add that TC, which is pretty bold. As wild to me, someone said, 
And this is a good point. Someone said a player who's been around a long time because B is for build for them and B is Bell. And uh, yeah, that's a good point, but I'm pretty sure 14 out of these 16 players, if not all 16 players, <laughs> uh, are using B for build because everyone's been around yeah. so long. <laughs> Okay, big moment here, and the conversion doesn't land. Stable's almost down. The scout wants through. Again, the conversion doesn't happen. Monk goes down. Oh, scout no! goes down as well. Honestly, not a bad start here for Gregory, but don't lose your Meganel. No! No! Mm. Redemption pays off, and two Meganels go down just like that for Gregory. Oh, that hurts. And Sanctity being in is absolutely essential for Gajamod. It means you can tank a Manganel hit, and that's exactly how that monk was able to, to survive in the first place. And now we even have a sneak third TC coming out. What? And it's amazing how unconcerned Gajamod is with all the Manganels what? and Pikemen and monks bearing down on him. What? That is sick, dude. That is... Th I mean, this feels very unnatural, right? Like, for us, it makes sense. But from the player perspective... To know that you could just sneak out there, just make a run for it right now, is wild to me. If that gets spotted, obviously it's a problem, oh. but right now, it looks like the monks have pretty much put a stop to this push, and poor Gregory the Seventh, who's had an amazing series, has probably got this sinking feeling that he's not going to be advancing if Gajimata continues to play like this. Absolutely, and with the extra armor that Bengali monks have, pikemen are only dealing one damage a hit, and now the light cav counterattack is coming in. I mean, things are really just going from bad to worse here for Gregory. There's that barracks, I think, coming up at home as well. And it's just like, where do you even go from this point? You tried to grind it out. That didn't work. You tried to uh, boom. That didn't work. And now you're trying super heavy aggression. And it's just Gajamata is so comfortable in any situation. Yep, really is. And now Gajamata can turn this into the offensive. Wow, I mean, with how high the level is... Feels hard to believe we might be headed towards a 3-0 here, but maybe some of it is Gregory's spirit being broken. Certainly, like, I know that some of the micro elements on water might have played a role. I certainly want to point out again, though, that the number one civ civilization pick was Dravidians for Gregory, and this has not looked like a number one pick type of play thus far for me. But no, I've definitely been more in the... I, I've always been in more in the Dravidians can be solid in some situations camp, but not the Dravidians ROP camp, which might be some of my bias showing. And also, I think Gajamata has just made, he's made everything that his opponent has done, he, no matter how strong it's been, look very, very foolish all series. Yeah, it's just everything that Gregory tries to do, it's Gajamata has that answer to it. Now, that is a nice uh, kill of the Magna, at least not losing another one right there. But you also yep. have eco upgrades coming in, fervor, just really fleshing out your eco and your tech tree. You've got 10 monks at this point. You're just setting yourself up so nicely as Gajamata. Yep, and if you're Gregory, you just got to boom. You got to boom. You have to hope your opponent doesn't have the economy. Unfortunately, from what we know, the opponent does have the economy. It is 83 villagers right now for Gajamata. 83 villagers uh, continuing to produce out of three TCs, now turning this into an offensive push. There will be monks here soon. And I think Gregory just can't believe it right now. I mean, you, you probably think about the tournament. It depends on if this was an invited player, qualifier player, but certainly you've got like a week and a half to prepare. You play your practice games, you get a feel. You're like, man, I'm in great shape. I could really make a run. And then all of a sudden into your first rounds, you're staring down the, down the barrel of a 3-0 without your number one sip pick, and it cannot feel good. Yeah, that is pretty darn painful. We have Light Cav now in for Gregory, but going for a bunch of Dravidian Light Cav isn't something you're going to feel super awesome about. And just, you're already looking at such an enormous villager difference. There is less than a minute idle TC time in all of this craziness from Gajamata. Like, he is just on point. Okay, so... <clears throat> I asked you at this, like, the start of game number two who you thought these players could be. Have your opinions changed at all on Gajamata? I still think it's Tato. I think it's okay, Tato looking it's really Tato. sharp. Tato, God, okay. Or and, Gregory, like, I, Tato I have no against... idea on at this point. Yeah, and it's, it's really hard to say, like, some of the other biggest names for Gregory if it's going to be three losses, right? But that is the nature of Hidden Cup. It very well could be. Somebody has to lose... And unfortunately, like, game two was so unprecedented. It's like, 
If this was 1-1 yeah. and Yajimata has a big lead, then it's whatever. But, oh man, this is... That second game, those trees that he trebbed down accidentally. <laughs> they are all <laughs> coming back to haunt him right now. Oh, man. Woo! Well, Pike are coming it's forward. A... Manganels could get some big shots. The stone is actually creating a bit of a natural choke point. Good monk control right there for Gajamada. But Manganels aren't really going after the Pikes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that is a fight that I think could have been worse here for Gregory. In the end, the Monk Micro is good enough from Gajamada. Gajamada is going to drop a castle here. There is no oh, army, man. and the GG is called. And it is 3-0 for Gajamada. And it does not feel like Gregory VII is lacking talent, lacking skill, or anything. It just seems like Gajamada is at the top of his game. And Gajamada finds himself 3-0 up. This game doesn't really need to be summed up by much more than Gajamada won on water. And then was able to sense the push and then completely neutralize that push from gregory and again the bengalis get the extra vills so bengalis got all the vill bonus and the water and then gaja Mata played so clean the whole way through three nil lead for gaja wow i mean this is just such an impressive performance i mean if you look at the the quality of play vasco da gama and gaja Mata feel like okay we're, we're looking at the two top players in this side of the bracket. Yeah, yeah. And it's fun because this will have been at the conclusion of, of this series. We will have only seen half the players. And I am seeing people discuss at least 12 to 13 players, if I were to sum oh, up yeah. the chat from yesterday and today. So I, I get it's it's why people are assuming some of the bigger names. I still think we got to wait to see more games to truly make an assessment because the level is higher than ever. The qualifier showed that. But uh, to the series at hand, Gregory has to choose a map and hope to find something to work with going forward. Uh, we'll see what that will be, but we're going to move into game number four now. Will it be Cup? Will it be Mud Flow? Will it possibly be uh, Hidden Forts or High Tides here for Gregory? We'll find out. Absolutely. I mean... As long as this series has been already, I, I really hope to see something here from Gregory because Gregory is clearly such a good player. It's just you happen to run into Gajamata, who is obviously a top five player. And let's see what can happen here on the new map, Hidden Forts. All right, so Hidden Forts, a map that we've seen way more than I expected in the first round. I thought that this map and Evacuation would be banned a lot. So I'm happy to see that Gregory... Uh, has been the one that really prefer this. I think Gajamada may have actually had hidden forts on the draft, but Gregory wants to go here. And this is a strategy, guys, that we're seeing, that in our test games, one of our players, you might know him from my videos, you pudding told me, could be one of the strongest strategies out there for hidden forts. Yes, we had you pudding amongst uh, like 15 to 20 players who lost in the qualifiers for this tournament and myself playing games, testing games, testing strats. And you pudding came to me and showed me a couple wrecks, and he would use Lithuanians because Lithuanians don't need as many villagers on food. You can go for the early lumber camp, and the goal is to chop through to the middle. And then once you are in the middle, you're able to take the rhinos. But we have not seen the middle be everything. We had a game earlier today, Ornlu, where the player had like six rhinos, and the other player only had two. And then the player who only had their starting boars ended up winning the game which makes it fun. Absolutely. And you have that really early presence. I, I love the idea behind this for Gregory. You have the same principle that you have on uh, hybrid maps when you pick Lithuanians, right? You can send the vills to wood early on because you have that extra food padding so you can just sustain villager production longer. But instead of building the dock, it's just so you have access to that extra food in the middle early on. We saw a similar idea mm -hmm. with Hindustanis having one fewer villager on food in the first set of the day. Um, and yeah, it's just great to see players really look into that preparation. Dude, I, this makes me so happy. I like, this is what I wanted. Okay. So think about it this way. You're, you're in uh Gregory's position and you're like, oh my God, there's so much food there. I got a strat to take the middle. There's gold there too. This is great. That's not a bad thing. Right. But let's say you, you get the middle poor Gregory. The zebra is now trolling. <laughs> this is, can we get a further zoom oh. in? This is exactly how Gregory's series has gone. That freaky zebra walking back, but but no, like 
you take the middle, you take the rhinos, and then you get all the food, you build up all this eco. But what if your opponent never cuts through to come to the middle? How are you supposed to attack them? There's then no relics in the middle. And it, it these types of games in all the practice sessions we did were the best types of games for Lou. We we've seen onager cuts to the to try and open up areas like oh, it could get really fun from here. Oh, for sure. I mean, there are a lot of different ways you can it can play out because you have resources on both the inside and on the outside. You still have golden yep. stone there on the outside, so if you lose control of the middle, you can expand away. We've seen a little bit from that, I think, between the show matches and the earlier rounds of the tournament. But this is the first time I think we've seen this exact Civ matchup. So what do you yes. think about... Okay, Lithuanians I get for the early uh, wood chopping. What do you think about Saracens for Gajamata? Well, Saracens... I'm going to say the same thing I said about the humans in game one. With certain players, and already based on the draft, I was leaning towards Tato <laughs> at the start. <laughs> and then I saw humans, and then I saw the other games. that uh, could be Tato. With certain players, the Saracens are just ridiculous. And um, so I, I like them. I also think the Saracen late game is underrated. People oftentimes think of the market or the crossbows or the camels with the Saracens. But you've got the crazy siege as well. They have Arbalest. They have Bombard Cannons. I mean, they have Hussar. It, it's like the Civ really has very few weaknesses in late game. So I actually think the Saracens are more well-rounded. I think the Lithuanians, from a uh, booming perspective, are the superior Civ, though. So we'll see if that ends up being the plan here for Gregory. I do think that this is actually an opportunity for Mamelukes to shine, though, because I don't honestly see how on earth Lithuanians ever kill Mamelukes. Yep, and yep. I mean, if you're going to run into a camel sieve, you're still not super happy as Lithuanians, but having the excellent monks, this could easily turn into a monk war. We've seen that before on this map where both players just start plopping down monasteries in the middle of the map in mid game. Yeah. So this game yep. could really go in so many different directions at this point. I wanted to see, can, can we see the wood line by Gajamata? I mean, it's supposed to, there's supposed to be quite a few areas where you can find two tiles. Um, a little late at this point. Admins could have stepped in. Just like, sorry, the wood line, the cut to the middle map who's confused. I want to make sure he had the option here. From the mini map, it looks like he might not have had the option to cut through. Nah, there's plenty of areas. Yeah, the players basically scout that and make a decision. We've seen instances where players do play slumber camps where they can chop through, but will eventually, like in the first series of the day. And uh, just a little bit of paranoia on my part. My apologies, folks. <laughs> but the rhinos but it does are coming raise an in interesting here. Interesting point, though. That Gachamata isn't even trying to chop through the, to the middle. And I don't think we've seen yes. that yet, where players are just not even bothered trying to go to the middle whatsoever. And Gachamata saying, eh, I'll just sit in my base, man. Yep. And, and look at this. He's going for a stable. So he's going to add in some army here. And this army obviously can't go through the middle. So we'll go to the outside. And then Gajamata sees that it's also a stable from Gregory. I mean... As much as I want to get excited about just skipping the middle and going farms, which I think is underrated here. Also, it's not bad to have like a thousand extra food if you're going scout rush here for Gregory. So I, I really like Gregory's position right now. I know the score line uh, can affect how positive we could be for the guy. But I think yeah. his position is actually stronger right now. Yeah, I mean, you'll take the free food when you can get it, right? And at the end of the day, Gregory should be getting a bit of a resources collected advantage, especially since Saracens don't have any sort of passive eco bonus to help them out. Of course, the market usage will almost certainly come in for Gajamata relatively soon. But it seems like for now, both players are going to wall and then probably want to take this one towards Castle Age. Okay, so I, I've been waiting for this moment. Um, at a certain point, as we see Gregory try and bring in these rhinos, nice quick walls to bring in this rhino from long distance. Uh, walking through here has to be careful does have loom should be fine okay um at a certain point when the players get their walls down this map kind of looks like uh can't quite put my finger on it but i don't know like a, a bug or something like you see the walls oh forming yeah, and yeah. Then the tcs kind of looks like a, a bug wearing 3d glasses us. yeah <laughs> 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 there might be there might be a uh, other way to describe it, but it's starting no, to no, fill out a little bit. It's the only way to describe it. <laughs> Gregory is expecting his opponent to cut to the middle. Do you see where their scouts are right now? The scouts oh, yeah. have gone to the middle. Like, all right, here we go, let's go. And he hasn't seen any lumber camps. 
on the middle whatsoever, and he's bringing in another <laughs> Rhino. What in the world? So I love it. Something that it would be interesting to consider. Now you've obviously included the rocky terrain, so players can't wall off their opponent if they chop through first. But you yeah. can add towers, and yeah. we haven't seen it yet. But if you just start towering yeah. around the middle of the map, it could make pushing towards that center area quite tricky and make it so that, say, Gregory could much more easily push Gajamata than Gajamata could do vice versa. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah, it, towers could become interesting. I actually think something like guard towers becomes really effective in later stages. Because um, if you can keep... Yes, if you build up towards the middle, it is hard to access your opponent. But you could just chop through to your opponent if the towers kind of prevent anything on the other side. Interesting walls here from Gajimata. It's like he wanted to go small wall, and yeah. then he decided he wants to go full wall. And now he's going full wall one side, but it's small walled on the other, and the scouts will be here eventually. So this could actually end up being problematic for him. Yeah, that is a little odd, especially because he went for the lumber camps on the outside right away. So going for the small walls, I feel like doesn't make as much sense because your wood is already going to be outside your walls, so it's going to be much more difficult to protect. Maybe he didn't think that Gregory would open with early scouts, as the meta isn't very well defined on this map yet, but it feels a bit off and maybe not exactly what Gajamata wanted to do initially. Agreed. Yeah, changed his plan a little bit. Maybe surprised by the amount of scouts because of how long it took for them to get here. And, well, Gregory immediately ran away, which is a bit weird to me. He killed the Spearman. Normally you dive after that. But he chose not to. He is on the way to Castle Age. Resources collected, though, says it's pretty much even. And obviously we've had the farm approach and we have had the rhino approach. So I, I we really need a rhino count next time. I was not expecting players to take so many. I thought they'd take, like, two from the middle and then switch to farms. But... These guys have been all over it. I think there's supposed to be 12 in the middle, actually. So eventually we could use process of elimination. But, oh, I mean, man. the wood efficiency <laughs> is certainly a problem. And then the scouts show up here, Ornlu. And Gajimata actually here with his own scouts to defend from this. Oh, gotta be careful on stand ground right there. Does lose two of those scouts for free. And now Gregory is going to be chased back towards his own base. And it seems like, well... Although Gajamana did sell stone to get to Castle Age using the market as Saracens, you can just buy the stone right back if you want to take a more boom-heavy approach. Yep. Yeah, so uh, it seems like a boomy game. I would have said when we looked at all the maps at the start that Hidden Forts has the potential to go the longest. We then did then have the evacuation game, which, of course, <laughs> was over two hours. So uh, for their energy levels, my energy levels, and my voice this week, I'm hoping this is somewhere under two hours uh, i can not see much that under possible. two hours just a little bit under two hours <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe an hour 57. <laughs> remember no relics in the middle and there's lots of gold in the middle but gregory has opted not to tc the middle so this is just completely different than what we had seen in previous games where one player takes mid and then the other player does not here we have one player taking the rhinos from mid and neither player looking to really compete for the middle at all right now well, at the very least, there are still scouts on the map for Gajamata to try and pressure the Lithuanian player who's going to try and pick up some relics. Because although, of course, camels are good against cavalry, once a Lithuanian player starts getting four relics, especially in Castle Age, I mean, those those numbers just don't line up very well for most units out there. So I think just even if you're booming, which Gajamata's doing, he's on three TCs, it's still having some presence on the map feels quite important. Okay, so let's talk late game because it feels like we're going to go there. Right now, they're just competing for relics. It's it's uh, another it's a fortified clearing style game or, or maybe bypass, though that obviously had some differences. Um, explain to me what you try and do here with the Saracens. Are we going for Mamelukes? Are we going for Arbalest Hussar? What do you want to see from the Saracens here? I, I think it can depend a lot on how the game plays out. Because if you're having a very active mid-game, the chances of you being able to develop for, towards Mamelukes feels quite limited. Because you just have to keep making army, you have to rely on units that can come out of production of buildings that aren't castles. But because this game is looking to be very passive, it feels like mm -hmm. in this sort of situation, you try and keep the rush distance as long as possible, maybe, uh, just not okay. by not chopping through to the middle, and just start plopping down those castles. Because I do think that Mamelukes are something of... Uh, this unit beats everything that Lithuanians make sort of unit. 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder if you try and even go extended light cav play. Some players, oh god, the light cav are going to be through. Oh, the quick no. ball doesn't land for Gregory, and Gregory's going to lose a monk. <laughs> and now the light cav, well, one gets converted. Okay, that's fine. I was going to say the light cav could run through here. But, um, you know, I, I personally feel like Gajamata could be Tato. So something that he likes to do, now another player likes to do this would be Hera, is adding the second stable and just extended light cap play. Second, third stable, stay in castle a bit longer and... Well, howdy ho, my bro. <laughs> I'm just, just saying, dude, like, I... The Cumans game one, the demos yeah. on EVAC, um... It, uh, it's not that telling because there's other players that could do this too, but I know people have been thinking about the Dorito, which is Tatito, if you didn't know that. And uh, I don't know, man. He's playing like a beast right now, whoever this guy is. Absolutely. It's one of those things that in itself wouldn't say, oh, this is Tato, but it's just sort of another uh, drop in the bucket of these are things that all together really do scream Tato at this point. And if it is, I mean, like you're saying, whoever it is, it is such a high level of play. That said, Gregory, not going to go down without a fight. Nice. And that is a dead monk. Yeah. And again, it's like if this game is dead even, it's very close. We're going to have a monk go down here. Sad times for, for Gregory. Must hurt a little bit more for Gregory, considering he is a monk, but maybe he's just used to it. Hmm. Um, you know, if it wasn't 03 right now, we're like, holy crap, this is dead even. This is insane. There's just that knowledge that <laughs> this is 03 and that worry for Gregory that the same could happen again. But I like the outpost towards the middle here, Orlo. That's really important. Yeah, that's a cute little move, especially because you know your opponent hasn't chopped through up to this point. So chances of maybe your opponent chopping through maybe later on and trying to catch you off guard, especially since Gregory himself isn't very active in trying to go towards the middle of the map. That seems mm -hmm. like something, at the very least, you have the ability to keep tabs on your opponent, so just do everything you can to make sure that you are not getting caught off guard, especially on with your yep. tournament life on the line. Yep. So I would like to see some pikes here from Gregory, and then you have to think about how you want to play the Imperial Age. I don't think Mamelukes, as exciting as Mamelukes can be, is going to be easy to get to on this map. I would actually love to see the amount of resources in total uh stat because i think gold's insanely high wood's obviously going to be insanely high food there's some left over but the stone so i i actually don't know or maybe you'd be the guy to ask how much stone is on a typical map um but i know that the way the stone is distributed here is two tile spots which just makes it way more awkward to build up towards castles uh, well, um, a typical map would probably have what around 24 tiles of stone so 24 times 350. Quick, quick math. Okay, yeah. chat, help us out. 24 times 350, we're casting. Whatever that comes out to. But yeah, it definitely is uh, a thing to point out, though, that two tiles is just so awkward. Like, another map that has that is it closed, for example. It always feels like going for the castle plays is more difficult. Nice kills there from Gajimata, yeah. who is two relics already and might be able to get a third right now. But Vil Count's still very close between these two. Um, now, this map only has five relics, right? Because I know some of the other special maps have more. But I think this one just uh, yes. has five, right? Okay. Yep. So um, if you're getting anything less than three relics at this point, that feels like a huge win for Gajamata. Because if Lithuanians aren't yep. with their most supercharged cavalry in the late game, you as a strong camel sieve are probably going to be feeling quite good. I think it could be four. Yeah, okay. So that, that relic's on the way home right now. That would be the fourth. Gregory's going to get the kill. It'd be wild if the relic jumped over the wood line there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you never know with DE where those relics are going to go. Well, I think there is a point when the relic spawn is random. Uh, way back in the day, I went through like, okay, if there's a monk with a relic and a transport, and the, the transport spot is blocked. Like, there is a point where it's actually randomly placed on the map, but I don't think we're there yet. Wondering if there's ever going to be a point where we see a lumber camp from Gajamata towards the middle, where he tries to cut towards the middle with intention. It feels like it should happen at some point. Maybe the TC. Okay, yeah, there there he could go through the middle. Can Gregory see that area with his, with his vision? He does have outposts in the middle. Pikeman upgrade very late for Gregory, I have to say, for, the, for a player who's made so many spearmen. 
And he can, if he's paying attention to that, see that tree being chopped. But it's so difficult to notice when this is happening. It's interesting that you're chopping through from that angle in particular, because at the very least, it means that unless your opponent chops through, your farms around your starting TC are going to continue to be safe, whereas you have less of your economy, relatively speaking, especially farms which are immobile, exposed yep. to potential enemy attacks. Like, those farms right there are absolutely safe. I mean, this Gajimata player is just insane. And I think Gregory has, has stuck with him, has hung with him in many of these games in this series. And just every time, Gajimata is finding good moments, finding some villager kills there, is on the way to the Imperial Age, and is now dropping archery ranges to make a big switch into something like Arbalest. And I think having covered every game so far, obviously we're on day two still, so it's early. But right now, I just have to say, even though Gajimata hasn't won the series, it feels inevitable, and it feels like Gajimata is one of the big favorites to win all of Hidden Cup 5 right now with this, with how he's playing. Yeah, I, I think there's no question about it. Uh, like I said, the only player who seemed to be on this level is Vasco da Gama from the, the first set of the tournament. Uh, we'll have to see, of course, going forward, because I, unless it's, like, really, really obvious, I don't like picking until we've at least seen everybody play. But, yeah, that, at That's the so very fun. least, Gajabot is a top <laughs> five player. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, at the very least, I think top five is good. But then, also, like, we've seen instances within our top five where, you know, a top five player... 4-0s, you know, 4-1s, other players in the top five, depending on the day. So the sky's mm -hmm. the limit. And, and that's the thing, you know, it's 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 a brutal format. And poor Gregory's really feeling it right now. But it is just, you also have to just take your hats off to Gajimata for the preparation, the ability to play every single setting. And guys, I mean, Gregory hasn't clicked up to Imp yet. He just now has Gajimata is building a second castle and will be an imp in 40 seconds. If you were 3 0 at this point, and then you built your castle and your opponent has double castle the Trebu down, uh, I don't know if there's many people that would actually feel like they could continue on here. I yeah, this should. is pretty painful. I, I think it's really telling that neither of these civs have big economy bonuses for booming. But you still have around 2,000 more resources collected for Gajamata and a two-minute faster Imperial Age time. And that is just all mechanics, just having smooth economy, making sure that your eco balance is proper, making sure the TCs are humming. And this is just going to be a devastating timing. I also think the Rhinos are a bit overrated. I know it's like a silly thing, but those were, there were two big differences here. And this is the second game today where we've seen someone just take their starting boars... And then the other player would take like 10 rhinos and the res collected the boom with the farming play actually ended up being superior. But I think overrated is maybe a bit extreme because it is still really helpful and you can do a lot of different things. But just certainly something to think about. Poor Gregory is going to try and do something with his pikes. He can't get anywhere close to those two castles and he will lose his own. And when he gets the pikeman over here, he's going to see not Arbalest, but Cav Archer from Gajimata, which is a really interesting choice. Yeah, and there, I would say that not all players would go Cav Archer here. Of course, Saracens have a very, very broad tech tree. You can do lots of different things. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not like the Thwaites can't counter Cav Archers. You do have very good skirmishers. But I think that whatever Gajimata chose to go for, it could have been Arbs, it could have been Camels. Um, this imp timing plus having a unit should be enough to close out the game. Yeah, the, the problem here is the pikemen are not really that helpful anymore. And there's no, like, side area to focus on because Gajamada's got the side area. He's also got the middle now. I love Cav Archer. Can you remind me if uh, Saracens get Parthian? I think they get every other upgrade. Yep. Uh, they get all the upgrades. They're one of the two sibs with a full archery range, the other being Japanese. Ooh. Okay, so they get fully upgraded heavy Cav Archers. Well, that's sick then. Like we said, Saracen Tech Tree, they also get fully upgraded Hussars. Yep. And they also get Siege Ram, Siege Onager, Bombard Cannon. They don't they can't get Cavalier. I think beyond and, and I guess Halb. But beyond that, their tech tree's just unreal. Gajamata, big score lead here, 3 0 lead. Remember, one of the games we fought to the final tree. There were seven trees remaining. <laughs> On the game that if you didn't see, you are going to need to rewatch at some point. Spoilers and how it ended, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Gregory yeah, just gonna but... split here with his halves and do his best here, Orlu, but it's not looking good for him in the middle right now. No, that Treb differential is pretty rough. Now, at the very least, Lithuanian halves are the fastest in the game. They got a 1.21 move speed, I believe. And that yeah. is at least, it's still slower than Cav Archers. All, you know, infantry units are gonna be slower than Cav Archers. But at least if your opponent isn't paying attention for even a moment, you try and make it maybe more of a multitasking battle, then halves might be able to sneak in and get those big hits on. Mm hmm. Yeah, and, and the halves did do that. We did see some of those hits connect. And I think, like, Halb's Skirm could, in theory, be very good against this, and the Lithuanians do have that. So, certainly not seeing any Skirms right now. There, the Halbs are getting shot down. Heavy Cav Archer upgrade is in. It is 4-1 to one Relics for Gajamata. It is 3-0 oh in the total score. The level has been insane. The scoreline does not even... It's not fair to Gregory in the slightest, but Gregory, not ready to die quickly here. Gregory snipes two of the trebuchets. Very well played and buys them a little bit more time. Absolutely. The Cav Archer numbers are still climbing, and you're getting the Camel plus Cav Archer. You have 50 villagers on gold as Saracens, which is pretty insane. Siege Engineers coming in too, and the thing is, you still have that Treb advantage. You have the map control, and it seems like Gregory is just trying to react as best he can, but if you're going to go Hald plus Cavalier, that doesn't feel like it's going to be efficient enough to deal with a fully boomed Saracens. Yeah, I think, like, the, the army count right now for Gajimata is just too strong. The map control for Gajimata is too strong. Three castles in the middle near the gold. He's got a castle in the north. He's got Cav Archers raiding there. They've got 18 kills. This castle for Gregory is the only castle that he has. And again, oh. Gregory would have hoped for more, but Gregory is 4 owed here by the beast. That is Gajimata. Gregory drops the GG well played and wishes his opponent good luck next. And man, oh man, Orin Lou, the guesses around the community have got to be insane <laughs> on this one because Gajamata was a beast. Felt like Gregory was a beast as well and maybe the best player to have gone down so far in Hidden Cup 5. Yeah, I think that's absolutely possible. It's just such a, it's so unfortunate that Gregory happened to run into Gajamata. I, yep. I think versus maybe the two other players that played uh, in the first set, I think Gregory would have a very strong chance against either of them. And it, it's just unfortunate, but that's how single elimination brackets work. At least it's a best of seven, so you have more chances to try and make uh, the win happen. Yeah, and let's just review the series real quick. I mean, it was a long one. It's a very long day here, and we're still not done. We got things to do. People have to vote, and we'll talk about what's coming up next this week. Gregory the seventh tried to he dealt with the human play from gajamata fairly well i felt like the stone walling in the middle expanding his economy with the burgundians he gave himself the best shot but it really felt like in this game that gregory played he did everything he could do and gajamata just played it perfectly ended the game with paladin but at that point you're thinking Orlu, it's cumans people ban cumans a lot what about the next game and this was the game <laughs> that we are never gonna forget. It started off with a lame, uh, and not just any lame, Gregory actually killed the rhino with his scout, so there's no food there, uh, and then led to a game that eventually ran out of trees. I don't even know how many highlights we're gonna have here, but feel free to step in. <laughs> you can just keep them coming, man. We can keep them going all day long. But yeah, this is honestly the game of the tournament so far, at least in my mind. It was so close and so well fought. At times, it looked like either player had the game in their hands. But at the end of the day, Gajamata just able to slightly outgrind Goths with Hussar spam. And it, it seems like the, at this point, Gregory was kind of broken. Yeah, I, I think losing this game changed the whole series for Gregory and maybe influenced some of the decision making with, with strategy. Uh, because Gregory could feel like how difficult it was going to be to come back and uh, you know beat this Gajimata player four times. But, I mean, we are still... People are like, man, this, this game ended. Believe me, this game didn't end anytime soon. This is like the midway <laughs> point, right? This is halftime <laughs> show. Um, and the game just continued on and on and on. This was actually an hour later. If you look near the minimap... <laughs> There was just 1,200 wood remaining. We eventually ended the game with less than 1,000 wood remaining. Players were scrambling for trees. It was ridiculous. 
And uh, yeah, as as you said, I think this was the game that unfortunately broke Gregory, which I could see maybe a little bit of come the final game, or sorry, game three, where like the strategy didn't have a lot to it. But uh, then again, how much of that is just Gajamata being Gajamata here? It, it's tough because when you're facing somebody whose strategy and execution is so good, it feels like everything that you do doesn't work, right? You try and take the game in a bunch of different directions, and I credit to Gregory for trying to do that. But still, at the end of the day, it felt like Ajumada just never missed a beat and was always comfortable with whatever Gregory was trying to do. Yeah, I agree. And, and it's unfortunate, again, Gregory tried his his defense here. Pike, like, have his own siege. Pretty much what you would expect at that point that he could have. Threw everything at it. Ended up clearing up the siege. But then the next step, as always, Gajimata there. And ready to drop a castle, which eventually ended the game. And uh, don't worry, folks. We're going to have the polls here in just a second. But yeah, this is how this game ended. And then ultimately how the series ended. Gajimata. Massive Cav Archer Mass eventually just pushed through the middle. And I cannot stress you enough how impressed I was with Gajamata. So we're going to get to the vote now. Uh, people who are watching here on Twitch, you'll have an option to type a number in the chat. Now, the most recent number that you type will be your vote. So if you type uh, 11, for example, to laugh right now, as people do in Age of Empires, uh, you can override your vote if you would like to. We've got the Gregory the Seventh vote now. Who do you think lost 4-0 today playing like a beast against Gajimata. predict away i'm seeing a lot of very talented players get voted for right now orlo well to be fair we have 16 very talented players in this tournament uh, yeah, but, yeah 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 <laughs> uh to, to be fair but i do think that the votes seem to be leaning slightly towards vinchester and i think that i wouldn't feel comfortable with any guess until at least i've seen everyone play if I yeah. had to pick right now, I think Vinchester might be the best example. Just m maybe just flubbing a few small aspects and then the goth play and just trying to grind things out in the late game, but it not quite being enough. That does feel Vinchester-esque, but okay. it, it could be anyone. Okay, maybe a, maybe a Sato? Seeing some votes fly in for Viper there. I, I wouldn't think Viper would get 4 would but then again, some of the games are really close. Is Viper I don't think Viper about? would be broken even by the uh, uh, the evacuation game. Like those, you don't think he'd be broken players. like em emotionally come game three. Yeah, yeah, but Viper would pick Dravidian's first pick and have he a lot would, of he would have and then have it not work. Like the Dravidian's thing is making me think we might have just seen Viper lose, but it is Vinchester according to the community. Jordan and Doubt voted right behind them. Uh, or behind him, rather. And then let's vote for the winner here, guys. I mean, th again, there's lots of talented players in our scene. So you could see people voting for many different names here. But the community voted that Hera played in the first series, that it was Hera as Vasco da Gama. It was pretty landslidey. I think it was like 40%. Keeping that in mind, we haven't had anyone vote for like Leary or Viper or Tato really yet. We're halfway through the, the, the first round. We'll see who people think Ajimato are. But, um, you know, every Hidden Cup, we have repeats. Vote away on who you think the winner of that series was. And what is your vote, Ornlu? What are you thinking right now? Like Twitch chat, I think it is Tato. I think that the level of play is just absolutely up there. You have the strategic variety. You have picks like Humans and Saracens. And going for the demos with Georgians. Georgians also feel like a Tato pick. And just the fact, I think more than anything else, it was maintaining that tippy, tippy top level of play in like every single possible situation. Mm -hmm. And I agree. To me, that screams Tato. Okay. I agree with you. And there's two other names that come to mind that it could be Viper, I actually think is not a bad pick. Viper's won three hidden cups before, Viper has four owed many talented players before. Viper likes to play that late game style. The late game grind. Viper would be in conversation possibly with players about these mule carts and these new sieves and these strats. Uh, and then has to be Hera. 100 farms beating a Haub player with Hussar on evacuation. 
I think those are the three that come to mind for me and the level's so high for Gajamata. I'm not sure I could even tolerate any other guess. Um, no, of course it could be uh, names other than that, but oof, what a performance. Yeah. I mean, I think that the level of play, Mr. Yo and Leary and shape absolutely could be there as well. I just don't think stylistically it makes sense for either of those two. I agree. Also an interesting side note, if your player really likes cumins, any other tournament that is always banned because they know you yeah. like it. In Hidden Cup, they can't, they don't know it's you, so they will not ban it. And then maybe, of course, they find out later how good you are with them. Tato, 64%. All right. Well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you in here only for the last segment. We have a bracket of the community guesses from what has happened so far. Uh, and if we have that prepared, I'd love to see it. According to the community, after the first uh, four sets of the round of 16, we have had Hera against Ganji, Jordan against Mihai, Barles against MBL, Vinchester against Tato. And what do you think? If you were to give like a percentage, what do you think the community votes has come in at here? Do you think they're close? Do you think they're far off? Um, well, I've been keeping my own guesses uh, as I've been following along, just like you. I have around half of those names the same. Um, I, I, I'm totally on board with Jordan Mihai. Um, but I think the only players I'm like super confident right now are Mihai and MBL. I think it could be multiple people for all of the other ones. Okay. Crazy. Of course, there's no shame, guys, if we get it wrong. Because we are making guesses and votes based on uh, half the information. We've only seen half the game so far in Hidden Cup 5. So understandable that we would have some of the details wrong and what we do know is that the heroes uh that have played uh that those are the results we also have the upcoming matchups tomorrow we're going to have king steven against selim the grim followed by kazrao and emperor sigismund and then on wednesday the final day of the round of 16 we'll have alfred the alpaca against jan Ziska. and then also alexios komnenos versus Robert Giscard, which is a historical matchup, by the way. We'll have information on that day about that one and who actually won. But uh, Orlu, thank you for joining me. It was a very long series for a 4-0. And we'll have <laughs> you back. I forget the schedule, but I know we'll have you back, I believe, in two days or at some point. Uh, first uh, series Wednesday, I believe. So. Okay, perfect, man. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks again for joining. I had a great time. Of course, man. Thanks for having me on. It was a lot of fun. All righty. See you next time. And ladies and gents, what a long day. Uh, you know, yesterday I was a little concerned about the length because the idea of this event is to have entertainment and airtime. And today for two best of sevens, it was an eight hour day. So very long day. Uh, we had lots of content the whole way through. We worked really hard on for, for months and months. Uh, as you can imagine, I'm exhausted. The amount of support has been unbelievable. The sub count here on Twitch is like very, very close to 8K, which is as high a number it's been at in years. Uh, and the viewership was awesome for a Monday where I know you guys might be a little bit busier with life and such. Um, if you're wondering what you can do beyond the primes, thank you, Tyrannosaurus and Nick Brown and everybody. And, you know, donating to the prize pool, which 50% of all donations go to the prize pool. If you're wondering what you can do beyond the monetary support and showing up, which you guys have already done, uh, really the best thing that I could ask is uh, if this is exciting for you and interesting for you, just share it with people that you know and maybe they'll be interested worst case they're not right but uh uh the the work that we're putting in here is to bring a great show for people who are experienced for a long time and also people who maybe are trying to learn about the player base learn about the game uh find out uniqueness of the players so just telling one person could lead to one more person showing up and that's the type of thing we're going to need to surpass what we did back in hidden cup for back in the covid days as every sponsor told me the record is untouchable so uh thank you very much for that also uh to i want to tell everybody below the stream we have a giveaway entry you can enter in a variety of different ways so if you're following on twitch or twitter or whatever you get you can enter majority of the ways to enter are free if you subscribe with prime or whatever you can enter um there's i forget the whole list i think you just like retweet a tweet which promotes hidden cup all that stuff is there below the stream all right and um I guess just briefly talking through how things are going to go. Again, we've got two more uh, days of the round of 16. Then we have two days of the quarters. Then we're already at the weekend where we have the semis, the finals, and the big reveal. 
And there it all is. If you need to put anything on your calendars, you see it there. We'll have more information on the heroes. We'll have more information on some of the players. We'll have some uh, some showcases, let's say, for those that know what that means. You can be excited for that. And uh, that is it. I'm going to go shut up and not speak again until tomorrow because I need to make sure I have a voice for this tournament. Uh, thank you again, everybody, very much. I will save the rest of my thoughts because I... Uh, I, I want, I, I feel the need to use this moment to speak more and say thanks, but I'm going to not. And the next six days will be thanks and we'll have our moment. All right. Uh, there will be a rerun on Twitch soon. So for those that want to rewatch what was the, the best series so far of Hidden Cup, uh, the rerun will start soon after the stream goes offline. For those on YouTube, you'll have to wait for the videos. But again, thanks for watching there. Uh, thanks for watching everywhere uh, for Hidden Cup 5. Amazing production today, guys. Good work, everybody. See you next time. If he's going to be able to take that castle, no. But he's repairing this at Petars also as well. Taking the village, going with two rams already here. Look at now the farmers. Tristan, nine farmers only for Jadwila. It's going to be an Imperial, but what economy he has. His economy is really at the limit. He will be able to do maybe one treble. Series in Hidden Cup. You have a good strategy, a strategy you practiced all week. And then the opponent does something that none of your practice games have told you was good, right? Not taking the rhinos in the middle, monk pikes are pushing in the previous uh, day. And it was really fast for Yadviga to move out there. And now I'm thinking that Yadviga, whoever this player is, likely trained will play. And Otto the Great is, is laming. Otto the Great is stealing the cows here. Two Persians do advance a little bit faster than other sieves. This is your best time to take a fight if you're Otto. Otto knows he's probably going to lose most of this tonight, so he's taking the engagement, and it's not the engagement he would have wanted. Ideally, he would have cleared this up, and then maybe filled the... It's huge. It's insane. Yeah, totally. How you come back from that? I don't know. That castle okay. could have actually been more full. Term. Well, going, going right away, probably right. Yeah, seems like it, man. I have I have vivid yep. memories of MBL in the past because it's his fixed position, going forward to try and lame. Now we've moved the goal at the back. Just the forward war from blue flyer. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't know. He has no clue about that. So even if he's doing the tower, now he might be thinking, Tristan. Okay, he's doing the tower here. He want to avoid that. In the whole game. I look at now the castle here. I'm not sure. Well, the castle is gonna take down three towers, record the main goal. Also the stone, you know, and uh... I think this is the perfect castle. He's doing a yeah. crazy job here with the trebuchet. For now, as well. for now, for now, for now there's yeah. more cannon galleons. The Spanish cannon galleons are back there. The demos are gonna connect on the high level take players. Yeah. I couldn't take it because it's so relevant right now. The majority of high level players. As we see this villager get sniped and, and scouts getting attacked. Oh, oh, no. No. oh this is no. so no. bad for Yadiga. Oh no. Man, there's houses no, no, no. everywhere. He didn't notice it. Did Otto notice it? Otto notices it this now. Is awesome. oh, and Otto gets oh, underneath man. it next to it and kills it. Brutal stuff there for Yadviga. It's just crazy to see these plays. The siege micro from Otto is ridiculous here on the hill. And then he micros again. And we see a split from Yadviga. The Lithuanian player goes forward with two villagers and wants to villager rush and lame, which is something that we saw on the pond. With the double dog, double he might take the dog. fish. Double dog, and yeah. he doesn't see it, Yadviga. You know, in normal games, we see, okay, this person's been aggressive. Big demos here. Uh, and, and players want to take initiative. I think what those two villagers did, or what Otto was hoping for them to do, was to give him initiative. So I'm, I'm trying to move on, you know, but <laughs> I don't know what to say, <laughs> yeah? But... <laughs> but... You know, you have good skills, because it's very hard to mute me. And you did it, you know? You got me a speechless. I was like, what happened with the... And Yadviga's up to 200 pop. The final castle will fall here for Otto. And if you don't have a castle with the Italians, I don't think you have a chance. Oh, and here on the right is also attacking all over the map. Blue is holding in the middle, raiding in the north, and now taking on the 
on the right side as well. Ooh, this Ooh, is cool. Big here. opportunity no here. There's big no opportunity. Defense. There's spears, but they're not here. And this is disastrous for Otto. And it's actually First spill with your kill of the game. There's spearmen everywhere. It is the spearman offensive from Otto the Great, Twelve. who's gone for attack and armor here with spearmen. 12. 11, two more in the queue. Yeah, this is a really interesting strategy. And as you're saying, it's one that we've seen Tato do plenty of times. So the idea behind this, guys, is you go for the forward tower and try and use this to keep your opponent in the feudal age. Because if you're both in feudal age, humans will have a better eco than everybody because you've got that will likely get some conversions. No way. Like have going in. He won't get the conversions. Beautiful play from Gajamata. But the siege goes down. Gregory, who's running out of gold hasn't tech switched at all. He hasn't had the time to even think about it. 150 bills now for Gajimata. And the camels are doing well enough there. And this feels inevitable, Orlu. I mean, even before we see Paladin come in. But at some point, you are going to need to deal with the Halves. And that's how he does it. Tato <laughs> Across the front, and then use the Venospas for your utility raiding unit. It feels like a pretty smart I, I... way just to sort of set up that doom push that your opponent can't stop. Yeah, yeah, down super deliberately, and I like the idea behind it at the very least with those eight trebuchets. But it is just going to be very difficult to take efficient fights in the long run. Good control of the skirmishers, making sure they're trying to target the hand cannons and the monks. But still, that army quality is just so high right now for Jordan. Yeah, absolutely. And so again, from the player perspective, you know the 16 players that are in the main event. You know it, it could be anybody. It doesn't matter what your performances were in other tournaments. You could face whoever you would consider to be your biggest rival. <laughs> that was also, the market's actually investment. a very low HP, so if that's something you snipe, and if Gajamata doesn't have the contingency market, then yeah. that's something you would actually have to spend 175 wood to replenish, which is actually a lot I wonder, of this game. I wonder if this is it. Like, if all these Hussars die, yeah. does yeah. Gajamata give up? It felt like that was, that was almost a final fight. He lost a lot of his game. But the Halb number is going down, and the Hussar number will be above that soon. And the population for Gajamata is decent. They have the same vill count, they have the same army count, but purely because Gregory can't make halves, the game ends! And Gregory is, according to Capture Age, there's the demo. Gajamata was not broken in that crazy two plus hour game when he fell behind before, and he lands mm. another demo there. The perfect demo from Gajamata. Oh no! Down as well. Honestly, not a bad start here for Gregory, but don't lose your Mega Nell. No! No! Redemption! It's not even, it's not fair to Gregory in the slightest, but Gregory, not ready to die quickly here. Gregory snipes two of the trebuchets. Very well played. 